Good morning on this, well, I would say on this lovely Saturday morning, but it's a bit dismal out there. Oh, whoa, I thought I was going to drown this morning. It's raining, not very nice. Wet, wet, wet this morning. So this is the perfect morning. Pull the curtains, sit in front of the TV, make yourself a cup of tea, open a packet of chocolate fingers and spend the morning with us because it'd be more fun, more fun. Um, we've got quite a lot coming up today because we've got a whole five hours. We've got two guests. We've got loads of really good dressmaking. We've got a brand new guest who's going to be on at 12. Um, we've got the lovely Clive who's on with us for two hours. We've had a great morning already with him. We've had a lot of fun. I said, let's make it fun today, Clive. Do you know any jokes? So I'm, he's gone away to think of a few because um, he said he wasn't very good at jokes. But I'm looking forward to Clive's jokes later. And most excitingly, we've got sewing machines back in stock. So we've had them out of stock, some of the most favourite ones for a while. But today, today, today is the last day that we can guarantee that you will get your machine by Christmas. So I'll be talking about them later, but have a think about it because we've got some really good ones that you've been waiting for. They're back in stock. And if you order them today, last, la, 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 last day today, you will get it for Christmas. So have a think about sewing machines because obviously they're incredibly important. Um, but before we do any of that, let's talk about the early bird, which I actually really like. I'm going to turn that round. This is a six pound saving. Now, if you do any sort of sewing, whether it's dressmaking, patchwork, quilting, embroidery, applique, anything, you need something to mark your fabric. And the biggest problem that I have with marking fabric is you've got a pen, but then it doesn't mark every colour. Or you've got a pen and you're, mm, is it going to stay? Is it going to make a mark on the fabric? So chalk is fantastic because it just brushes away. This brilliant set. So you, in, the, in the set, am I allowed to open it? Oh, good. Let's open it up. You get this lovely pen here, and that fits the chalk in it. There's a rubber on the end, and you even get a pencil sharpener. So the chalk, um, the chalk fill fillers are quite pointed anyway. But if you want a very very sharp fine point, um, there is a pencil sharpener too. How do you sharpen it? You yes, you put your pen in there. And you remember, you turn the sharpener and not the pen. So it's um, got the rubber on the end. Now, so you pull back what this this bit, and that pull, and then that pulls the chalk out. And it's got a rubber on the end. So you've got the pen. So that's really nice to use. You can. Oh, I've had a bit of fabric. Oh, I haven't got a bit of fabric. Should we use this one here? So we we'll have a little. We'll use this one because it because it doesn't mark. And we'll rub it off. So look, look at that. Makes a lovely line. Look, really fine. And all those colours as well. And look, just to prove to you it works. Now I've marked that fabric. Look, it rubs off as well. But the great thing is, um, it's got lots of different colours. So you get in the pack, you get all the white um, ones, refills because you probably tend to use more white than anything else, but then you get all the colours. So if you're marking on a very light fabric, you've got darker sort of red and blue. So there's yellow, blue, purple, green, light blue, red, orange, and a sort of a neutral beige colour. So whatever fabric you are marking on, you can guarantee one of these colours will come on. So in the pack, you get the pen, you get the 16, so you get the eight white and eight coloured, but not only that, you also get Another pack, another whole pack of refills. So for fifteen ninety eight with a six pound saving, that's absolutely loads. I mean, we only have we have one PMP. If you're new to Sewing Street, we have one PMP, which is three ninety five per day. It doesn't matter how much you order in the day or how many times you order. So say you order something now, like the chalk pen, and you order something at ten and some at twelve, then you will only have to pay one PMP per day so once your pmp is done then it's then it's free and because of the six pound saving you're saving more than the pmp anyway so if you do marking um you know i have different markers i have chalk markers i have air erasable and i have heat erasable depending on what i'm doing i 
But I really like the chalk one, this one, because it's very sharp. Because some of them, and with the tailor's chalk, it's not always always as sharp and you have to keep moving the edges around. It's a really easy way to do it. But then it's difficult because you haven't got the right colours. But this has got all the colours and all the white and the free refills as well. So for £15.98, that is an absolute bargain. £6. That's your postage and more. Right, so put it back. And it all comes as well This is in this really attractive little case perfect gift for somebody there you go it all comes in there and and then you get that as well so for any kind of fabric marking not just dressmaking anything this is a brilliant brilliant set um and i think it'll work on most fabrics obviously you know i always recommend do test it because sometimes there are some fabrics, maybe knit fabrics, where they don't come out. We always test it on a bit, but pretty much this does rub off or it will brush away. Or, you know, with time, it goes away. You wouldn't mark something with chalk and expect it to last forever. But I think just the best thing about it is A, it's sharp, and B, it's got all the colours. Fantastic early bird. And it's not all messy. You know, when you use Taylor's chalk, you often get it all over your hands and then you have to brush it all off. This is nice and clean. So what a lovely little thing. Mm. And you get both, remember, it's not just one, it's not just other, you do get both of them. But there isn't, no, this is just the refill, there isn't a pen in there. And it does tell you how to use it as well. And it does say, test it first. And it's very easy to change it as well. But I, I like the fact that you can sharpen it. I mean, they are quite pointy anyway, but if you're doing some very, very fine marking, that's very useful. So what a fantastic early bird we have for you today. Pop it in your basket. Your postage is done. It's done and done. But remember, if it's in your basket, think of it like going around the supermarket. If it's in your basket, somebody could take it out when you nip to the toilet. So you do have to check out. I always think that when I nip to the toilet in the supermarket. I think, well, if I've already paid for it and then I put it by the tills while I go to the toilet, then at least I've got my receipt because it's mine. So if it's in your basket, it's not necessarily your. Oh, Kat says she takes her basket into the toilet. No, I don't take the basket into the toilet. I leave it outside and ask the nice lady to watch it for me. So, um, but once you've got, so if you've got it in your basket, it's not yours until you've actually checked out. But remember the way that the postage works, if you check out, that's not your postage finish. You can check out several times in a day. So it's best to get, get checked out. You know it's yours. And then if you're thinking later, we've got some adjuster forms as well, which I love. And we've got the sewing machines. If you buy the early bird now, that's your postage done. Free postage on a sewing machine. Bargain. Not many people do that, do they? Delivery before Christmas. Right, what should we do next then, Kat? Shall we do the menu? Yes. I've given you a little brief rundown of what we're going to do today, but let's do it properly. So... Um, everything that's on today is all on pre-order so if you want to buy anything if you click on watch live on the website everything all the products are down below that so first hour eight o'clock we've got adjust the form and dressmaking tools I've just shown you one little one with our early bird but we've got loads more of them and the adjuster forms which I love so I'll be talking you through all the dressmaking tools and that at eight o'clock nine o'clock we've got Clive in who's making made the most beautiful maxi dress from so different and he's going to be showing us some really good hints and tips about how to do it and um, there's a few little bits that are interesting with a few trickier bits so it's going to be a really really interesting learning hour whether you're new to dressmaking or more experienced you will really enjoy that um 10 o'clock we've got tim holtz fabrics we haven't had tim holtz fabrics before and i love them because they're so unusual and they're so fascinating to look at. There's so many different prints in them that you'll, you'll really enjoy that. And I'll go through all the packs so you can see how they're designed, how he creates them. And they're not like any other fabrics that you will have seen. So that's a great hour. 11 o'clock, Clive's back with um, the So Different layer dress. And which is a really great dress because it has sort of a top layer, almost like wearing a jumper over a dress, but it's all joined together. Again, he's got loads of hints and tips of how to do that. So a really good, very technical learning hour. Yeah, that's that is that is what the dress looks like. So it's got this sort of all over top and then it's got the, the dress part, but it's all joined together. Although in the pattern, you can make it separately as well if you want, but he's going to teach you. He's an absolute expert dressmaker. So you're going to learn a lot from him today. And then finally at 12 o'clock, 
we have got George coming in, who is going to demonstrate for us from the Britannia cover stitch. So there's always thought you get a sewing machine, you get an overlocker, you get a cover stitcher. So if you've always wondered what's the difference between all of them, why do I need a cover stitch? He knows all the answers. So have a think about your questions. If there's anything you want to know about cover stitch machines or just machines in general, he's a real machine expert. He's going to be demonstrating for you. But get your questions in. Message the studio, studio at sewingstreet.com. Um, so message us those. But also, don't forget to send us your Christmas messages because on Christmas Day, we'll be playing them. So... So, um, sewing machines, sewing machines, because this is the last day that we can guarantee delivery before Christmas. We've got some of your favourite machines back in stock. So, the um, Elna 680 Plus is back, back in stock. And remember, it's on split pay. So, we've had a lot of people who've been asking about this and we haven't been able to get it. So, the price for that one is thousand and ninety nine but it it is it comes over the seven nine nine split pay bracket so you can split that into five equal payments of a 219 pounds 80. now the brilliant thing about the machine is that you don't have to pay all five before you get it once you've ordered it once you've checked out it's in your basket uh, you've checked out it's yours we will take the first payment off you of 219 pound 80 and then over the next five months we'll take the other installments but you will get it sent to you immediately so you don't have to wet it um <coughs> we the day that we launched spit pay which was a couple of months ago now i think um all of these sold out because it's a really good way it's it's interest free we don't charge you any extra to do split pay it is basically the whole price is split into five equal payments we'll take the first one from you now and then you will get it sent and you will get it before christmas um, we've been waiting for this machine since the 12th of october so we're really excited to have actually got it back in today and also got it back in for the last delivery before christmas tomorrow we've got jane brogan who's our elna expert um, she's going to be demonstrating the whole thing, what it does, what's, what are all the features, what are all the benefits, and she'll answer all your questions, so anything you want to know, but we, we need to, wanted to show it to you today, we're obviously not going to do the full demonstration that Jane's doing tomorrow, but because this is the last day that we can guarantee Christmas delivery for you, that's why I'm highlighting it so that you know if you, if you want to have it, then we stole it. So I'm not absolutely sure what we're going to do tomorrow if we sell out of them all today. That'll be odd. She will be demonstrating more than one machine. But um, just if you do want it before Christmas, then you need to get it today. But tomorrow, Jane will be demonstrating it. Obviously, we have loads of other machines. If you go on the website, you'll see them all. If you, if you go onto the website, sewingstreet.com, click on the Sewing Machines and Overlockers tab. You can see that there. And there they all are in all their glory. They were, let's see, if you scroll down, you can see how many we've got. And the 570A is back in stock. And now for anyone who's you've been wondering why am I so excited, there've been a lot of you who have been desperate for that one and it's finally back in stock. <laughs> Susie, who messages Kat every day, we've got it, we've got it. And we only found out yesterday that we could have it. So if you pop it in your basket, you check out, you, can, you will get this by Christmas. It's a fantastic machine. Um, and this one is available on split pay, but it's on a three equal payment. So for 199, is that 66 per month? And remember, if you buy it, pay the first month now, you will get it. You don't have to wait for the three months. Um, so for 199, split over three months, 199 a month, um, then you will you can have that today okay so but we just wanted to let you know that although we're not doing all the demonstrations for them today if you do want it before Christmas then you, today is the last day that because they come direct from the manufacturers they don't go via our warehouse they come um, direct from them and they've said that today is the last day so if you've been waiting around for a machine and you've been thinking about it buy your own Christmas present that's what I say 
because you probably get what you want then. Or just get his card. Get his card. <laughs> or anybody's really, but buy your own Christmas present. And it's split as well. So anyway, we've got loads of dressmaking tools. Let's start with the book. Let's start with the So Chic Kids book. Oh, this is always really popular. 20 designs that are fun and unique, just like your kid. There's 20 patterns in here, so let's just have a quick look through. I'm gonna start, we'll start at the back because importantly, at the back are all the patterns. So there's all the patterns are in there, okay? So you haven't got to have those extra or print them out or anything. $13.99, you get 20 patterns which is loads, isn't it? When you think what one pattern normally costs, normally a pattern costs, I don't know, eight, nine pounds minimum, minimum, but this is 13.99 for 20. There's beautiful, so there's dress, all different sorts of dresses, blouse, shorts, more dresses, little tops, but it's not just girls, there's boys as well. Little shorts, I love those little cargo shorts, aren't they really nice? Made from linen as well. Kids dressmaking's lovely. And little knee length shorts. It's always, it's a really good way to start as well because you're using less fabric and smaller fabric. So it's a really good way if you're new to dressmaking, then you can, um, you can have a practice with this. There's some really, I love the photography in it as well. Pullover parka. It's got a little hood and a bit of elastic just around the neckline. And then there's a boy's shirt. Anyway, well, those are all the patterns, but it does go through everything you need to know. How to do it, how to start, how to top stitch, sewing corners, how to cut your pattern out. So if you're new to dressmaking, this is brilliant because it covers everything right from the very beginning. But if you're not new to dressmaking, then you've got 20 brilliant patterns. And it really goes into the details about fabric width. And I think particularly when you're new to to dressmaking, you look at all these different widths, you think, I don't understand how that works. How do I lay my pattern out? What does it mean when it says it's folded in half or when it's right sides together or you have to turn it over? But it shows you exactly how to do everything. All of this, it's, it's all hand, it's computer illustrated, but it's really well done. There's all the measurements and all the different things. And, and so it's very clear. So sometimes hand illustrations or photography works, but I think with this, these computer drawn illustrations are very, very clear. And I think there's not, there's not a lot of assumed knowledge here, but anyone who is a more experienced dressmaker, you can just dip, you know, dip straight in and it will show you how to do it. But all of the instructions in here for 20 packs, 20 patterns for 13.99 it's an absolute bug but you know there's all different skill levels so, so maybe you know a pair of shorts is a little bit trickier than just a little blouse but you can go in at the level that you want but you know they're all perfectly doable if you decide you want to make some little shorts then give it a go but you can practice it's a really good thing to practice with so sizing i'm trying to see what um what age children this goes so two, four, six, and eight. That's that. That's yeah. I mean, that's well. The sizes are two, four, six, and eight. That's not necessarily the ages. So it goes up to fifty-two inches height, one hundred thirty centimeters. So it starts off at a meter height and goes up to one hundred thirty centimeters height. So, but. As with or as with yourself, if you are going to measure anything, it does tell you here, measure their height, chest, chest, waist and hip, then you'll know what size they are. So, you know, even if you think you know what size somebody is, it's always best to do that first. And then you can just get, it's a lovely reference book as well, because you've got lots of different things and there's so many different patterns in here. You can make them your own as well. So if you like one of the little tops, like this tiered blouse, it'd be very easy to just lengthen that and then you've got it as a dress. Or if you like one of the dresses, you know, this pin tuck blouse would make a beautiful little smock dress. Or if you like one of the dresses, you could just shorten it and make um, it into a blouse. And equally with the trousers, the shorts, with these, they've got, there's two pairs of shorts. There's the, um, the plain shorts and the turn up shorts. You could just lengthen those. So there's the knee length shorts there, and then there's ones with turn ups. Oh, and the shorts with back pockets. Lengthen those. 
immediately you've got a pair of trousers and you can use the same technique that they've used for either turning them up or hemming them, but just on the, the longer length. So there's a lot of flexibility within this book to really sort of make it your own. But for 13 99 for 20 patterns, that's a bargain, bargain. Let's have a look at the pattern. Always like having a look. I know clearly I will never get it folded back up again. Have you ever tried to fold up? Have you ever tried to fold up a pattern? Nightmare. You never do it. And, I, and maps as well. Rubbish at folding up maps. Because they sort of fold them one way and then they fold them another way. There we go. So there's the pattern pieces. So you've got everything. And so what I would say the best thing to do, because you've got patterns on both sides, just to make the most economical use, is just trace over them first. You don't need anything fancy. You can just use a bit of greaseproof paper. So if you trace over the size you want and cut that out, then you can keep your pattern nice and pristine, particularly if you're making them for children and the children are growing or you might be made for other ones, you don't really want to cut it out because then you won't be able to use it for another size. So just trace over it. Obviously you can buy speciality um, dressmakers tracing paper or normal tracing paper, but to be honest, I tend to use just greaseproof paper. I buy it on a roll, never use it for cooking. I just use it for my dressmaking, but that would be ideal. But because they've printed them on both sides, it does make, I think particularly with children's dress patterns, with your own, you cut it out to your size and pray you never change, otherwise you have to buy a new pattern. But with children's patterns, it's always best to trace over them first. So moving on, moving on. Oh, look, look at that. Oh, I was just gonna say, look, I folded that up. Look, yes, yes, I did it. So, and there's more than one sheet in there. That's not the only sheet. So moving on, what should we do next? So we have got pattern weights and we've got two different sorts for you here. Pattern weights are brilliant because if you want to cut out a dress pattern and you want to use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat, you need to keep your pattern still on the fabric. And by using pattern weights, it means that you don't have to pin as well. But you, do, you will need to use a rotary cutter because obviously you're holding the pattern flat on the surface um, with the pattern on top of the fabric so you won't be able to lift it up to cut. But these are really heavy. They're very, very lovely weight. Look, you can hear them when I drop them on the table. A really nice weight. And they're really pretty as well. This is the Union Jack one. So on that one, you've got a Union Jack butterfly and then you've got the, the London Eye in the background and Tower Bridge and um, Westminster Abbey and Buckingham Palace as well, all on one. So these are lovely, so these are really good, but you can use them for all sorts of things. You know when you just want to keep something still, particularly if you're unrolling something. I always find when I'm unrolling paper or um, bond web or anything like that, and you need to keep it still. So you don't have to just use them for patterns, but anything you, you want to hold still. And because you get four of them, you can put them in, you know, you can put them in the corners of places. Aren't they lovely? But it's nice that they're attractive as well. I always think with all your sewing equipment, if you're going to be using it and you're going to spend the money on it, it's, it's nice and it's pretty. So that's the Union Jack ones. We also have, oh, oh, I like these. These are very lovely. I'm going to get them out as well. These feature all different vintage sewing machines. Oh, they're so lovely. So that... Oh, they don't come out very easily. They're obviously very well packaged. There we go, I'm going to take two of them out. That one's got a patchwork quilt on it, a lovely little pin cushion. Um, let me just put those two in the middle so you can really see them. And these, I don't know whether they're stuck in, but they don't come out very easily. It's because they're well packaged. There we go, there's a third one. So, you know, they, they won't be going anywhere. So this is, makes a really nice gift as well, doesn't it? I will get this fourth one out. There we go. So aren't they lovely? That one's got a patchwork quilt in the background and all the accessories. It really is vintage sewn, but they're so lovely. But they're ever so heavy. I would have my favourite one is this vintage sewing one. I think it's really nice. But perfect for, well, for weighting your pattern down on your fabric but also you know for any kind of sewing anything that you need to keep still but they're just really lovely accessories and they're metal so you can um you they say they should be magnetic really shouldn't they be interesting but they are very heavy from the quilted bear lovely illustrations on this one you've got on the wall 
you've got a, scissor, a scissor rack it's just there's a lot a lot of detail in them so a really nice pretty addition to your sewing room as well as being useful so you can choose between the sewing machine ones and the union jack ones are they called sewing machine but they are really lovely i was thinking you know if you're going to have stuff in your sewing room and you'll be keeping this forever make it something pretty as well but i do like the, in, the union jack ones as well really useful i'm going to put them back let's hope they go back in a little bit easier at least you know what a nice gift because they come in a really lovely presentation tin and you know as well they're not they're not going to go anywhere let's do scissors next I'll just get them back in one moment one moment caller right big scissors never one of my favorite things always have the right tool for the job do not try and cut your fabric using normal scissors that's not very ah oh, i thought it was going to slide out i'm going to take them out look at these these are not scissors these are dressmaking shears now you know the difference between shears and scissors shears always have a bigger have different sizes handles so if you've got a big handle and a small one, then they're shears. Now these are great because you can cut with these flat on the fabric, look. See, so when you're cutting something out, if you've got your fabric and it's pinned down nicely, you want to be running the blade across the fabric so you're not lifting it up. Particularly if you're using very sheer um, fabrics, you really, really sheer. You need your shears for your sheer fabric. I wasn't even, I didn't even mean that joke either. But um, you want to keep, if you've got sheer fabric or if you've got anything with a bit of elastic in it, um, like a knit fabric or, um, or a jersey, you don't want to be moving it around too much. So the beauty of these is they will lay on the surface. They are 27 centimetres, 10 and a half inches long. That measurement, when they give you a measurement on scissors, it always applies from the fulcrum which is the point of balance, which is where the screw is, to the end of the um, point. That is the measurement. It's not the whole measurement, it's that measurement. So it's 10 and a half inches, 27 centimetres, heavy duty, and they are stainless steel. But there's a screw here, which you can undo, and that makes them adjustable, which is brilliant. So say you're using something that's very thick, maybe you're using a leather or a thick PU or a particularly thick, denim or tweed you can adjust them to fit that because if otherwise if you can't adjust them you'd never get through them but and they come in a really nice box so if you were thinking about buying a present for someone at 16.99 this is a fantastic price because they are stainless steel so they and they're incredibly sharp but they are having a really good pair of dressmaking shears i I lo I've got two or three pairs and they were one of the um, one of the things I asked for for Christmas a couple of years ago I just want a really decent pair of dressmaking shears so actually 16.99 is a really good price they're from Millwood and we've all heard of Millwood they're a really well-known brand quality and heritage Millwood have been around for years and years and it says you should clean them regularly Clean them regularly with a chemically treated cleaning cloth or a soft cloth with some white spirit. Oh, I don't think I ever do that. And apply a drop of sewing machine oil to the joint from time to time. Well, I've never done that either. Well, I've learned something. I have to be careful with that. But do not, I love that way it says, don't cut through pins. Really? Why doesn't it say don't cut paper with them? Do cut paper with them, but don't use them for fabric after. Choose. Um, I've got another really cool little gadget here little gadget I've got here um, really great price for something that is very multi-purpose $5.99 now this I really like this so it does three things it cuts the thread there's a little thread cutter uh, just there there's a small blade that you cut your thread with then you've got this piece here that's slightly textured and you know when you want to push a pin or a needle through something, this see this texture bit that's um, a bit stiff and you 
try different things. You'll, I often use like the back of a pair of scissors or something to try and push it through. This texture part here does that. But the third thing is the bit that I really like. So I've got a pin, but I'll do it with the needle. If you need to pull a needle through something that's very stiff, it's really hard. And I have got, I've used um, jewellery pliers before to do that. Because sometimes if, if you're sewing through maybe leather or PU or something and you just can't get the needle through, um, or I've used pliers before, or if you get a pin stuck in something, but this has got this amazing little, at the bottom, oh, I'm trying to keep it still. There we go. You see that bit that goes in and out at the bottom? So if I open it up and put a pin in there, that is absolutely, you can't see I'm trying to pull that. Look, it's rock solid. So if I was trying to pull a needle out of something, that'd be brilliant. If you've ever sewn a pin into something and you don't want to undo it, but you've got the end, you could um, really pull that out. So if you ever struggle, you know, with dexterity, if you struggle with arthritis at all, and, and sometimes you can't actually get a needle through something, obviously you're not going to do all your sewing with it because that would be ridiculous. But if you really struggle to get it, that is brilliant because it really holds it really tight. Brand new in today, only $5.99. But what a fantastic little gadget. I mean, and it's great because you'll probably find that you will use it for one thing. I mean, it's nice that it's got the little thread cutter, but to have that, to be able to push, if you needed to push a needle into something. But that, you know, it's just genius. I've never seen one of those before. So I'm definitely going to get one of those because it, I don't know. Lovely. It's a lovely. Right, I'm going to do a book next. I am going to do so many dresses. Because I have got so little time. It's called So Many Dresses, So Little Time, The Ultimate Dressmaking Guide. Let's turn to the back first. So in the back, oh, this one's never even been opened. <gasps> I can open it. I can because once I've opened it, well, how am I going to show you if I don't open it? It's like, don't you find it really frustrating when you go and when you buy um, books and magazines, they're in plastic bags. You think, am I supposed to have a look? And I know why they put them in bags, because they've often gifts and stuff and it keeps it all clean. But if I want to have a look, that's no use to me at all, is it? So all the patterns are in the back and I'm not going to open them all out because I don't really want to fold them back up again. But anyway, all the patterns are at the back and they're not just at the back. They're in a really nice little pretty envelope in the back, which after you've um, unstuck it, like I have, you can just, you don't have to stick it back, you can just slot it in there. So let's have a little flick through because it's a really nice book. So you've got your normal at the beginning, you've got your normal sewing essentials and tools and equipment and what, uh, like this one, what fabric you should you use for an office dress? Evening dresses, office dresses and casual dresses. Um, all stuff about the basics, different types of machine stitches and hand stitches, um, how to make facings, how to do pinning, how to do lining. So it's actually quite technical in that it's showing you how to create facings. It's not just about laying out the pattern and how to cut around it. It's saying how to adapt a pattern if you don't want to do a neckline but you want to use a facing instead. It's showing you how to do that with some really good photographs as well. How to put a zip in because that's often the, the bit that stumps people. Even even covers boning as well. Um, buttonholes, how to make a dress form, so and how to customise your dress form, which is quite useful, seeing as we will be talking about that later. In fact, there's a whole section on dress forms, adjustable and non-adjustable, and how to make a dress form fit you, which we'll be talking about in a bit. But anyway, it's all covered in this book as well. So if you're interested in dress forms, then it takes you through some very basic dresses. So you've got like just the basic bodice and how to make it. And it's very, very clear. You get more information in this than you would in a normal pattern because it's because it's a book, you know, and it's and it's got a lot of generic things when you have a just a dress pattern they haven't got the space to cover so many techniques but because a lot of the techniques are similar to many patterns like cutting out and facings and interlining then they can cover all of that at the beginning so you've got a lot more information and then there's lots of different sorts of dresses in here and all the patterns are obviously available in the back I really love this one the simple yoke variation so it shows you how to take um 
the dress and create a different yoke on it. It makes it really unique, doesn't it? Then you come into things like, this is called the pattern design spotlight, raising darts and shifting darts. That's so important, isn't it? Because when they make dress patterns, they assume everyone's bust is in the same place. Ha! Huh. Some have got very high ones and some very low ones. And you know, there's no point in making a dress if the darts and are in the wrong place because the dart is supposed to come to the center of your bust. And if it comes halfway up it or halfway down it, oh, it's not gonna work. But this shows you how to shift them, how to adapt your pan before you actually do it, which is really important. Sometimes you might want to put the, sh the darts into the side seams or into the armholes, shows you how to do that or how to put darts in the centre, how to make it an empire way. So there's a whole chapter here on if you don't want to do darts and you'd rather do um, gathers, or if you don't have one dart, you want to have two. Then it talks about gathers, how to add fullness. So sometimes, you know, you make a dress, you love it, you love the pattern, but it's not quite full enough at the waist. How to do that, how to create little tucks. And then it moves into a pattern that uses that. So this is a lovely little strapless dress, which can be short or long, whichever you want. I mean, this is a really pretty short one, but you could make that into um, a full length maxi dress with some little spaghetti straps. Be perfect for the summer. Um, halter necks, that's really pretty, isn't it? And the best thing about making dresses for yourself is that I don't really like over the knee dresses. And I find at the moment, so many dresses are above the knee and I want them just below and the best thing about making them yourself is you can have them whatever length you want um, and then there's different variations so they've used gathered darts in this you know, in this halter neck dress there so it's very multi-purpose um, this is a really pretty dress I like that because it's got um, not, it is sleeveless but it's got nice wide shoulder strap parts how to add a cowl neck because that's, that's always a very, very flattering neckline. It's not too high, it's not too tight. You've got, it just gives a lot of um, movement to a dress, but also makes it quite special. And particularly if you use a very fluid fabric, it looks really pretty. Um, there's a wrap dress, but it's not a real one. It's a mock one, so it's a little bit safer. And then you've got strap. And I love this one, the princess bodice. So a princess bodice is where um, the bodice is divided into sections. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's seven. But it gives a lot of shape because you have the separate pieces. So you have your centre front and your outer front. And it creates more shape. It's also very multi-purpose. You can do really clever things with a princess bodice. So you can have one fabric down the centre and then you can use a darker fabric down the sides. And it gives that illusion of being a lot thinner than you really are because your eye is drawn to the centre piece and that looks like your shape. If you use darker panels down the sides, then that takes that away. You see a lot of dresses around like that, but the princess bodice is brilliant because you don't have to redraw the pattern for that effect. You can just use darker panels down the side. So that's lovely. Off the shoulder, really pretty. And then we talk about necklines and collars. That's a lovely one, isn't it? That's quite a flattering neckline as well because it's not too high and too tight. Scoop neck used in lots of things, particularly people with a bigger bust. The scoop neck is ideal. If you've got a bigger bust, you don't want high necklines because it just um, pulls too tight on the scoop neck. But you could use this scoop neck in any of the patterns. And that's the great thing is that, um, so you've got a deep V neck, but you could use the scoop neck for that and, and vice versa. So you just trace the bodice pattern that you want and then you can adapt that for different ones. And then the boat neck. So you have to, it all depends and you probably know what neckline suits you the best. Of all the dresses and tops you've bought, when you try them on, we've all bought different ones over the years, we know which one suits us. And some people suit much more a V-neck or a boat neck or a scoop neck. And um, you'll probably find the, the one that suits you, it's the one that you're drawn towards when you buy them. The sweetheart variation, that's really pretty and quite a good one for just little summer dresses or even more dressy ones. So there is so much, the mandarin collar, that's love, really lovely, that's very evening. Um, button down, this whole sort of shirt dress at the moment is really on trend and it's a really nice effect and with all the modern machines that you have today, you know, you don't even need to think about buttonholes, that most machines now will do the buttonholes for you and all of this, you know, I haven't finished, I'm only halfway, there's, there's loads, for £15.99 you are going to learn loads, the Peter Pan collar, that's so pretty so with this one, you know, you can really add a little bit of extra just detail. It just makes a neckline slightly more interesting. And then we move into sleeves. 
So do you like cap sleeves? Oh look, that's that's one where they've done the slightly um, darker down the side. So that's an apron dress. That's really pretty. Short sleeves, long sleeves, three quarter sleeves. So any of them in here, it talks about sleeve modification. Do you want to put a puffed sleeve? You know, you've got a whole lifetime's wardrobe. And, I, and then we're on skirts. Oh, look at that. That's stunning, isn't it? What a stunning dress. But it talks about skirts as well. The six panel skirt, the dirndl skirt. The pleated skirt, the ladybird dress. Now that's the box pleat. So the really is you, you've covered all the different necklines, all the sleeves, all the skirts. They've talked about darts, pleats. Then it's talking about modification. Do you want an A-line skirt? How do you want the hem? You know, I mean, this really is the sort of book that you will dip in and out of. And even if you're using, I mean, obviously it's got lots of patterns in here, as I've shown you, but even if you're using dress patterns that you've already got you'll find this really useful because when you when it talks about gathers or you're making something you think oh actually I really don't like those sleeves how do I change them this is a brilliant dressmaking reference skirt it's got the circle skirt in here and it actually shows you how to draw out a pattern for your own circle skirt which is really useful because you might have a pattern that you love the bodice of but you would really like a circle skirt it tells you how to do it it's all in there it's all in there Bust adjustments, that's really useful. How to basic pattern alterations, how to make the torso longer because maybe it, you've got a short one or a long one. How to change the bust adjustment. Again, we talked about the bust point. It's really important that your darts hit the bust point and aren't above or below it. So this is very much a dressmaking reference book as well as having all the patterns in it as well. Upper arm correction. Sadly, that is only about dresses. Let's have a look, right. So now we've looked at the book, let's have a look at some fabrics that we could do. We've got a really nice selection here. Let's get them all. Oh. Look at this, this is lovely. This is a, do you want me to give you the code on this one? This is Heavenly Garden. It's, it's a viscose, but strangely which is great because it actually looks like a linen when you look at the weave in it so it's 55 percent linen 45 percent viscose so you've got the best of both worlds it looks like a linen but it has the drape you can see when i drape it it has the drape of a viscose but the linen gives it a little bit more body than a normal viscose so it's perfect for your summer dressmaking beautiful large well i think they're peonies they look like peonies beautiful colors it's 145 centimetres wide. It's very, very wide. Really nice dressmaker. But you buy it by the half metre. It's 7.99 for the half metre. Now, if you need more than half a metre, put it into units in your basket. So say you need two and a half metres, you need to put five units in your basket. And you won't get it as centre as five half metres. You will, all our fabric is cut in our warehouse to order off the bolt. So you will have it as a continuous piece. And I love this. This is ideal for any sort of blouses, dresses, um, particularly things like maxi dresses, because it's got that, it's got the weight and the weave of a linen, but it has the fluidity of a viscose, which means it won't crease in the same way as natural linen. But it has got that lovely, lovely deep cream natural linen background. So if you're thinking about doing some summer dressmaking, I mean, you could use it for winter as well, obviously, because it's got some really deep, strong colours, but it's a nice, fab nice fabric. Um, next one. This is lovely. This is very autumn, isn't it? But actually, with the blue, it would... I mean, actually, this is very, very all season. It's got this lovely, deep burgundy, very deep burgundy bar um, background. So it's 98% viscose, 2% spandex. So it's got a little bit of stretch in it. That you can, there's the spandex, you can see the little bit of stretch. But the viscose, so it's got a really nice fluidity to it. The background is a very, very deep, I would say a deep red wine colour. And then the blue flowers on here, are they're a really dark, dark teal. 
but they really s set off lovely so I mean it would be perf perfect for dresses but also just a little blouse would be really nice you could use it for children's dressmaking but it is very all season so be good for the autumn winter months but also in the summer you know when you want some strong colours because quite often summer fabrics can be quite light and that doesn't just doesn't suit all skin tones if you want a bit of strength but this would be perfect if you you know it's a very grown-up fabric if you were if you were going to go out you were going to have a very special occasion to go to if you made something in this and also because of the spandex in it it's a little bit more forgiving as in you know it will drape round you well make sure when you're if we you sew with this use a universal or a stretch needle because it has got the spandex in it not a really sharp one um i like this one this i'm guessing is your linen viscose mix again is it this has got a deep deep cream background with these big splashes of red flowers yeah so this is the same as the um, first one I showed you 55% linen 45% viscose again it's 140 centimeters wide and this is eight pound 49 for half a meter it's got big red flowers and blues and mustards and greens um, when in it went, when in it, I'll tell you, I folded that very well. Love this one, the great big leaves on. Big leaves. Savannah Linen Chambre. I'm actually going to turn that round. Oh, no, that's fine. Because it's got mm, big, really big leaves. Got the cheese plant. Love the cheese plant leaf. But it's also got these beautiful, I think, hummingbirds on it. It's a real tropical thing, beautiful tropical. I mean, so you could use it. You, obviously, it's a dressmaking fabric, but you don't have to use it for that. You could use it for um, cushions or bags or any sort of um, outdoor things. I mean, it's, it's a linen viscose mix, but it's got this beautiful, it's not a really, it's not massively heavyweight. So, we, so if you were going to use it for a bag or an outdoor cushion, you would need to line it with something, but it's a beautiful print. Love the cheese plant. Very in. Everything seems to have cheese plants on it. Monstera. I was trying to think what the real name for them. Monstera. Um, this one is very watercolour. A bit Monet, this one. Flowering mist. This is the, um, is this the linen viscose mix again? Again, so you've got that beautiful, the look of the linen, but the drape and the less creasiness of the... Um, I was just looking on the camera, it looks like it's really blurred, but that is actually what it looks like. It's like sort of an all over wash watercolour. So again, what's lovely about it, if you're using it for dressmaking, you'll get some lovely colours in there. If you're using it for other things and you're cutting it up and making it smaller things, you'll get different pieces of colour in here. But it's just a really lovely time, I think this time of the year, to treat yourself to some dressmaking fabric. You've got maybe a little bit more time and space on your hand. Get ready for the summer because it will come one day, the rain will stop and you will have a whole new beautiful wardrobe. So if you team this with the So Many Dresses book, then there's, you know, if you buy, uh, buy yourself about three meters, that will cover most full length dresses, most things you need. And then it's beautiful. And then we've got two fabrics left, which are stripey. Stripey fabrics. So we've got a blue one and the green one. Let's start with the blue one. I like this. This is really summery. Well, obviously it's summery. So you've got, this is a very um, chambray denim coloured blue. In like a, It's like a ticking. So this is your linen viscose mix again, which we've already talked about. But um, it is like, like a ticking in the background. And then you've got these amazing bright coloured palm trees. So what a fantastic shirt. Man's Hawaiian shirt. Be brilliant what a great fun thing but again it was it's make a beautiful dress because with the um vertical stripes extremely slimming and flattering but rather than that sort of starkness of a stripe you've got these bright colored leaves all over it as well so this is definitely definitely part of your summer wardrobe you know wouldn't it make the most fantastic pair of long trousers or, you know, three-quarter length. You know when you make those sort of linen look um, three-quarter length or full-length trousers for some of the really wide one, like palazzo pants? This would look fantastic. Put this on with a simple white T-shirt. Beautiful summer outfit. 
Um, we've also got the same fabric, but in green, although the stripes in this one aren't just green. Ooh, no. They're green. I love that one. I can really see that as a pair of three quarter length trousers or just below the knee length. They would, it would just look fantastic. And I've got it, I'm just gonna turn it around because it's upside down. But a dress again, a maxi dress or just a little summer dress. So many different things you can do with this. And because it's got that look of the linen, but it won't crease as much. The viscose makes it drape better. So it's really, really good for summer outfits. But you know, if you wanted to use it because you just love the print and you think, I'm actually gonna make myself a little tote bag out of that, because we're selling it just by the half meter, you can choose how much you want. So if you want to make yourself something, a really fun little, you know, when you have reusable bags that you just pop in your handbag, this is perfect. And it's a, it's a really nice weight as well. It's because it has more, more weight than your normal viscose. But beautiful fabric. Right, let's talk about adjuster forms. I've only got 10 minutes because um, I talked about them very briefly in, in that book. So I'm going to move over to adjuster forms. Please don't look at my shoes because I didn't clean them today. So we're going to start with this one, which is the so, oh, look, my microphone's all got caught up. Um, the So Deluxe leg form one here. Now, the reason it's called that is because you can adjust the centerpiece here so that if you want to do it with trousers, you can put um, this the section of this over the leg and it will hang down so you can try your trousers on there. It's available in three different sizes, A, B and C. And the graphics at the moment, so the 159.99 is C and the, the size for that is... He's going to show me in a minute. He's going to tell me in a minute because there are three different sizes. So, all right, okay. So if we put that on screen, you can see. So if you want, if you're a 33 to 41 inch bust, you need A. If you're 39 to 47, you need B. If you're 45 to 53, you need C. Now, those are the minimum, the minimum and the maximum. You can adjust it slightly in between, hence the name adjuster form. There's also, you need to look at the waist and the hips and the back length and your height. So all of those, have a look at all of those. Those, that information is all on the website. You haven't got to write it all down and remember it. Um, because it's 159.99, it therefore qualifies for our split pay. So 0% interest, remember, we do, all we do is we split the pay over three equal payments. You pay 53.33 today and then it's yours. We will send it to you and then you've got it and then we'll just pay, then the other two will be over the other two months. So what's fantastic about adjuster form is you take your measurements and then you, on the side here, it tells you the measurements here and you can adjust this. This is the C, so I've got the largest size here. So you can adjust this to, and that will expand the bodice and you do it either side because although Nobody, there's no one size, is there? So you would so what you do is you take all your measurements, but take them with your underwear on because that's how your dress will be. So if you've got a particular bra that you always wear, you might have a bra that's slightly padded. Take it with that on, um, your measurements, and then adjust all of these sizes until they're they absolutely fit what you are. Then what I would say the best thing to do is put a bra onto it particularly if you've got a bigger bust, if you put a bra onto it and then you can pad that out to make sure it's right. Now, and then get yourself a dress or a top that you know fits you, that you know looks nice on you and then put that on and does it work? You can then, if you want to, if you want to add extra, so if you want a bit more padding on the bottom or in the tummy or something, there's no point in pretending. You've got to make this adjust a form. It's you, it's your body double. So, <coughs> so there's no point in making it what you think you'd like to be. It's got to make you, because the whole point is, is it so that you can make alterations for your dresses. You can do the bust alteration, you can add darts, but you can do it on here, not on yourself. Because when you're on your own, it's fine if you've got your own personal tailor, but if most of us obviously haven't, then you can use this and make it fit you. So it's always better to buy a slightly smaller one and then you can pad it out. You can just use normal polyester wadding and then you wrap that round and then keep measuring until it is exactly the right size. And then, you know, sometimes you've made a dress and you find that the neckline gapes a bit. 
and then you've got to remake it but you can put it on the dress form as you go along and you can add the extra darts in it because the neckline gapes if it's a little bit too tight around the armhole then you can adjust it then on the adjuster forms there's also a um hem measurer which is really really useful because it's very difficult you know when you're standing on a chair in front of the mirror and saying to somebody could you just pin this up it's never quite right you can put where you want the height to be and then the um which is what this is adjustable this goes down and then you can like mark your dress all the way around the edge or your skirt and get it just right um it's got really good wide supportive shoulders on it so you've got this extra piece here and you can adjust the measurement. And because of this one, this is this can be used for dresses or trousers. They call it the trouser one because you can move the centre pole over so that if you're making a pair of, you know, long full length trousers, maybe even the wider ones, you can move it over to that side so that you can get the trousers just right and put it on. But also it can be used for a normal dress as well. So this is dress or trousers. Um, and if you go onto the website, it explains all the features are in there. It tells you what it does. Um, so it's really good for jackets, skirts, long and short dresses, coats. Uh, you can do the trouser fitting. And it doesn't matter which size you're buying. You, it doesn't matter which size you're going to buy. It's still 159.99, but it is only 53 pounds a month. And, and that is interest free. We're not charging you extra for splitting the pay. And it comes directly to you from Adjuster Form. But you won't pay any extra postage and packing for that. It is still the set 395 and only once in the day. And if you've already bought the early bird, you've covered that anyway. But this is just, I think, when I talk to people, the most frustrating thing that people find when they're, um, I'm not even looking at the camera, I'm looking at the Adjuster Form. The most frustrating thing that people find when they're doing dressmaking is the fit. And often you buy a dress pattern, you make it once, and then you think, oh God, next time I'll get it right. But with this, you can put it on there, you can pin it. Once you start wanting to have a be a bit more experimental, you can pin fabric on and pin it to the shape you want and then sew it together. It's just basically, it's having your body double. So it's like having somebody with you all the time. And rather than to have to keep taking your jumper off so that you can put the dress on and then sitting back at the sewing machine, it's here. Also, when you're making dresses, particularly if they're, viscose or a stretch fabric when you come to hem them you really need to hang them for overnight or a couple of days because they will hang down particularly if you've got a very full pleated skirt so you can put them on here hang them overnight and then you can get that perfect measurement all the way around the bottom so if you like dressmaking you're interested in dressmaking but the thing that you're finding trickiest is getting it to fit you then this is what you need it's also good for hanging in the, putting in the corner of your room and hanging all of your clothes on as well, jewellery and scarves. We also have, I'm just going to move this one. Right. This is the very small version. But this is the Superfit Deluxe. Again, have a look on the website. There it is on the screen at the moment of all the different sizes you can get. Um, I could read them all out, but they're all on they're all on the website or you can scroll down. So this is the super fit. This is in charcoal grey. And again, this is the smallest size and it comes in three sizes. So you just need to choose the one that suits you. So small, medium and full of figure. But remember, you know, if you're not sure and you're slightly between sizes, because it does adjust and you can pad it to get it to fit you, then, you know, think carefully about which one you're going to have. It's best to buy one slightly smaller if you're right on the edge of the top end of it because then you can pad it out. But all of the, they're all very fully adjustable all this, all over so because everyone's waist and hips, everything. You've even got the centre that will come out as well. And the top you've got so you can measure the collar width. Everything is on there. Um, again, this is $159.99 and you can use your split pay for this at $53.33. Yeah, I think it's $53.33 a month. So just choose the one that's right for you. 12 and it's got 12 adjustable wheels. And on this one, it's got this really nifty device that you fill with chalk. And then particularly if you're um, trying to mark the hem on maybe a knit or a stretch fabric or a woolen fabric that's hard to mark, you put the um, hem measurement guide 
round the edge and then you just press this and it sprays a little line of chalk all the way around so that makes it so easy to hem perfect and you can pin into this so if you want to start creating your own dresses and you want to pin on to see what it looks like you can pin into this so it's worth it when you get it home is spend a little time getting it exactly right and then every few months check it you know because we all change from one month to the next so check it's right you can also use it for other people as well so if you're making something for somebody else if you're making it mostly for you and someone else just write down the measurements that you had it for you it's just a little bit easier because they're all written on the sides all the um all the wheels on one of the 12 and if i show you the back as well so it goes all the way around look you can um increase the back size because some people have a bigger back we are very limited on our adjuster forms they are extremely popular and especially because they're on split pay because it just makes it just an easier way to purchase it, doesn't it? If you haven't got the whole 159.99 now, you know that we're not going to charge you interest. But remember, we do send it to you straight away. So you haven't got to wait till you've paid for all three months. Um, before we finish the hour, which we're just about to, remember this is the last day that we can guarantee that you will get your sewing machine in time for Christmas. And we've got the 680 back in stock, which is extremely popular, and the 570 as well and two brand new machines. So do have a look on the website to see all the details. So I will see you back in a couple of minutes with Clive. So don't go anywhere, I'll see you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hello Sewing Street fans, let me introduce myself. My name is Clive, I live in Kenilworth in Warwickshire. I currently run a business in Kenilworth and that's doing alterations on people's clothing. So I really enjoy kind of providing that service for the local community. My sewing journey first began when my grandmother gave me a hand crank sewing machine um, and from there I was fascinated about how things were put together uh, to the point where I used to make um, clothing for my favourite toys out of toilet tissue. I've also kind of studied fashion design at Epsom University in Surrey uh, so I've kind of gained knowledge along the way of different aspects of sewing, like pattern cutting. So yeah, that's a little bit about my sewing journey. My number one sewing tip is don't give up. Sometimes you'll get frustrated and angry with yourself, but really just put it to one side and take half an hour, go and have a cup of tea and a biscuit, and then come back to it and then you'll kind of like have a fresh mind to start again. The positive happiness that comes from that is just amazing. So please don't give up, keep on sewing. My claim to fame, well, if you've been watching, you've probably heard my name mentioned on Sewing Street several times. Uh, my husband is Mark Francis from the Sewing Bee, the Great British Sewing Bee. Um, so that's number one claim to fame. My second claim to fame is I had Adele, uh, the beautiful, beautiful tones of Adele singing for me when I was a barman back in the day. It was, oh, it was just amazing to have her sing to me at my bar. So yeah, and also I've met Prince Harry at a VIP party. Stay tuned on Sewing Street and you'll see me very soon. I hope it all goes well, fingers crossed. 
like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. Hello Sewing Street fans, let me introduce myself. My name is Clive, I live in Kenilworth in Warwickshire. I currently run a business in Kenilworth and that's doing alterations on people's clothing. So I really enjoy kind of providing that service for the local community. My sewing journey first began when my grandmother gave me a hand crank sewing machine um, and from there I was fascinated about how things were put together uh, to the point where I used to make um, clothing for my favourite toys out of toilet tissue. I've also kind of studied fashion design at Epsom University in Surrey uh, so I've kind of gained knowledge along the way of different aspects of sewing, like pattern cutting. So yeah, that's a little bit about my sewing journey. My number one sewing tip is don't give up. Sometimes you'll get frustrated and angry with yourself, but really just put it to one side and take half an hour, go and have a cup of tea and a biscuit and then come back to it and then you'll kind of like have a fresh mind to start again. The positive happiness that comes from that is just amazing. So please don't give up, keep on sewing. My claim to fame, well, if you've been watching, you've probably heard my name mentioned on Sewing Street several times. Uh, my husband is Mark Francis from The Sewing Bee, The Great British Sewing Bee. Um, so that's number one claim to fame. My second claim to fame is I had Adele, uh, the beautiful, beautiful tones of Adele singing for me. When I was a barman back in the day, it was, oh, it was just amazing to have her sing to me at my bar. So yeah, and also I've met Prince Harry at a VIP party. Stay tuned on Sewing Street and you'll see me very soon. I hope it all goes well, fingers crossed. And welcome back to Sewing Street. So we're welcoming Clive on air again. We love having Clive on air. <laughs> yeah, we've just met George for the first time, who's going to be coming along at 12 o'clock to um, demonstrate the Britannia cover stitch. Now, he's never been on TV before, so please be gentle with him. If you've got any questions about the cover stitch, have a think about them now and send them in, because he's just arrived. Um, in fact, George actually sold a Juki machine to Clive. He did. So they're friends. They're friends. They <laughs> met before we met. We didn't know that. And then they knew each other. So it's like a little family here. So I'm so lucky today. So we, you've had, um, we've had Clive on air before a couple of times before. Fantastic feedback. We all love Clive because he's so, so talented. He's a great dressmaker. In fact, when you see him in a minute, you'll see he made his own top today. He's even got wings. So can we say hi to Clive first? Hello. Look at Zona. Could you turn around, please, Clive? Turn around. Look at that. Shimmer, shimmer. I so want those wings. Well, it's Christmas, isn't it? It so is Christmas. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> now, I'd like to say that Clive hand sequined those himself. No, I didn't. But he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but you could tell everyone that you did, couldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they look amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Th <laughs> Let's not go into the sequencing. Sequencing? Sequencing. Sequin, sequin it's very lovely. Anyway, Clive team. made his own top today. It's Which beautiful. is going to be in but the second. That is featuring a fabric that we've got at 11 o'clock, but he's just wearing it now. It's beautiful, isn't it? He's a, he's a little glittery person yeah, today. Yeah, glittery. He's very glittery. So we've got a maxi dress for you today. We've not done a maxi dress before. And you know we love a maxi dress. Now this maxi dress, it can be shorter if you want. There is a part on the... Um, Pattern that tells you how to shorten it, but in essence, it's a maxi dress. It's from So Different, 
who is that better? It's from So Different that we've used all their patterns for. We really like them. What I like about So Different, I first came across them at the Knitting and Stitching Show. I've made a couple of their dresses, and I like the patterns because they've just got little, all of them have got just a slight little twist, a little bit of detail that makes them unusual to other things. The patterns are really nice, thick paper. They come in lovely packaged envelopes with photos, and everything that you need to know on them. And there's always a bit of detail that's interesting and unusual. So you make something really quite exclusive. This one features moon pockets. And I'm not going to talk to you about those because Clive's going to be covering those in detail. And it has a really nice um, V section at the front, which we'll be talking about. So there's the pattern, 16.99. It covers sizes 8 to 26. So that's pretty good range isn't it tells you what sort of fabric you need to use from it lightweight cotton linen viscose silk or light jersey so that's nice you can do it in jersey or a um, woven fabric um covers a really nice big sizes and it's they are there's just the detail on it is different to most other patterns i think you'll really enjoy it. and the ones the two that i have made i've really enjoyed making so we've chosen some fabrics for you that will suit this pattern and we have four of them so the one that clive has used to make the dress it's lovely isn't it it's really lovely it's got um it's not a navy it's more of a deep sort of ocean blue background with a tiny spot all over it well you can see it on that dress and if and if you open it up, it features some real all sort of leaves and tendrils in really nice soft sage greens and peaches. So it's a really multi-seasonal dress. You could wear it in the summer or any time, really. Now, this fabric is, oh, it's very nice. It's very, very soft. Is it a vis, is it viscose? I think so. I think so. What is it? Kat's just going to let me know. Um, what the actual fiber content is it's very soft and it has a really nice drape for it which is massively important for a maxi dress because obviously you, when you're floating along the beach oh it's a hundred percent cotton oh. well i am surprised because it has it has that real softness and that drape of a viscose but it isn't it's 100 percent cotton which is unusual because it, it is very soft so more like um it's not your really sort of stiff quilting cotton it has got a really soft drape to it but you get in this um, bundle, there's four metres, which is what you need for the dress. It's one, four, five centimetres wide, and that's exactly what you need for the dress. So if you put the bundle together with the pattern, then you can make the dress that Clive's making today. We've also got it in red, which isn't really red. It's more the background, I would say, is... No, it's definitely not salmon pink. No. It's kind of like a... It's very think. deep coral. Yeah, a very, very, very deep. Very, 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 very A very deep. ready coral. Yeah. yeah. So it's not tomato or strawberry. It's more like a ready coral um, with the spot. And then the, the leaf and the tendril background, again, is a sort of a, a neutral, sagey green. And a bit of green and then a little bit of burgundy. So that's, a, again, you get four metres in this bundle. But that's a lovely fabric. So depending on whether you like the blue or the reddish, finished but it's a very soft red more of a coral red not your tomato red but it's ever so soft it has a lovely drape to it so it's perfect and this is the good thing about the fabrics that we offer you is that we've selected the ones that suit the pattern so you haven't got to think is the color right is the pattern the right size and scale is the drape correct we've chosen so that they are this one is wonderful look at this tropical print oh that's nice isn't it i love it isn't this nice yeah i'd like a shirt in that actually. that is very shirt yeah, isn't it yeah it's yeah yeah beautiful so it's got a really deep navy background and then these vibrant leaves this is a digital print you can really tell because it is so realistic so this one is 98% viscose and 2% spandex. So this has got, um, that has got that viscose drape to it. But it's actually the same weight as the, these two cotton ones. But it's got beautiful vibe. It'd make a fantastic shirt, it really would. It's even got bay leaves on well, it. Well, on the dress, it, you know, it kind of mm. suits that summery. Yeah, it does. So for a, yeah, it? for a maxi dress, yeah. it suits that kind of summery, floaty vibe. It would look lovely on your summer holiday. Very stunning. Stylish. 
cash. And this one's 62 99 Or if you had a special occasion to go to, you can guarantee when you walk, when you go walk into the room, no one else is going to be wearing the dress like that. No, not. Which is always the joy of making your own clothes. And finally, this is... This one's called Woodland Harmony. It's got a very, very deep olive background. I don't know what it looks like on your screen, but it is a green. It's a very deep, deep olive. Yes, that's definitely green. That's definitely, but a deep olive, not a bottle. And then you've got these beautiful pops of large flowers and tendrils. You've got some monochrome. You've got some colour. 98% viscose, 2% spandex. And then you've got little birds all over it as well. That, if you need to it's quite a big print but again it really suits that summery vibe but isn't that lovely I, I, it's got a lot of detail in it but what I like as well is it's very multi-directional so you know wh wherever you're looking and what whichever way it's um it's really showing what you can see but it would but this you know these are the off the fabrics that we have on offer for you once you've got the pattern you can do what you like with as Clive was saying earlier it would work really well as a color block dress because there are various different parts to the pattern when you look at the finished dress it looks like in this large print just one piece but it has got lots of other pieces which we'll go through in a minute so you could use it for color block but if you want to buy fabric that's the right pattern size the right depth of color and the right um, drape then those four bundles of four meters each are perfect Anyway, let's get on to the sewing itself. So welcome, <laughs> welcome, Clive. Hello, hello. It's nice to meet you. I know, I know. I haven't, I've seen, I see all your adverts all the time. Oh. And I haven't actually met you. Yeah, well, you had your uh, your first show with Mark, didn't you? I know, I did. It was quite funny, actually. I thought, fancy giving Paul Mark a <laughs> new present. I was brand new to presenting. He was brand new to the demo. I said, well, we just have to make it up together, to be honest. But it worked, didn't it? It worked. He was really yeah. good. It was good, wasn't it? Was it was really good, He yeah. does all right, my hubby, on telly. So yeah. now I've got to... Hello, um, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mark. We'll obviously be score point scoring at the end, saying who was the best. Uh, oh. oh. But you might just... You might just draw. <laughs> might draw, you, okay. Let's take you draw. So, what, where do we start? And what did you right. like? Tell me about the pattern. So, uh, it's, do you know, it's one of these, the thing is about the so different patterns. Um, for a beginner as well, there's not, the, a lot of the patterns don't have um, fastenings. Mm. Uh, so, there's no zips or, I mean, there's a couple that she does do that have um, zips and things, like mm. a couple of the dresses. But the nice thing about these is if you're scared of a, buttons or zips or anything like that they, they don't have it it's just literally slip over your head oh, wow yeah so that's quite nice for yes. a nice little positive yeah. to begin with um so this so the tricky part though to this so I, I don't know how well you can see that on camera i've i've made up half of it as you can see just so we can you know get going really there's a pocket there why is it called a moon pocket it's a moon pocket obviously i think for the shape Okay, because yeah. it's the shape of a moon. I'm guessing it's for the shape. Um, is it a complete circle then? Well, it's kind of like an oval. Right. I don't know if you can actually see the stitching there, but it's an oval all the way around. And then obviously you've got your pocket there. Nice. So it's and a real detail. They have got it? that bit up there, but you know, maybe you could like put, oh, okay. put another little stitch line there and kind of keep something, I don't know. Oh, that's clever. Yeah. <laughs> You can't really see it when it's on the dress, though, can you? No. So this is why uh, these these fabrics are lovely. They're gorgeous. Mm. Um, as in, if you didn't want to have that kind of as a focus, mm. but you still would like that kind of unique pattern, and people see it up close and they go, "Oh, that's interesting." These fabrics are perfect. Okay. But this would also work really well block colour you could do because there's one piece there one piece there that there, there will be another piece here you could just go crazy yes and you can't because of the print you can't see that as well on the actual dress but when you look really closely it has the v that comes yeah. here i think it? on the uh let's just we do an overhead shot can we have an overhead please can we have Bob? an overhead please thank you <laughs> <laughs> if you see here you'll see what we're talking about I'll let you zoom in Get my hat in the way. When you're ready. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Um, so obviously you've got the V there. Uh, you could have each of these pieces in different colours. 
and I think it'd look amazing. Mm. But as this fabric also, like I say, some, some, I'm guessing some women wouldn't want to have focus on any part of their body, so these fabrics are really lovely for that as well. Okay, but if you want to focus on certain parts of your body, because we all have our favourite bit, yeah. then you can use the colour blocking for that, can't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. And then you could uh, shorten it as well, because it has a okay. shortening line on the pattern. So you could make it sort of just below knee or just above knee? Below the knee, yeah. I'll just show you the... So this is what the piece looks like. It looks quite strange. It do Oh, the pocket's <laughs> all built into it. Yeah, that is a really it's all built in. Looks like an elephant. No, a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because it's here, and the then that side. looks like its nose. So that's the the front uh, piece, and that's cut on the fold. Right. Okay. Okay. So obviously, if you were going to colour block it, you have to bear in mind that um, these pieces are going to be on. Uh, wait there. Let me figure this out now. Yeah, the inside. Mm. So actually, might be quite nice to choose a contrasting colour to go on the top piece and okay. then it'll have that kind of flash. Because mm. that, that's what I like about the so different patterns. They always have these really unusual They're really details. versatile. If you go on her website, she's got loads of different versions of this dress. So, oh, okay. So yeah. photos of what other things? Yeah, just make sure you go and have a look. So anyway, let's carry on. So you've cut it out. I've cut it. Cut I've it cut out. it all out. <laughs> cut it out. I've we haven't got time for the cutting now. That's quite. No, quite I've built half of it just because I know that there's only a small period of time to actually get <laughs> things yeah. done. So, as it as it is now, I've already added the piece. I've added a. So I've got a raglan sleeve. Okay. Which is a nice, easy sleeve, isn't it? Really. Mm. Um, well, a bit easier to insert because you haven't yeah. got um, you haven't got gathering no. involved. And that forms part of the neckline? Uh, yes, yeah. I always think of raglan sleeves with knitting. You know, when you, you knit a jumper and you have a raglan sleeve. Oh, I can't knit. Well, I can knit, uh, knit one pearl one. Oh, that's all you need to do. That's all <laughs> that knitting is. And everything else is just a variation. And that's about it. But you often have, like in Aran jumpers, you have a raglan sleeve. Oh, uh, uh, mm. yeah. Do you think of an Aran jumper? Yeah, you yeah, jumper? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Have you got an No, I don't thing? know. You don't will have owned one at some point in your life. Maybe when I was younger, mm. when I was a little toddler. You probably had one then, and they usually have a, a raglan sleeve. So this is what the pocket looks like from the inside. And now there is a piece um, that's quite handy. It's a stencil, so you cut it out anyway, because this will kind of just give you a little stencil tool to make sure because you sew it on this side if you wanted to reverse it on the other side you could do a decorative stitch oh, okay. so if you did do it in block color uh, you could do a nice decorative mm. stitch in that oval but i would say you'd have to be quite an experienced sewer to do that to get it just yeah right. just to get it mm, perfect if you did it from the other side yeah so do you see that stitching from the right side you do yeah yeah so you've obviously got to make sure that your bobbin matches your right okay yeah uh, your top stitch so let me just put that over there so what we need to do first is well I've already done it but this is important so this is the top piece which again it, when you look at it you <laughs> might go what is this what is that? it's a bit it's a bit of a weird piece but it does work. So let me just get that the right way around. Hang on. Oh. No, what am I doing? Yeah, it's funny how many pieces, <laughs> but it's the same when I made the scoop yeah. pinafore. The pieces are really odd, but then it all sort of comes together. It's like um geometry. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark our little notches because there are notches uh, where you need to sew two on this. Okay. Uh, so let me just get the pen. I have already done. I have already done them. You can just about see. Oops, sorry, head. Just about see here. But obviously, make sure that you're. The nice thing about these patterns as well is when you're cutting out, all the different sizes of different colour lines. Oh, okay. So. So it makes it a lot to. easier. Yeah. So you can just not. Uh, not notch, sorry, mark where you need to be sewing mm. to. So I've got my little my little red dot there. And then there's one down the further end as well. 
So you're just going to make sure you're matching up those edges there, and then you're obviously just notching. Okay. Just pop that down there for a minute. And then on the other piece, so uh, the bodice piece, uh, which is, let me just get rid of that for a second just so we can see clearly. Again, very unusual shape, but you will want to make sure that you're notching these pieces also. Okay, so what section is that then? That's the uh, front. Right, so this is where if you did do colour blocking, you would cut them all out in different pieces. So, if you so that them. is the, oh, yeah. the front Because the there. pockets sort of sit across. So that V. Got it. And the pockets sit across here. the centre almost. Yeah. Right. yeah. Not on the sides. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Right. Now, a little, a little tip doing this dress as well um, is... Because you might kind of, when you're placing this, you might think, oh, I'm, I'm doing it all wrong. Uh, hang on. <laughs> I'm not going to say the words because mm. I got told off last time. What did you on. say? Sorry. Don't say sorry. No, I know. <laughs> Shot. Yeah, we were going to yes, fine him every time he said sorry. I said we should do it celebrations because I had to look in the kitchen and there's about 15 tins of celebrations in there. Not absolutely sure why. So we could give you one. One of those for me if I don't say yeah, the words. I just say sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can I have 10? Right. There we are. We're sorted now. Right sides together. And I'm going to make sure... So if you can see that, that these two bits, so this is not quite the, the moon. So this part here is the top half of the pocket. Right. Um, so I made sure with the, with the, the notches as well, uh, which I haven't, it's gone off that one. Just bear with me a sec. Because it's really important that you sew to that line. Okay. You don't want to go past uh, the line. Let's see if that's worked. There we go. Where's my pins? There they are. Well, not my pins, the pair pins. The pair pins. The pair pins. So could you just zoom in on that? I just want to make sure that this is clear. Mm. Can we have an overhead, please, Bob? Pop. <laughs> have a pee, please, Bob. <laughs> yeah, so see where this curve ends here? It needs yes. to be meeting exactly where that curve comes out here. So that's the, 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 the main part of the dress, and mm. this is the top bodice part. So you just want to make sure that it just comes in nicely just there. Uh, and I'm going to pin that together quick. I actually think I'm doing this the wrong way around, but never mind. So when you're um, preparing this piece as well, it asks you to stay stitch the sleeves and the, the bit where the points come up as well and on these pieces, which I didn't do. And why ah. do you have to do that then? So the fabric doesn't stretch. Okay, because that's... Because of it being... Yeah, <laughs> which I should have done. done. So is that because of the pocket or yeah. is it because of the angles? Yeah, I think it's the angles and the pockets because right. it moves quite a lot. Uh, Especially if you've used sort of quite a fluid or a viscose fabric yeah. for it. Uh, there we go, just pin these quick. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves, yeah, Clive's just pinning. <laughs> Have you remembered that joke you were going to tell me? Yet? Oh no, oh. I didn't get one prepared. Uh, I don't know any jokes, it's rubbish. Do you know I any know, jokes? No, I don't actually. You know when people say, have you got a joke? And you go, no, I haven't actually. Can't ever think Why of one. Why did the chicken cross the road? Yeah, and I never know the answer to that one Because anyway. it crossed the road. I <laughs> <laughs> Sorry viewers. Please send in a half decent joke. Yeah, please. That would be really lovely if you did. Mm. Yeah, Mark, send us a joke. Is Mark any good at jokes? 
Uh, yeah. Is he? Yeah, he is. Okay, Mark, send us in the joke. Pressure. I'm struggling no here. pressure. No, no pressure. Keep it clean, though. Yeah, keep it clean. This is a family show, <laughs> and it's not after nine o'clock yet. So this fabric likes to move around quite a bit. So this is a dress where you, you know, you need to take a bit of time and care with it. Absolutely. And think it through. I mean, certainly with the the, the viscose, because it's it's so because it's so fluid. It's like mm. silk almost, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but it doesn't stretch, though. I presume. Has it got, it's got it has got a bit it has got a bit of stretch in it so you do yeah need to only a little though it's not like dealing with jersey is it it's got no. a tiny it's such a lovely fabric it's so soft though isn't it it is really lovely i can just imagine this kind of waltzing down you know past the pool on your way to your mm. your meal and your restaurant yeah or wear it on the plane when we can oh, go, on, we can go on holiday can you imagine imagine going on holiday on a plane Oh, don't. It's such, a, <laughs> it's such a distant memory. Yeah, imagine that happening again. But it'd be really comfortable because it's really soft. Yeah, yeah it would, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the plane journey, it'd be amazing. Mm. Right. Oh, there's a plug thing there. Don't step on the plugs, otherwise the machine will just go... Mm. It won't work, will it? So I don't know how closely you can see on the machine. So this is a 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. And also that top mark that we've marked up there, we mm. need to make sure we're starting there because that's quite important for the, uh, the point where the dress kind of meets. Okay. Oh, so you start at that mark point where the two of them go together? Yeah. Uh, sorry, let me just do a stage stitch there, just so it's nice and secure. Don't sew over your pins. No. Mark did that once. Did Mark do that? He did. Oh, we nearly have to lose a point over no. that then. Mind you, I quite, I do sometimes. If they're horizontal, I do. For this, um, for this fabric shouldn't. as well, I've used a 1.6 stitch length. Okay, why? Just just because um, it's when you when you look at the seam, if you were kind of uh, where was I did sew one. Where is it? Oh, I'll find it in a bit. Uh, it was too far apart for the actual fabric because it's so light. You want it really close together. Oh, uh, okay. Because otherwise, it's going to pull apart, and you don't want that. Yeah, that's a very short stitch length, isn't it? Yeah. I just found it it ironed better. It looked better. Right. Because okay. uh, if you know, if it uh, if it was slightly too tight, say, mm. the seam would kind of come apart. Yes. It's not, not yeah. quite right. Well, that's very useful, isn't it? You've worked that one out before anyone else starts yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, it's better. It's better with, especially with the viscose. Um, the cotton, you should be alright with a normal stitch length. What machine are you using? Are you using the 720? Uh, it's the Juki uh, Hazel. Oh, we call it Hazel. Ha <laughs> Hazel? H Hazel, yeah. H -X H -X -L. HXL. HXL, the yeah. Hazel. Yeah, the Hazel. Juki Hazel. So at home, do you not, do you not um, name your sewing machine? No. Yeah, the, we've got this one at home and it's called Hazel because of H. Um, well, I've got two and one's like a new funky modern one and one's a really old singer that's been converted to power that would have been a hand one but I bought it especially it's just for machine embroidery that's oh, all right. I use it for nice because machine embroidery on a normal machine yeah can be haphazard but what, so was it semi-industrial or no it's just a singer an ordinary a really old like 1920 singer oh, right, um, right. but it has been converted to power so it's got a belt on it but no it's not industrial at all it's just that the old singer machines are like workhorses and um, when I do machine embroidery, I always take the foot off. I would love one. And I, so I just have the needle. <coughs> and if you've how. just got the needle and no foot, you can see where you're going. Yeah. But you have to go. But I like to do it quite fast. And for some reason, the old singer machines, they just, they just work better. I went on a machine embroidery course. Yeah. And that's what they taught me. So I bought it specifically for that. And it's, it's amazing, but it sews through. Wow, it sews through like PU and leather and everything. Oh, does it? It's not industrial, but I guess maybe the older machines. I mean, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do a zigzag or anything. It does go backwards. 
Right, that's quite nice. And it takes ages to thread up because there's none of this easy threading. You have to thread the thread through loops and things. So there's nothing simple about it. Sounds amazing. I want but one. I but I like it. It's just a thing of beauty. Note to so mark. I don't need a name for them. Note to Mark. <laughs> Let's have one of those, yeah. please. <laughs> about £200. Fully That's serviced. quite good, isn't it? Yeah, it was fully, fully renewed and had a motor and everything, but it is beautiful. So, as you can see now, we've got the opening for the pocket. Mm. Uh, so, the next pieces would be the oval shape, and that's what we're going to sew on the other side. Okay. So, let me just press, uh, excuse me a minute. So, now you've got a proper pocket in there. So, what is the oval shape just decoration? Yeah, I think so. It's not there for... I think it's just kind of a little bit of a unique... Um, yeah, but it doesn't form a seam that's necessary. It's more decoration. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. didn't want pockets there, I'm guessing that you could... Uh, as long as you left like a 1.5 seam allowance there, you could mm. just kind of sew straight up. Right. So okay. if you wanted to cut this off completely, if if you can see, sorry, can you see the stitch line here? Yeah. If you just continued that line on the pattern and on the the other piece as well, you just it'd just be a seam. Yeah. So you wouldn't have to have them. Yeah. I need to have a look at this. Ah. Oh, you see, you need to put your hands in the real thing. Now I can see where they are. So we're going to iron that. Me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just bring it with me. Just so they can see it better. Maybe I don't <coughs> drop it. Oh, God, hang on. <laughs> don't drop her. Sorry, everyone, I'm just moving furniture. Don't drop her. Right. We're just going to open these uh, seams. Oh, she makes me look really short, though. <laughs> so if you look at this, now you can see where these pockets are. If I come from the back... These are lovely. These, this is a really nice height, isn't it? Because you can put your hand in there. You're sort of, it's from like the top of your ribs, isn't it? Yeah. That line. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the other one there. Like almost like the level is if, you know, when you've got a hoodie and you've got a kangaroo yes. pocket. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite nice, sort of, comfortable. But you honestly, you, ca you have to really look because it's, because it's within that diagonal seam. You can't see them no, at all. No, no. But l like we said earlier, with a block colour, you'd that pop, especially if the the whole thing was like different. Each panel was different colours. Yeah. So if you had that one colour and that another, but because those are in the seam, you don't see them at all. Right. Wow. So we're gonna pop the uh, pocket bag on. Oh, now. and now I can see the um, the oval stitching. Well, let me just move that forward. That's so clever, isn't it? That's what I like about these patterns, though, is that they do have all these details in that you wouldn't normally have. Yeah. But so they thought about how that works. Yeah, there was a, there was a, there was a dress that Mark did of um, So Difference, and it had the same sort of thing. Uh, it was a dungaree kind of dress, and it had these built-in pockets on the Yeah, side. there was that, the, um, the scoop pinafore. That's yes. the one that I've made, and it's the... Um, it's very flattering, because it has the pockets that are within the side points yeah, yeah. as well. So all I've done here, so we have got the pocket bag piece here and I've laid that over. Oh, so that's your sort of pocket lining then? Well, Yeah, yeah, so it's, we're bagging out the pocket now, aren't we? Uh, and then obviously with the, this is the template piece that we've got here. Mm. So we're just gonna pop that on there. Obviously make sure the grain line's in the right way. This is the top. Let me just check that. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. And then uh, with a, um, a heat, is it a heat erasable? Heat erasable, yeah, heat erasable pen. I'm just going to mark around the edges, just so I've got that nice moon, moon oval. You could use shape. a chalk pencil as well, like the one we've got on our early bird. Yes, definitely, yeah. Wherever that's, mm. which is very useful. Now, obviously, this doesn't have to be neat because a you're not going to see it, and it will disappear once you find it. We hope. Yes. Yeah, so but yeah. always test it on your fabric first. But a chalk pencil or something like that would be ideal. I don't know where they've gone. Oh, I might have put them back in the box. <laughs> oh well. I was having to tidy up. Well, the problem is, is when you're moving from one to the other, we have to quickly tidy them up. So there you go. If In you the can eight one. roughly see, I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay. 
and then you pin it together. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Let's just move that over there a second. Yeah, so this bit, you're obviously going to have to pin it and it needs to be absolutely flat for when you're sewing. So we're pinning all three layers together. Oh, thanks. <laughs> there we go. Just like magic. Just like magic. Got another pencil. Although that's too light. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Yes, yeah, so you just have to try different colours and things, but you do. You would need to mark that. Absolutely. Like, uh, it, there's no way that. I mean, unless you're a perfectionist and you can sew ovals. Yeah. You're gonna have to mark it definitely. So it's nice that that piece is in there as well because if it wasn't, so she's really thought about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I remember talking to her when I first found these patterns and this is all, you know, they're things that she wants to do, but she's you know, a fantastic designer because they've got all these little details, but they are really made by someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. They're just a bit more unusual. Like I said, they're, they're obviously a really nice shape. They're really flattering mm. uh, for the ladies and for the gents. And for the gents. You know, some of them are gender neutral, which is really also nice. So I made one of her, made the swing jacket on here. Mm. And I made one for myself. Well, I've actually made three now. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I love it. It's a really good pattern. Uh, but obviously, I'm not going to wear a maxi dress. Although, mm. you, you never know, know, poolside. Yeah, nice did, you try, did you try this one on before you... No, I didn't. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't cut it out in my size. <laughs> But, well, my size being, I uh, probably, I don't know, 20, what, is it up to 26, is it? Yeah, 22, I think. 22, yeah. Depends I'd probably, what your size I'd probably is. have to cut out a 22 for me. Well, all you've got to do is measure your bust. <laughs> my bust. <laughs> yeah. It does say bust. So if you're a size 20, no, it goes up to 26. Oh, yeah, you I need would a definitely cut Are out you a 50, the... You're not a 50 inch bust, surely. What? I think I'm a 52 chair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, you can just about have a size 26 then. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit of a squeeze, and nobody really needs to see that, do they? <laughs> Maybe I may, I might make one just for the pool when we can go on holiday. Yeah, in that lovely fabric. I mean, you could wear this as like a uh, just to throw on over the pool, couldn't you? Yeah, as well? you could do. Yeah. In that kind of you know sheer fabric. Gosh, there's a picture of this dress that she's made in stripes. That's really clever because they're all matched up as well. Oh, yeah. So, so the, the multi-directional. That's, the stripes yeah. are going that way and then the stripes are going that way yeah. and that one. That's it looks really cool. Very actually, clever. So we've pinned that on the rounds. It's not that one, but that's a great one. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? I don't know if I Look like it. Look at that one, Clive. Oh, yeah, that's cool. With all the stripes, uh, that's really nice, isn't it? It shows how it works. In see, I think on that one as well. She, what she's done is because uh, you can actually see the pocket. She's mustered on a decorative stitch on oh, that. Okay. Oh yeah, she has. Oh nice. Look how different it looks in a, just in a, yeah. in a different fabric. It's beautiful. So you can really have a okay, nice that play one's with on this their pattern. Blog. So it's, yeah, it's worth it. You know, once you've got the pattern, you can really play with it, can't you? Yeah, have Make a little a completely bit of different dress. So I'm going to start this on one of the seams uh, just because, you know, t to lock the stitch and whatnot, it's a good place to start. Let's get the needle in. So obviously you don't have to worry about seam allowances here because you've drawn the line. Uh, that's that one. And just go slow with this because it's an oval. You don't want it turning into a square. Right, <laughs> OK. So just take this slowly. There yeah, are some seams that you can just whiz through. But with something like this, it's important you stitch on the line. But you've yeah. drawn the line, so you've really got to stitch along it. Actually, where's the speed on this thing? Let's speed it up a little bit. Just because I have made it already. So confidently, I'm like, yeah, it's Confidently, fine. he's going to say Confidently, exactly I'm going to go hell line. for leather. And then we can hopefully get through to the other side and see. Ooh. Now it's really weird. I'm trying to get used to actually talking and sewing at the same time, but as as so as when you're in your little cave. I know, I know. I'm sometimes <laughs> sewing, and the kids come and talk to me. I go, "Don't talk, don't talk." Yeah, I'm don't talk. I'm concentrating. I mean, it's bad enough when I'm crocheting and go, "I'm counting, I'm counting." One of them said, why are you always counting? Well, of course I'm always <laughs> counting. And then I start going, 24, 25, 
Well, you just so they be quiet. Yeah, then they'd be yeah. quiet. So we're, we're going to be turning this as we go, but okay. every now and again you will need to kind of scoot it round. And if your machine is clever enough, and leaves the needle in, mm. just make sure you leave the needle in, otherwise you are going to get a square. You will get a little hole otherwise. You'll get a square. <laughs> but this <laughs> is where go. it's worth taking your time on some bits, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And also it's quite satisfying after, after you've kind of finished the pocket mm. to see the oval on the other side. Now, with this machine, I have purposely used a different colour bobbin thread Right. Um, just so we can see. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the So line I suppose you side. could use the same bobbin thread, and then if you wanted to really highlight it, you could then go on the other side and stitch with a top stitch thread on top of what you've already done. Yeah, I think it does allow for you to go on the other side, but I probably would secure it this side yes, first. Yes, and then, and yeah, then that's do, what I mean. I think yeah. I would sew it on, and then I'd go over and yeah. sew on top of what I've yeah. done. Because then on you've, the got other an, side. you've got the line then. Especially with the decorative uh, stitch, because yeah. otherwise that's going to be, yeah, it's just kind of like in the dark, isn't it, I suppose. Or you could pin the template on the other side and just make sure... Yeah, that's true. You know, you draw in chalk or whatever you've got. Oh, look at that. My, wine, my line's gone a bit wonky there. It's <gasps> because you were talking. I know. And I don't, I don't like sewing and talking, and I don't like sewing at night either. I don't, I like, yeah. I, like I, quite, I, could work, I could work till two, three in the morning. I no, could. it's not the time, it's just the light. I prefer to sew in daylight. Oh, uh, right. Mm, probably just needs a better lighting, to be fair. What's our lighting on? Uh, on I think, I, don't you think you have your sort of own time? It's like in the, in the daytime, I like to sew, I'd be on my machine, but it's the evening when I want to do something like embroidery or knitting or crochet. I don't want to be on my sewing machine in the evening. Don't you? Weird. I, once you're in the zone, though, I, it's, I find it very difficult to get out. Well, of it. yes, that's it. If you do something that's really great, and you think, oh, I'll just finish one of those, I'll just finish one more, one more. Yeah, I'll just add one more piece onto it. Mm. <laughs> I used to be like that when I, I used to do cross stitch. I don't do so much now, but I used to do a lot of cross stitch. I think, oh, I'll just finish the light blue. <laughs> <laughs> Five hours later. <laughs> I know Mark's had to come in there before and be like, it's like midnight, and I'm like, ow, oh, is it? Mm. But when you, love, when you love what you do, it's nice just to get it in the zone. It is nice, isn't it? it? It's annoying, though, when you have to stop. Now, where's that gone? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Can we see that? There we go. I'm glad I did that in a different colour now. Beautiful. And that's your pocket. And that does, and then it does look amazing, doesn't it? Because yeah. it is just all folded within, and the fact you've got the little bit above. Yeah. But it just looks, you can't, really can't see it. So obviously give that a press once you've finished, just to mm. set your, your thread in. Uh, and if anybody has not heard, that, heard of that before, it's a good thing to do. do it just relaxes the cotton, doesn't it, into the mm. fabric. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go straight into Yeah, I always, uh, that's something I learned a while ago, just press the seam before you do anything else to it. Always press. Uh, you know, when I studied at university, they, they couldn't um, emphasise enough how important it is to press at each stage. Mm. You know, some people don't do it, and then that's why you'll get a, probably a shoddy-looking garment. Um, it's so important to press where you need to press. But also pressing a seam after you've done it. Yes. So, because I always think it's because the fabric's been disturbed yeah. by the stitches yeah. you press it, or does it affect it's the It's had a needle well? put through it a thousand <laughs> times. Mm. It needs a bit of, you know, massage. To get back A bit again. of heat, <laughs> just to kind of go back and to And it does normal. make a difference if you press it and then press it open. Yeah. It makes it um, better. The pressing open looks better if you press the sort of flat seam. So is this bit tricky? Because now I presume you're joining this top point. Yeah. Um, which well, that's important, isn't it? Yeah, it you've is. Got yeah. Three, got you've three got three. Got three points seams coming together. In there. So, uh, yeah, let's go the overhead. So where we stopped before, uh, do you remember I marked the point on the main, the the bit that comes mm. up here? There's like a a mark on it. So we need to sew to that point on. Uh, so we've sewed to these two seams. Now we need to sew this front seam that goes down the centre here. Mm. So we're just going to pop those together 
and I'm just going to make sure I've got that point in where it is. Yeah. Just pin that together. You can do it by, I think you can do it by eye as well. Um, but it is important to kind of not over sew because otherwise you're going to get like a gathered, a gathering okay, in the fabric. Okay, so you've got to get it just right then. Yeah, it's got to be just on the nose. So slow down a bit there and... Yeah. So when you do the reverse stitch, or the locking it, locking it off, how... Well, this machine's got the, it goes up and down five times, Oh, isn't okay. It? Um, but obviously when you're getting to that point, then just, I would go back a couple and then go forward just to, two you see you've got to count so right. it's not going forward two or three yeah you've got to actually because that count. that's going to yeah. make the difference um i mean you might even want to hand crank it to that point okay just because some machines in my experience we had a machine once and you did a back stitch and it went back as many you you'd only press it a once or twice and it'd go back five or six times and you're just like that's not what but i my wanted machine that will cut the thread not this machine this machine doesn't do that the one i've got when it cuts the thread it goes forward one and cuts so when you're doing something like uh, that does it? it's sort of you you press the cut button and it goes forward one and then cuts and which mostly doesn't make any difference at all but for something like this where every stitch counts yeah then it really does make a difference so the, so that's where you need to just take time and get it right yeah don't rush it. Sewing is about enjoyment and it's about yeah. kind of having... It's not just about the finished product. No. And as sewers, you will get frustrated because, you know, we've all been there. It, it, we've made mistakes. You, you're going to have to unpick, but that is the only way that you're going to learn mm. how to do it properly again. Yeah. You have um, to make mistakes to learn, don't of you? Of course you do. And throw it over to the other side of the room. <laughs> And come back tomorrow. Do a bit of cussing. Mm. I always say, like, put it away, go and have a cup of tea, a biscuit, come back to it with a fresh pair yeah, of eyes. Or tomorrow. Yeah, or tomorrow, yeah. I know, I think when you're tired and you're frustrated, that's when you make more mistakes. It's better to just walk away. Absolutely. And actually, I always find that it's that time after you've walked away, whether it's five minutes or you leave it till tomorrow, that's where you sort of come up with a solution. Yeah. Think, yeah, ah, I think, yeah, it's, it. and also it's kind of like, it's good to talk to other people. I know in the, the Facebook page, a lot mm. of people talk to one another. Just reach out and ask a question if you're not sure. Oh, yeah, I mean, our face, our fan page is fantastic. It's brilliant. To join the Sewing Street fan page. There, be, and, there's, and we have one on Yarn Lane as well. And it's great because people put pictures in and go, I don't know what to do about this or what do you think I should do or I'm having trouble or I can't find. And... Um, the Sewing Street and the Arnhem fans are lovely, lovely, lovely. They're always really supportive. Yeah, I, I, do you know, since I've been on here, I've had a lot of lovely comments. Thank you, everybody, for that as well. It's really, it's quite heartwarming mm. and flattering. And I know, I think it's easy to, to think, oh, well, they're just on telly, they're not really human beings. But yeah. when somebody <laughs> says something nice about you, it really, really makes a difference. And we have a lot of guests on here, new guests as well, who are really, really nervous. And the boost, it gives them one when people say nice things. I've like got George on today. He's new. George, he's new. He's a newbie. He's a newbie. And it really makes a difference. Because I think, you know, newbies. we're all crafters. Yeah. And sometimes a little bit isolated because we might be the only person who crafts or you don't know as many people who do. So to be part of this big community where we all sew, it's lovely. Yeah, absolutely. I and also I we were all more. beginning beginners and rubbish once. Yeah. <laughs> Still rubbish. And still sometimes. rubbish, but maybe still, not. all my hats in the way. <laughs> no, but we were all we all started, so we all remember things. Yeah, innit? we all remember how difficult it was when we all started out. So, and a lot of things you learn by trying new patterns or by people giving you advice anyway. Yeah, as you go. Now, I've done what I've told everybody not to do. What did you do? I've gone a bit too far. <laughs> Do you know, I said to you yesterday, I did my radio show yesterday and it yes. went all wrong. This is the bit where it goes wrong. I'm not going to say the uh, And why did it all though. go wrong on the radio show? Because the, the music Well, they play. say that it's haunted and my playlist went and, uh, oh. yeah. So Mark isn't just a, a Mark. Oh, Clive, Mark <laughs> and Clive. Clive isn't just a TV star, he's also a radio I do the star. radio. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, I've gone too far and it's got a little pucker 
Which, have we got an unpicker? Have I got time to do that or not? Mm. Yeah, have we got an unpicker? Oh, we have as well. I've got one. And we've got one available on the show today as well. We've got, in fact, that one. But it's sold out. Oh, it's sold out. So you can't buy that. That's a nice seam ripper, isn't it? Remember that for when it comes back in stock. That's a lovely so, one. So unpicking live on air. Yeah. <laughs> unpicking live on air. Yeah. It happens to us all. Oh, I know, but it's, it shows it's real, doesn't it? <laughs> So over half of the stock of this dress pattern has gone already. So if you want it, you need to put it in your basket. It is a lovely pattern. I'm thinking I, I would have a go at making it in one of these um, all over prints, but I'd like to have a go at the colour block or the stripe as well. Yeah. I think it would be really stunning. I think I'd make it first in an all over print so I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and then go on to the other colours. I think it's the pockets that do. I love a pocket. I do love Are a pocket. Are you a pocket person? I am, yeah. I do love a pocket. I was tempted to put a pocket on this, actually. Where, see, would, you, where would you put it, though? Oh, my goodness. Maybe on the front. Like, oh, like a, just a, a big, like a hoodie. Yeah, yeah like, like a, a hoodie, hoodie pocket, yeah. yeah. I quite often put side seam pockets in dresses. Particularly when you've got microphone packs. I've had to tuck them over the top of my tights. <laughs> and I have to say, it makes your tights fall down. So if I've you've got trousers on. Um, normally I've got a pocket, but I haven't today. I've got my tights on and they're quite woolly tights. So they're sort of Note falling down self, at the back now. Don't wear tights and have a sound pack. <laughs> I'll remember that for next show, Becky. Yeah, don't wear... Don't wear... Don't wear thick woolly tights. Because <laughs> otherwise um, it makes your battery packs fall down. And then your tights fall down. In We've only got in five turn. minutes left, Clive. Uh, do you know what? So, so here's one I made earlier. <laughs> So what you do is you unpick then and you start again. Yeah, unpick and just make sure that you're absolutely spot on right. that kind of mark where you've marked mm. it because those sew lines will kind of meet mm. in a nice little point as they do. Well, you did that one. On that dress. Beautifully. It's what happens, isn't it's it? It's because you were talking to me, so don't sew It's talk. live television. But it is worth taking the time at this point. If it's not right, unpick it and get it right because yeah. if you get to the end... You're going to be annoyed then, aren't you? Yeah. So after that stage, uh, you add the raglan sleeves uh, onto mm. the front and to the uh, back, which I don't have the back. Oh, it is here because it's attached. The back piece. And then you would turn it right sides together. So, yeah, so once you've done the pockets and that scene there, it's all plain sailing. Yeah, it's plain sailing from there on in. Um, I always kind of prep my sleeves, uh, just to iron them down first, so turn them okay. around twice and then you, you undo that uh, just so you can go all the way down. It's got a right. split down at the bottom, I'll quickly mm. show you that. Oh yes, yeah, so oh that's nice. It's you need that side, with the maxi though, yeah, don't you? Yeah, it's got a side split here. And with this as well, uh, you uh, fold it down once and then again, so that would sit nicely with your, your seam allowance there. Uh, and then you start from this end, sew all okay. the way up. And then all the way back down again. So we're just covering all those raw edges. To finish the dress with the edges, you can use pink and shears. Mm. Or uh, an overlocker. Yeah, or an overlocker, yeah. Um, and then obviously you need, just need to stitch. turn the hem up and mm. then finish the that dress like that. Um, well, it's nice actually that the tricky bits at the beginning, because that's when you have the sort of the most <laughs> energy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's when You've you get got to the, the end. time and the headspace mm. to think about it and uh, take your time. Don't mess it up. Yeah, take your time and unpick it if you get it wrong. Unpick it. Don't say, oh, it'll be fine. Yeah, because if it does it. go wrong, it's okay. Mm. It's not a problem. I'll probably go home now and unpick that and do it properly. <laughs> and it'll work first yeah, time. Yeah, it'll work, yeah. Because just... no one's talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be on television. I'll be in my little cave. In your little, your little well, sewing we've cave. Well, we've got a, a... We converted the garage into a bit of a sewing studio. Oh, so, did you? Yeah, it's nice to have it separate from the house. We're quite lucky. Oh, nice. Yeah. So have you got two sewing machines? Have you got the setup set? Yeah, Mark's got this one. And mm. I've got the Q, Juki QVP. So it's just straight stitch. 
So if I need... You'll have to get yourself a little Britannia cover stitch next. Well, I've got a Juki cover stitch. Have you? Yeah, uh, and an overlocker. <gasps> wow. I invested a few years ago just for my business. Wow. Yeah. Do you have... Juki do you have all like, the way. Do you have Sorry. like this little sewing competitions? What, at home? Yes. Yeah, I have I have gone into the sewing room and gone, five minutes sewers. <laughs> do you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which Mark kind of just looks at me and, and glares. Goes, it's not funny anymore. Yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> What's I'm funny? Not, I'm not having that. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. Mm. Thank you so much, Clive. Thank we you. will see you at um, 11 o'clock. 11. Sorry, 11 o'clock with your wings um, to show wings. us how to make your wing top. The wings. To make this other. So, I haven't got the wings, but you know. But we'll talk about wings. Yeah. So we'll have just a quick look at the pattern once again. So this is the Moon Pocket Maxi. And now we know why it's called that. Because it's got these lovely moon pockets here. But they're so hidden. But it's a really lovely. There's loads of different things you can do with this. But I'm definitely going to get this pattern. I like the idea of the all over print. But I, that picture I saw of the stripes, really like to try that. And I think in the colour block, it'd be very flattering as well because I would choose the right colours. I mean, you, in fact, you could use up pieces because it's got so many different pieces. You could use up different bits of fabric in it. And it's nice that it's, you can change the length. So you can make it as a maxi, but if you want it a little bit shorter, you can as well. Whenever I buy a pattern, I try to buy them whether I can use it more than once. Because usually the first one I make isn't 100% brilliant. The second one's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then the fabric that we've got, just to run through in case you miss them the first time, the one that Clive was just working with is this one that's in this beautiful dark olive background. It's a viscose fabric. It's got coloured flowers, it's got monochrome flowers, and then bright coloured birds. It really is a very unusual but stunning fabric. This you are guaranteed, if you make this, well, not guaranteed, but almost guaranteed that nobody else will be wearing it except for Clive. Because <laughs> he's the pool, by the pool. Way. So if you see anyone wearing this by the pool, say, hello, Clive. And how <laughs> <are you?"> <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one, the foliage canopy. He will be wearing this one as a shirt. Yeah, definitely. By the pool. That's lovely, isn't it? So that's a very deep, deep midnight navy blue background. And the leaves in here are very vivid. They're, well, it's a digital print, so they're very realistic. This one looks a bit like bay leaves. It's got that kind of stem to it. And um, it's very small, for, you know, you've got ferns and ferns and leaves in there as well. And then the fabric that's on the um, model behind me is this lovely, this is actually a pure cotton. It feels very much like a viscose, but it isn't. It's a pure cotton, but it's a very light drapey fabric. It's a lovely sort of deep ocean blue colour with spots on it. And then you've got um, flowers and leaves and tendrils in sort of soft peach apricot and neutral sage green tone so it's a very soft fabric very flowing and then we also finally have the same fabric that's in a very pinky red so like a deep coral but it's not like strawberry red but it's a very deep deep corally red um, so if you are a dressmaker and you want to improve the way that you do your finishes and the way you sew and you've heard about a cover stitch but you're not absolutely sure what it does then um, at 12 o'clock we've got George from Britannia who is going to explain it all to us um, and remember this is the last day that we can guarantee if you order a sewing machine we can guarantee delivery before Christmas because um, they come they come direct from the manufacturers and they've promised they can do it before Christmas. The split pay on all of the machines, because they're over the limit. If you go on the website, you can see all of them. And we've got a special saving on the um, cover stitch today, which was George was quite surprised about. So join us at 12 o'clock that. Anyway, um, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea for a couple of minutes, so don't go anywhere. In the next hour, I've got some fantastic Tim Holtz fabrics. And if you've not seen his fabrics before, you're going to be really interested in these. They're very unusual. Um, they're very intricate. And I've got some lovely fabric bundles to show you. So go and get yourself a cup of tea and a chocolate finger, and I'll see you in a couple of minutes.
Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn? Bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. elements. Hello, welcome back to Yarn Lane and this is the Tim Holtz Fabric Hour. I've got a few other things as well, but I love Tim Holtz Fabric. I'm going to start off with this amazing mega, mega bundle. So there are 10 fabrics in here, half a metre of each, but you're getting half a metre for free. So one of these is free. Pay for nine, buy nine, get one free. But these are beautiful. Now, if you've never come across Tim Holtz before, he's um, a really well-known, renowned designer. He designs a lot of papers in paper craft, and he also designs fabrics as well. Now, he's a real collector. He collects all these different sort of elements, and he collects um, just small things like little pic pictures and postcards and texts, and then he puts them all together like a mosaic and creates fabric pieces from them. So. If, yes, please. Yes, I'd love a cup of tea, Elliot, thank you. <laughs> he says that in my ear. Mom, how am I supposed to say yes, but I'd love a cup of tea? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, we can, you can also, you don't have to buy these as the bundle. They are also available by the half metre as well. But if you buy the bundle, you get one for free. Now, let me just, yeah, I'd love a cup of tea and a chocolate finger. <laughs> um, so if you look at it very closely, you can see in amongst all of the bright coloured lines and um, it's a bit like a sort of a fabric, it looks like a textured woven fabric. But then you've got lots of, um, let me move that over, you can see like the bits of script on there. It's like he cuts up sort of almost um, pieces of envelopes or if you look at this piece here, this has got like part of a newspaper in it, it says 82 Great Portland Street. West one. So these aren't just sort of made up things. These are things that he's actually, he sort of 
collects all of these different things and then puts them together as a fabric. So what I like about them is you can use them as whole pieces fabric. And that's really nice because you can, you know, you can use them. You can think, oh, I'm going to make a bag out of that because that's beautiful or I'm going to line something with it. But if you do EPP or you do applique or you or any sort of small patchwork, they're brilliant for fussy cutting. That says on their great Portland Street. Oh, and this is called Portland Street, but that says James Taylor. wonder whether... And then that says boots made on Dr. Meyer's principle. So there's loads of little elements. So what I like about them and what I've used them for is you can cut out all these pieces. So if you want something... So this is obviously a bill here. It says £5. But it's beautiful. So you get all these, like... It's, um, it's a bit like fabric art and... Um, scrapbooks you know where people create lots of different things together so that's that fabric that's called great portland street and remember you can buy them um by the half meter as well 749 half meter so i'm going to go through each of them because they're so stunning you kind of need to see them individually and the code on this is fhu 181 I mean, this is amazing. I mean, the colours on this are really stunning, aren't they? They're really vibrant turquoises and rich, rusty reds. And this looks like almost bricks, but like a mosaic again. But then you've got writing printed on it, but it's multi-directional as well, which is really lovely. So you've got one going one way, one going another way. So you can you can use this if you if you. If you don't feel like creative yourself, that you think, oh, I couldn't do that, you can just use this, someone's done it for you. But if you want to use elements of it, maybe if you're doing EPP, you could fussy cut these and cut the hexagons so there was sort of one of the letters in the middle or part of the colours. So from a half a metre of fabric, you've got about eight different colours going on there. So then you don't need eight different fabrics. So if you wanted to do, say, small applique or EPP, you've got all the colours on there. But that's beautiful. I really like that one. We'll have to try and decide at the end, which is my favourite. But um, remember, we cut all the fabric off the bolt to order. So if you're buying it by the half metre, but you want more, maybe you want to make a maxi dress in one of these. Can you imagine the maxi dress in one of these? But you want more than that, then um, just put... So say you want three meters you need to put six in in six units in the basket and it will be cut for you um as that but obviously with the mega bundle it is pre-cut as half meters so let's have a look at this one next um the code on this one is hru 187 it's lovely isn't it that's a really lovely green rich sort of grass green mustard yellow yeah and it's got a grid across it as well but then here um it's almost i was wondering whether this is a recipe on here yeah one jet table mat no this is a bill this is a bill because it says one jet table mat or receipt or something one butler's tray but it is, it's a receipt for something. And I know, because I use a lot of his fabric, that he collects all things like numbers and receipts. But it's got grids on it. So it's, it's multi-layered fabric with all these different colours and elements. So anything you make from it, I mean, I've used it for light, just lining a bag because I keep a stash of it. I've got a big bundle. And then if you put it in the lining, it's just really unusual. But then standalone, it's quite stunning, you know, if you wanted to make some cushions, because it can look quite... Um, sort of industrial and masculine so if you wanted to make some cushions for a room maybe like you know a boy's bedroom or so or like you know a man bag then it works really well as that because i think it, it has that feel to it but the colors are incredible so i'm going to fold that one up but remember if you love this and you can't decide and you want the whole collection then you of all of these you don't want to miss out on any then you if you buy the mega bundle you get half half a meter for free 
which is £7.49 savings. It's £7.49 half metre. Look at the colours on this one. They, you've got really rich orangey golds. It looks like someone has painted lots of colours and then sanded them out. This is GF. U160 and it looks like they've sanded out the colours and then layered it's very collagey but it's got um, blue and gold GM Hopkins front official records private plans and actual surveys but you see with things like this say you wanted to put a label on something that looked a bit unusual then you could cut that out and sew that onto it because I quite often um, I collect a lot of I collect jeans and make things on them and I made a bag from jeans but I cut off one of the labels from the jeans and sewed that on and it just look it just gives it that sort of slightly quirky element so if you were making something and you cut the label parts on and sew them it just looks really unusual it looks it's a way of you creating your own mosaics or you can just use it as it is as a whole a whole piece I love these so this I mean this is why I love Tim Holtz that you know the are uh, there isn't anything else quite like this his fabric is really unusual so here's the next one <gasps> um the code on this one is cuu152 so this one you've got shades of rust orange and um like verdigris the color that copper goes but it is the color that the um copper goes when it's um, aged like verdigris but this says specimens of handwriting showing the improvement by a home practicing of those following the self-teaching system I mean I wonder where he gets all these because this is obviously not something he's written this is pages out of a book he must just collect old pieces of book and then you know I'd love to see the whole design process imagine he must just layer all of this but you know if you were going to make um, cover a book that would be beautiful or a book bag or you know the fact that it says or you could just cut that bit out specimens of handwriting it's very multi-use it's the so when I bought my fabric I just bought a big bundle of it just because I loved it with no idea what I was going to do with it and honestly I use it all the time that one's called specimens of handwriting um Oh, this is very, this is a really stunning colour. Let me give you the colour. Um, FBUI 96. And this one is called Fractured Mosaic. This fabric is designed to have a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. Make sure you keep the, um, the salvage of this before you do anything with it. Because that piece in itself, you can then use this um, collage mosaic fabric to create your own. Because isn't, wouldn't that, I, would, I would cut that out and I would definitely sew that to something, even sew it to a quilt I'd made. This fabric is designed to have a distressed appearance. <laughs> just because it's just a, because I do, and whenever I cut my fabric out, I always cut the selvages off first, wind them all up and I keep them in a big glass um, kilner jar. But this is really un unusual. So you've got very deep midnight blues and then turquoises and oranges and peach colours but it is it looks it is very pixelated but it is like a fractured mosaic it's just beautiful but again what's great about it is you've got lots and lots of different colours here so if you are doing small fabric piecing in just half a metre you've got all sorts of colours going on but you know on its own half a metre will make two cushions or one if you use the same for the back and the front but we've got, um, I've got as well some complementary solid fabrics, which we'll run through in a bit, that go with these. So if you want to make the fabric go further, half a metre of this will create two cushions and you can use a plain fabric for the back. Right, if you want to buy the mega bundle where you get half a metre free, we only have five left. So it really is now or never. And they all say this fabric, this one's called Stained Damask, D-R-U-I-8-9. I think it looks very, um, it's like a sort of a mosaic church floor and it's that really lovely beige neutral tones. And then here and there, down it, there's a stripe. That one says South Branch Valley National Bank, obviously. But it's lovely. Or if you wanted to use it, say you wanted, you know, you obviously you can use it for quilting. But if you were using that for a block, maybe you were 
It's interesting, actually, when I'm looking at it, because I'm very close up to it, it looks very different than on the overhead. You can see these sort of big lines, this sort of distressed look to it. But when you look at it very close, it's different. But if you were going to put these in a quilt, what an amazing quilt, because there's so much interest and detail without you even trying very hard. So here and there, you can see little bits of text appear. So you don't, it makes a completely different look, but I'm actually quite careful with mine because I love them. Um, I've got a fat quarter bundle, so which we will be showing you in a minute because we have one here. But they are, they speak so much on their own that you don't actually have to try that hard. These are folding up quite well. This one is JQUI01. And this one is called Faded Tile. Faded Tile in Neutral. So again, you've got lots of different shades here of um, browns and blacks and creams and ivories. It's not the same, no, it's not the same print as the last one. It's very similar elements in it, but it's not the, it's not the same print at all. In fact, I don't think any of these are the same. They all, although they, go together as a collection they blend well they're not like you know when you get a lot of collections and you have three fabrics but in different colorways these are all sort of done they're all quite individual so again you know there's just so many different uses for this and when you look at it really closely you suddenly see all this text appearing what does that say yeah <laughs> <laughs> All these different things appearing, like the number 1906, just appears out of it. It's a lov really lovely fabric, but just, just unusual. We haven't had Tim Holtz before. And I don't know why, because I love Tim Holtz. He does a lot of paper, in paper craft, um, he does lots and lots of different papers that people use for scrapbooking and card making but thankfully does fabric as well and this one is called London Gridlock London Gridlock yeah now why is that called London Gridlock I'd love to know the story behind that one so Tim Holtz is American but a lot of his fabrics feature um, UK and English prints because you can just tell by the the addresses and the names and the numbers on them so you know when you look at it when I look at it like that from above you could just see like really unusual all of these colors are sort of merging together you know if you um, put these together you imagine doing flying geese with something like this and if you did this fabric with a plane every time you cut it and turned it it would look slightly different so a lot of the work is done for you I think he's a I think he's a design genius, actually. I think even if I tried to do that, well, I know what it would look like, a right dog's dinner. That's just beautiful. That takes somebody with real creative. This one, I love this one. It looks, I would like to see what this one's called. It's called Crack Shadow. I was gonna say, it looks very like marble, but it's like that crackle glaze look, but it also looks a bit like a thunderstorm. So instead of having a solid black, you could use this instead, but I'm going to turn it around because I know that's upside down. I can tell suddenly by the text. So it looks like, you know, that um, crackle glaze effect that you used to do. Um, but it's also, when you get very close up, can we have a close up please, Bob? Um, you can see all the text written in it, just underneath the surface. So when you get right into it, you think, you look at it and think, is it a thunderstorm? Is it... Is it like crackle glaze? And then in amongst it, there's all of these words. Just amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that whole collection. So I've, have we got any left? Mm. Just check in. A few, just a few, less than five. So if you want all seven, then... You, you, sorry, ten. Oh, ten, because one was seven ninety five. If you want all ten of these fabrics... You can get one of them for free if you buy the Mega Bundle today for £67.41. and pence. Now, all of these, you can choose which is your free one because you just get sent them all. So you decide. But remember, you're getting five metres of fabric here. 
you could make the most amazing quilt from these fabrics. Wouldn't it look fantastic all together? It would look incredible. Or keep them in your stash like I do and use them for all sorts of things because they are stunning. When you just need a little bit of colour for something or you just think, oh, I just want to make that nice. You know, maybe you've got a, one of those cream tote bags that you get from the supermarket and you want to make it your own. Line it in one of these and change the handles and put it. Suddenly you've got the most un individual bag. Use the um, the different elements, particularly the text in it. Cut the selvage off and use that because I love the fact that the selvage says this fabric contains imp imperfections. I guess maybe some people might buy it and think, oh, that looks a bit funny. But they, they you know, they, because it does say this is designed to have a distressed appearance. So very, very, very limited on this mega bundle. So but you can buy each one of these individually. If you have a look on the website, you'll see them. Or if you're on the website and you click on watch live and scroll down, you'll see all of them on there. So if you want to buy them individually, you can. If you want the mega bundle where you get half a meter for free, we have only got two left. So put it in your basket, check it out and it's yours. Right, let's move on to the fat quarter bundle. I love this. Mm. This is not very, yeah, we, we like to give you a price comparison so you can show how competitive we are, but we couldn't find it. We couldn't find it. So in this, uh, I'll just keep talking to you while I try and do this knot. In this bundle, which is $79.99, you get 20 fat quarters, which equates to five meters of fabric which just shows you that that last one, which was 60, 60 something, um, was fantastic value. So, God, they do knot these tight. It's so I can't get in them. So they feature all these beautiful fabrics. And I'm just going to show you something as if by coincidence, this is something I made and it lives in my handbag. <laughs> and I said, oh my God, I've got my... So I made myself a, a little first aid purse because I wanted to have... Um, just to put my paracetamol and neurofen in. And that's amazing. That's why I said I'm going to get that out. So, but I made that from one of these because you can see that is that fabric. And um, this was one of the Tim Holtz red ones. But although I've got about five different fabrics on here, I've patchworked them all together and they really work. So I've picked out a few of the little signatures and the bills and the numbers and put a red and that. That was just a tiny piece. And as I was saying earlier, this is what... I like to do with them is that whichever of the fabrics you join together they're just really unusual and then I just keep that in my handbag with a little red zip but that shows you how much I love Tim Holtz because that always lives there so let's have a look through these this actually I think is the one it is this is the one that I use to make my purse well I that is my purse is all done from patch work it is all small pieces but look if you look at it you can see I use that bit that's really weird because I made this I don't know about six months ago that bit is that bit and that bit is that bit and then if you turn it over that bit is that bit so from one just fat quarter of this fabric you can either use it as it is because it's amazing it's like maps and bills and that's a Time return and delay report of engine and train employees, <laughs> obviously. But you can use them for lots of different things, but the colour in it all goes together. So I had great fun when I was, because I fussy cut it, I thought, well, I need a piece this big and then a piece that big. And I did have some, Tim Holtz does also these plain distress coloured reds. I used a bit of that as well. But you could make loads of different things for that. But it just shows you that my little purse looks, looks lovely and you get 20. So that's one of them. Oh, this is nice. I've not seen one that looks quite so... This is a bit floral for Tim. It's a bit floral for our Tim, isn't it? Oh, but it's OK, because he's got a bit of distressing in it and a few words, so it does go with it. That's really lovely. It's very vintage, isn't it? That's very cushion that you'd find in one of those little boutique gift shops or down the posh garden centre, isn't it? Hmm... Yeah, this is much lighter. So the abandoned range that we've just done is much darker. These are lighter and the prints are a bit smaller. But this is, yeah, it is very posh garden centre cushion. 
Mm. Or imagine a little a little bag in that would look lovely. But as patchwork, I mean, obviously, you know, this is quilting weight cotton, and I'm sure a lot of people will use it for patchwork. But you can obviously use it for a lot of home makes, like little bags and purses and things. <gasps> oh, I love that one. They're all like stamps, you know, the sort of thing, but stamps that you would stamp a, a parcel with. Franks, that's what they're called. You know when you frank something? So they're all those franks and they've all got name different things on. That's Paris, Beaumarche. 15 euros. Oh, it's lovely. This, but again, you know, you could cut out these little elements. If you wanted to cut out a little stamp and you wanted to applique that onto something, then you've got it there already. You can use the whole multi-print. Actually, if you look at my Tim Holtz collection, it's got little holes in it because because um, I go, oh, I'll just have that. But, you know, even um, the circle, because it's got the stamp behind, is lovely to put on something. Or you can just cut it so the right thing is in the right place. But because it's got so many elements in it, this is a fantastic fat quarter. This is all... All of these, I haven't even, not even there yet. God, I recognise so many of these. Because <laughs> I love this bundle. I remember all the, I remember all the bits that I've cut out of it. Isn't, <laughs> isn't this lovely? Because you've got like a, they've like, he's overlaid sort of a blue floral print. And on top of that, you've got different bills and numbers. There's part of a calendar. So, you know, you could just cut out that strip. For a book cover, if you were going to, um, you know, buy a, an A5 notebook, that would be lovely. Or a passport cover would be beautiful in this. Or, you know, so if you were making um, a travel bag or a travel wallet, that would be brilliant. Or even, in fact, the map one that I showed you at the beginning would be ideal for that. But again, you've got lots of different elements in here that are really lovely. Why is it I can't fold? I just can't understand why. I, and it's the same with maps. I don't know. Do you think it's a, like a spatial awareness thing? There we go. You can never get them, yeah. Cats is right. When you can go and get a blow up bed, you can never, ever get one. And why? And I'll tell you what the other thing is, is Christmas lights. Why is it? Why do they not sell Christmas lights in a box that's sort of one and a half times the size of the lights? Because you buy this box, you put them all up, then at the end of Christmas you want to put them back in the box and they never go back in because the box, and I don't even know how they pack them in, they must be done in the factory. But they should make boxes for Christmas lights that you can actually get them back in. Mm? Yeah. And the same as um, folding fabric. This is nice. I like this one. February 1912. So this is like um, fashion plates. This one says, for mature figure, a smartly si styled something. It's soft jacket and something. Important notice, ready to wear. So it's like um, a pattern or a fashion plate. I love this one. March 1912, February 1912. But, the, you know, you could just cut out one of these. I love that. Yes, this is very, um, very vintage. Look, I've cracked this now. Look, what you do is you fold the outer edges in. Oh, I'm going to get a job in a map factory now. Now, this has got to be one of my favourites. I particularly, I love fabric with text on. And this is like newspaper text. Oh, this is, no, this is dictionary. Curiosity, noun. Curiosity, curiousness, interest, thirst for knowledge. Verb, be curious. This is from a dictionary. I wonder if they all are. Amusement. Yeah, it is actually. I um, covered a lampshade in a, one of the fabrics like this. It looked really, really stunning. Just for like a small office. But they are, they look, they're really useful for things when you just want to cut out a small piece. I've also got, I had a denim pinafore and I cut out front patch pockets from a newspaper print and they just look really, you know, it's not much, but it was, and it was just a simple denim pinafore, but with um, patch pockets in a newspaper print, they look really good. But again, perfect for book covers. But if you want to add little details to things, so, I mean, this was a, a pinafore that I bought, I hadn't made it, but just by adding these little pockets in newspaper print, look very cool people go where'd you get that from go oh, i can't tell you 
Yeah, you know, but just little things that you're going to make, little gift bags. So say you've bought somebody, um, you know, just sim something simple like some hand cream. You make them a little gift bag from one of these fabrics. Suddenly it looks like you've spent an absolute fortune. Yeah, like that posh shop or the posh garden centre. Or you get those lovely little um, boutique sort of gift shops in nice towns. You always look in the window. It's that sort of thing. This, I presume, Central Business District. Yeah, I, I'll be able to do this one now. This comes from Street Maps, but I don't know where it is. I bet if, I, if you live there, you'd know. Elliot Park, where is a city that's got post office, the Federal Office Building? Elliot Park... There, two L's and one T, and Lorino Park. Okay, and then there's a place called Lorino Park, and Marshall High Athletic Field. This has got to be, I reckon this is in the States, though. I feel, because look at the grid formation. I think this is in, in America. And that park is called Lorino Park, L O R I N O. Let's see if you can find that. Yeah, we are going to find it, but it's definitely in the States. Stoke Arch Bridge. We'll give Kat till the end of the show to find out. Lorino Park, L-O-R-I-N-O. -O. That's got to be a bit more unusual, hasn't it? <laughs> Other thing. Street maps. One day. We'll find out. I'm going to keep this. It's got to be American because of the grid system. But it's a lovely sort of um, almost Lorino with an L. L-O-R-I-N-O. L-O-R-I-N-O. I've probably got everyone out there. If you find out where that is, can you let me know? I'll put that to one side. Nelly, it's not having it. Um, this is music. Oh, that's lovely. So if you know anyone who's a, a musician. Yeah, these are, yeah, these are, I mean, they've, they're quite sort of urban, but they are very gender neutral. There's so much you can do. So you had that floral one at the beginning, but look at, at this one. I've I got it. I don't do it upside down. No, that's the right way up. No, depends which way you want to know. This is the right way up. But what's unusual about it is it, it's got all the notes on, but it's also got loads and loads of numbers. So it's almost like this is a composer's piece. Um, it's somebody who's um, created this music, but then has written all the numbers on it. So maybe it's something to do with an orchestra, but it's just all lovely sepia colours. But again, you know, those little details, things that you just want to add on to something to make it a bit different. If you buy somebody a book, you know, just make them a little gift bag out of something like this that you keep keep it forever. Little um Uh well yes, no, I Helen says she loves the Tim Holtz fabrics and she wishes she was brave like me to cut into it. But I know I'm with you. I struggle. I have to really think about cutting into them. But you imagine making a set of napkins. So you, you could make with um with one fat quarter, you make a decent sized napkins. Imagine making a set of eight of these out of your eight face, so you don't have to cut into it. You'd still have 12 left, or even a set of six of them. But they would look stunning. You imagine, you would to take these, and you'd cut them into a square, hem the edges, and then, you know, you have, when you have people around, you get these out for dinner, people like, oh, God, where did you get these from? You go, oh, it was that really posh boutique shop, you know. 12 99 each. Because they're obviously they would cost a fortune, but it is beautiful it's free spirit fabric so it's very very good quality 100 percent, but very soft with a really nice it has got a nice drape it's not it's not um stiff at all it's a really nice fabric this one is lovely the mega bundle is sold out so you can't have that one now you can still buy the fabrics by the half meter and there's still some of this fat quarter bundle left tennessee oh well done cat Oh, did they? Two Julies. Did they know? So this is a map of Tennessee. I knew we'd find out in the end. Because they because he wouldn't have made they wouldn't have made that up, would they? Thank you very much, Julie. Look at that. Tennessee. Now we know I'll, I'll put it back in the pile now we know where it's from. 
So buy it if you know anyone from Tennessee, you need to buy that fabric. This is great. This is like um, part of a typewriter, type, typewriter, left hand, right hand. It's like, um, oh, it tells you where you put your fingers. So this is from like an instruction manual for typing because it says left hand. Yeah, one, two, three. So every little bit of it, like I say, you can use the whole fabric. So you make a napkin, it would be beautiful on its own. But you can cut all these bits out for other things. So there's different receipts. But there's nothing repeated in here, though. Every fabric is really unique. You are. I, I like the graphic. I mean, I think it's it really appeals to me. But I love fabric with writing and text on because there's so much you can do with it. But I, yes, I am quite loath to cut into mine. So when I made my little purse, I used just one, one of the fat quarters. I didn't start going around them. But, and I do cut out little bits of them, but I would struggle to cut out an element from the centre. This is lovely. It's like a mosaic floor. Um, it's called memoran memoranda. It's like a mosaic floor, but then with black text over it. And then it is very sort of aged, vintage, antique. Ooh. That one's got a, a, a um, first aid cross on it. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I haven't got this one because I haven't got that exact fat quarter bundle. I've got, I think I just had a few. <gasps> yeah, but look at that one. Rochelle salts, dose from one half to two teaspoons full. Red Cross Drugstore, Plattsmouth, Nebraska. This is lovely. But it's very hard to find this fat quarter bundle because we looked for it everywhere. But you get so much in this. This would last you for such a long time. You imagine all the little details that you could use it for. I do keep mine. I, I have a special shelf in my sewing room. One part is for the Liberty fabric and that all lives in an organza bag because I keep the tiniest scraps of that because I use that for all sorts. And then the Tim Holtz fabrics there. So the, the stuff that I know I need to be very careful with and I don't just use, don't just use willy nilly. This one has got all, um, this has got French writing on it, as well as the Nebraska drugstore. And let's have a look at this one. He must have been French that day, or maybe he was in Canada. This one is more French as well. A Le Moine Fille. Boulevard Victor Hugo, Paris, Gay Paris. That one's it. This is all French, this one. But on the background of it, you've got these lovely green, um, tealy coloured green flowers. And then all of these are put on top with these little red points. So again, there's a lot of stuff you can take out of this. But as a standalone fabric, let me move it over. That's really unusual, isn't it? Really like that. Right. How many have we got left? We have got... My pile that I've been going through is not quite as neat as the pile I've been through. I know, it's for all this for 79 99 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, there's a lot of you with it in your baskets because you want to see the whole thing before you go for it. But um, we're going through it slowly because this fabric you need to look at properly. Silver medal awarded for chrysanthemums. Obviously, Royal Horticultural Society, October the 14th, 1890. See, I, these are definitely real things. These aren't things that he's created. Look at this one. Imported and, ra imported and raised of chrysanthemums, Rycroft Nursery, Hither Green, Lewisham. I wonder if that's still there. Do you think Rycroft Nursery in Lewisham is still there? If you live in Lewisham, if you live in Lewisham, can you tell me if Rycroft Nursery is still there? So this is, yeah, yeah. could you ask your friend if that's still there then? And it's, and it's a receipt for someone who's bought some chrysanthemums. Bought of H.J. Dunes. But these, um, 1892, I wonder where, where they've got all of these for. And then you've got um, an invite to a party in 1871. Shall we go? I think we've missed it. But it does say at the bottom, none admitted without a lady. <laughs> so this has been, this is an invite, look at this, that's invited to this. So somebody, yourself and lady, are respectfully requested to attend a select ball 
to be given at the Alder Fellows Hall, New Washington, on Wednesday, February the 22nd, 1871. None admitted without a lady. <laughs> what, so that it's not too raucous? Not too raucous. And then more chrysanthemums. But then you've got lovely things like this, orders attended to, day or night. You could just cut that out and sew that onto something. You, you know, if you really, if you're into the whole sort of um, <sighs> multimedia where you're joining lots of different fabrics and stuff and layering, this is ideal for it. But if you also, you just want to use it as a fabric on its own, it's really nice. Now this one, actually see that's got the same print that's on the background of that so he's used that that one but then it's a different fabric ah oh, look this is that is that um hj bought of hj jones important raised with chrysanthemums so i think of it because he's got loads of receipts on then this one so these must be like a chrysanthemum type print and then these are all silver medals awarded for chrysanthemums and all the bills of the receipts from it so we need to know if rycroft nursery is still there could you google it yeah <laughs> lewisham that's those two and this one actually has got that same sort of floral background that we had in the first one. Remember this? No, I don't think the nursery's there anymore. So this has got that same um, floral background that we had in this first one that I showed you. But in amongst it, bingo. Is that bingo? This, what is that? Is that a bingo card? Shall I turn it round? Do you think that's a, what is that? Do you think that's a bingo card? I don't know, because this is drive-in theatre, Bath, New York. Oh, not my Bath. Ticket. I don't know, it's 41, 58, 62, 72. What is that? No. I've no idea what that is. If anyone knows what that is, can you just um, message me? Hmm? I don't know what it is, but but then but a, a lot of on a lot of the fabrics, the um, the, diff, the different receipts and things don't always go together. So again, you know, there's a lot of cut out pieces on there, a lot of fussy cut pieces. You are you are getting absolutely loads for your money here. No, we still haven't finished. We still haven't finished, and I know which ones I've gone through because I haven't folded them up as well. So on a lot of them, as so they do, they do all hang together, because we've got um, other ones that feature similar colours to this in the background. Clearly, I won't be able to find that one now. But there are yes, look, there's that one there that features that, but it's a different fabric. So there is, you know, there is something somewhat. If you wanted to create a quilt with these. Can you imagine how amazing? I mean, I, lo I love them on their own. I would just use them as little pieces. But if you made a whole quilt with these, because you have got five metres of fabric here, then, you know, if you get one of the, if you get a book, of one of the fat quarter books that does quilts specifically with these, you could create something absolutely stunning. Because the, the fabrics in this fat quarter pack, they do, um, they do all hang together. Right, this is a beautiful map one. I do like map fabrics as well, because again, you know, it's just a bit more, there's a lot more you can do with, with them. They're great for, bang. That one's lovely. So this is, where are we? Do you know, the problem is they've cut, this is a map that's been cut and chopped. So we've got the Pacific Ocean, we've got Australia, and we've got South America, United States, Hong Kong, I think it's a bingo card. I think that was this. a few few viewer messages say I think it's a bingo card. But they've overlaid different maps on top of each other. I like that short route to Australia via the Panama Canal. 
but if you wanted something you know with maps on but you know sometimes you don't you see these um map fabrics by the meter you don't really want that much it's just something that you might want to use here and there then you've got that to use it just here and there you've got a whole group so you've got maps writing music chrysanthemums possibly bingo cards maps of tennessee almost half the stock of this is gone and i'm not surprised whoa look at that yeah so this is like oh it's a bit floral for tim holtz isn't it but it's not is it it's vintage flowers with an overlaying of scroll text but you know you you've got so many flat quarters here you could split this with somebody couldn't you keep all the ones you like but I do think, I think if you if you wanted to make a quilt from these without putting, you know, much effort into the sort of the colour choices, it's all done for you. And wouldn't it look at, I think if I made a quilt from these, I'd hang it on the wall because these fabrics, it, st it does save the, if you can't bear to cut into them. Because it is difficult. I have to really think what I'm going to do. Well, when I made the pockets of my dress, I knew that they would look really stunning. And then I used one of the other fabrics to bind the top. And when I made my little purse. But you really have to think. You don't want to waste it. So if you made a whole quilt from these, which you could do from this whole bundle, whoa. I'll add that to my list of things I want to do before I die. Make a quilt from Tim Holtz. Yeah, <laughs> I have to be quick though. Hmm. Because the fat quarter pack's about to go. I'm not that I'm about to die. Think of this one really completely. I didn't know which way up. This completely different to all the others. Insects. Look, it's covered in bees and ants. And they're like botanical prints, though. So you've got sort of botanical illustrations of bees, ants, wasps, flies, ooh, larvae, caterpillars. Oh dear, caterpillars. Not really, I don't like caterpillars. I don't mind the bees and the wasps. I really don't like cat. really don't like caterpillars. And then plants, and then you've got all this sort of background. So again, these are lovely. So if you wanted to just, if you wanted to fly, you could just cut out a little fly. But if you wanted to use it as an all over, you could as well. Yeah, if you were covering buttons, you know, when you're trying to look for something, there's lots of tiny elements on here. And then this is the last one. It's still going, but this is the last one. Oh, it's got a bird. This one's got a bird. I can see the bird looking at me. Bags. It is. It Susan says it shouts bags. It does. Look at they, I mean, they, I love that. So you've got these two birds, but then you've got all these bird cages and then you've got prices. For how much the birdcage cost. Buy bright and attractive labels help the sale of goods. Oh, yeah, Mary says it shouts her, my husband's quilt. Mm. I know, he is like, I just think that he is, he's a real textile artist. Well, I mean, he does um, paper craft, papers as well. But the, just the way he layers together all of these things and then rubs out a bit and adds a bit. And they don't always necessarily, they're not all from the same city or even the same thing. So, you know, we've got birds and leaves, bird cages, but then we've got something about bright and artistic labels. So how, I don't know how he does this, and then a few um, francs. How he does this and puts it all together, I don't know. But it's beautiful, isn't it? But, you know, when you've got, I know it's 79.99, but you have got five metres of fabric here and it is stunning. Mm. It is, yeah. So Mary says it's a perfect balance between floors. And it is, I mean, I guess it is slightly more masculine, isn't it? Because it's got a lot of, it's a bit sexist, isn't it? It's got lots of maps. Women like maps too. But I think the colourways are um, just as a bit more masculine. Chris has bitten the bullet and bought the bundle one. I know, I don't blame you. Oh, her uncle was a great, was a florist who developed prize winning chrysanthemums. Oh, we'd like to know whether that nursery, anyone remember the nursery? And 
the map of Tennessee. You lot have been great today. So if you could, if you could tell me, if you ever been to that nursery in Lewisham, would be useful. But there's just so much detail, and he he obviously uses stuff that clearly is out of sort of copyright or needed at all. So this one, remember, is the fat quarter bundle, twenty pieces. We have looked for it everywhere, and we can't find it for sale anywhere else. Half of the stock has gone already, and luckily, you see the my favourite one again is the one that I used for my purse. See? which is upside down now. And that is the one I use for my purse, which I just made up. Wow. Wow. It's lovely, isn't it? When I, I said, oh, how we've got to go through all this fabric, but do you know what? It's, it's actually, because it's so lovely, if I was in a fabric shop look at this, I'd want to spend the time. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it all tied up. I actually want to look, if I'm going to buy this, I want to see every single piece of fabric do you think if I don't tie this up properly, then they won't be able to have it and I'll have to take it home with me? Right, just as a quick reminder to you, today is the last day that we can guarantee that you can have a sewing machine before Christmas. Can you believe there's only six more days till Christmas? Um, so you need to buy that today at 12 o'clock. So in just an hour, we've got George on with the Britannia cover stitch and he knows everything about those. So if you th ever thought about um, buying cover stitch, do I need one or not? He's been working in the sewing machine industry for a long time, he comes from Franklin's and his family, well his grandparents set it up so they know everything about sewing machines and they sell them and they import them and they service them. So he's gonna come and he is the authority on the cover lock and he's gonna explain it to us. Um, it is his first time, it's his first time on TV. But I've all, I mean, I've, I haven't got an overlock or a cover stitch. I've just got a normal one. And I've always wondered, do I need one? Don't I need one? So I'm going to be asking him hopefully all the questions that you be asking because um, I do lots, clearly, lots of sewing. So it would be nice to know. Um, just to remind you, just before we finish this hour, we've got the 680 back in stock today. A lot of you have been asking for it because it's been extremely popular. When we launched Split Pay back on the 12th of October, um, it sold out that day. So obviously it's still on split pay. So it's two, five equal payments of £219.80. There's no interest on that. We just split it by five. Once you've paid for it, we will send it to you. Well, it comes straight from the manufacturer. They will send it to you um, in time for Christmas, but today only. Um, and you will get it straight away. The, the other four payments will come out at a monthly basis from your account, but you don't have to wait to pay for it all. Once you pay your £219.80 today, you will then get it, which is fantastic, isn't it? So buy yourself a Christmas present. Um, but remember, Jane um, from Elna is in tomorrow, who will be de demonstrating how it works. So if you, so if you manage to get it today, because we haven't got masses of stock, then watch tomorrow and she'll show you how to use it. And then when you get it, you'll know what you're doing. Easy, easy peasy. Oh, and Mary's just messaging to say, once you buy a cover stitch, you'll never go back. But then to be honest, I think that's like with a lot of these things, it's like, it's like if you get a rotary cutter, isn't it? You know, you'd never go back to measuring fabric. You would just use a rotary cutter. So I'm be really interested to learn more about the cover stitch, I think think you're going to enjoy that. So anyway, that's that hour gone. Whoa. So Clive's coming back and he's going to show us how to make the really, I love this dress because it's like a dress and a top all joined together. Um, and he's got some really lovely fabrics. There it is there. That's not the, that's the dress that he's going to be making. It's all joined together, but we've got different fabrics for it. So he's going to show us how to make it. I love it. It looks very comfortable, but very forgiving as well. Quite a nice dress. So um, we will see you in just a couple of minutes. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. 
like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello Sewing Street fans, let me introduce myself. My name is Clive, I live in Kenilworth in Warwickshire. I currently run a business in Kenilworth and that's doing alterations on people's clothing. So I really enjoy kind of providing that service for the local community. My sewing journey first began when my grandmother gave me a hand crank sewing machine um, and from there I was fascinated about how things were put together. Uh, to the point where I used to make um, clothing for my favourite toys out of toilet tissue. I've also kind of studied fashion design at Epsom University in Surrey. Uh, so I've kind of gained knowledge along the way of different aspects of sewing, like pattern cutting. So yeah, that's a little bit about my sewing journey. My number one sewing tip is don't give up. Sometimes you'll get frustrated and angry with yourself but really just put it to one side and take half an hour, go and have a cup of tea and a biscuit and then come back to it and then you'll kind of like have a fresh mind to start again. The positive happiness that comes from that is just amazing. So please don't give up, keep on sewing. My claim to fame, well, if you've been watching, you've probably heard my name mentioned on Sewing Street several times. Uh, my husband is Mark Francis from The Sewing Bee, The Great British Sewing Bee. Um, so that's number one claim to fame. My second claim to fame is I had Adele, uh, the beautiful, beautiful tones of Adele singing for me when I was a barman back in the day. It was, oh, it was just amazing to have her sing to me at my bar. So yeah, and also I've met Prince Harry at a VIP party. Stay tuned on Sewing Street and you'll see me very soon. I hope it all goes well, fingers crossed. Hi and welcome back to Sewing Street where we've got another hour of dressmaking with Clive. This is a really lovely one. Um, oh, we need to swap the dresses around so you can see what we're going to make. So I'll just show you the pattern first, 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 first. We are doing the layer dress and top. This is a wonderful pattern because, well, it is sort of multi-purpose. There is um, a dress and the top are joined together which is fantastic but you can there was also a variation in the pattern if you want to just make the dress on its own so i'm just going to get it so i can show you i'll have to move her out of the way one moment so the first this is the second time we've shown it, it was launched on the 15th of october there we go can you see it now okay can you see it now right so let me show you the dress uh, is attached to the top, but the dress is sleeveless, so it's nice and cool. So it looks like you're wearing a dress with a top on top, but it is attached, but it's not really, really hot. So it's a lovely mixture. However, there is a variation where you can make just the dress on its own. So it is very multi-pattern. You can also make the top with the short dress so that the top comes down to here so that you've got that multi-layer top. So there's kind of three different patterns going on here. Um, if you have a look at the pattern, you can see that, yeah? So can you see, there we go, right. So you've got the dress with that attached. You can have just the dress, but you can make it into a top as well, yeah? And then if we turn over the back, that is, so if you want to make just the dress, 
then it has this different sort of back on it, which is different to the one when it's attached on it. So this comes in sizes 8 to 26, which is a massive, massive range. Um, the bundle that we've put together today with the fabric goes up to size 22 just so you know. So if you want to buy the fab the pattern on its own, it's $16.99. You've got lots and lots. Now, if you watch the um, nine o'clock hour where we talked about, so did we did a so different pattern with Clive Owen. We talked about they are lovely patterns. There's something that the way that so different design is they're just, well, they are different. They're slightly quirky. They've got slightly different finishes. They are made by real sewers, but also somebody with the idea for design. So. You know, with the other one, the pockets were just in a nice place. The design was good, but they're also very comfortable. And, the, you know, they've also thought this through, that it's lovely to have a sleeveless dress with a top on, but better to sort of attach them. It's very flattering. So they are really thought of about suiting different people. So let me just go through the fabric bundle so you can see what you can buy today. So the first bundle that we've got is ochre now the dress fabric is this beautiful mustard colored lurex sparkly print which is the same fabric that um clive is wearing his top in can we just go over to clive one moment look look at that it doesn't shimmer much on the screen does it it's great for this time of year is it shimmer yeah, it is shimmery yeah, yeah. does it does shimmer it on camera shimmer. do you have to sort of like twiddle a twiddle, bit twiddle twiddle yeah he's giving us a little shimmer to show us how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's two metres of this, which is enough to make the um, dress section. Yeah? And then there's two metres of this. So actually, you can make it either way round. Yeah. So there's two metres of this, and this is a navy fabric with a little rope print on it. This is a, um, is this a viscose? It feels like a viscose. Yeah. So this is a lighter weight, and then you've got this more... Um, sweatshirt weight with like a slightly feasy back so you could choose you could make the viscose for the dress and the sweatshirt weight for the top or you could do it the other way around it's up to you but those go lovely together i love the sort of navy and mustard combination a bit sparkly yes very lovely isn't it and then the other combination we've got is the pink so it's the same pink that's on here and then with a sparkle and then we've got a navy just a plain navy. So the pink and the navy go together really well, don't they? So it's, you've got this lovely sort of thick sweatshirty material that you can use for the top, or you can swap them around. I mean, I think I would put the navy on the dress. Yeah, I would too. I'm not sure it would, the thin, I mean, it might do. Could you use the thin for the top? Yeah, well, we're gonna do that with the, uh, the viscose, with the ropes. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna make the top out of that, just so it's kind of nice and blue. So you could, swap them either yeah. way then yeah yeah well that's that and, be and because and because you get the same amount quantity in each then you can choose which way round you want to do it depending on whether you want a thick top or a thin top i went for so the those thick top option yes yeah. <laughs> clive has gone for the thick top thick top. option thick top oh with wings <laughs> i really want the wings um we've also got some oh, other these wings yeah look at the wings i love those i really want them <laughs> You could, you could just get yourself a cheap black t-shirt, couldn't you, and sew those wings on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're amazing. Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? We also have, if you want some different choices, because it's always nice when you've bought a pattern to be able to go, you know, if you can't get to the fabric shop and you can't feel them, see all of these jersey fabrics you can use. So let's start with the top. These are all suitable for the pattern, either the top or the bottom piece. And, um, again, these are all ideal for using with a cover stitch, which we're going to be doing the next hour. So to make, um, you need two metres of each of the fabrics. So you need two metres of the dress and two metres of the top. So there's this one. That's got a really lovely um, Wedgwood blue background with some nice sort of tomato red and denim blue leaves and scrolls. That's a nice, lovely fabric. That's a lovely jersey because I think particularly it's often easy to buy quilting fabric online because you can see pictures. But the, when you're buying dressmaking fabric, it's not so easy. The pictures are never great, no. are they? No. And I think, you know, trying to find a nice uh, jersey print is also really difficult. Yeah, why is that? I don't know. Like sometimes you go in, say if you go into a haberdashery, mm. The, the selection is very limited, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you, you're better off buying like from Sewing Street uh, or, or online as mm. well, because it's 
There's so much more choice. There is more choice, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. And yeah. we've chosen these, so they're, they're the right weight. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, they're beautiful. Look at this one. That's stunning. Woo! Look at that. That's real. And rubbish. I don't know. What's that? A purpley pink? Yeah. Is there fuchsia, a name for that? Fuchsia. Fuchsia. Fuchsia with like a mustard, goldy coloured yeah, leaves. That's beautiful. That would look nice, wouldn't it? Can you imagine that? There's the top. Oh, yeah. Or the skirt. Actually, it looks quite nice with the pink, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a little mix Different and match. Different fashion we, show on the mannequin. Shall we do today. that? We'll try them all on later. <laughs> but another reason, good reason to buy an adjuster form. Do you have, you, do you have one? I don't actually, no. Uh, it, it is something that I'd like to invest in, definitely. Um, but I do, I, I'd like to get one of the K&L ones. Yeah. And then, you know, you can get them custom done as well, can't you? You can make just for you, but what happens if you put on weight or lose weight? I know, weight? well then. Got it then, haven't you? Yeah, so that's why the adjuster forms are good. Because mm. I always think that as well, you know, what if you then, it's not, it's not like just chucking coming. out your whole flipping wardrobe, <laughs> is it? You've got to chuck out your adjuster form yeah. as well. Yeah, Christmas is coming, we're all going to be having to pad out the yeah. mannequins, aren't we? I know, we all blamed it on lockdown, now we can blame <laughs> it on Christmas. I know. And um, let's hope we'll have another lockdown and we can blame it on that as well. Oh, no, we don't want another I don't want one. another one, no. but at least you have something to blame it on. Let's not go there with the lockdown business. No, should we just not even think about it? Yeah, we won't even think. Just Christmas think... is on its way. Yes. Six more days to Six go. Six more days. Six more days. Six more days and then we can crack open the celebrations. Yeah. Why well, have we already cracked them open? And the bottle of Baileys. Well, for me, this oh. year it's port. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is that your favourite? No, well, I, I, I went to go and buy a bottle of show the other day and I picked up port by... I don't ask me how I did it. Right. Did it say Bailey's got, on it? I got home. <laughs> <laughs> I got home and I was like, oh, it's port. So I had a glass and I was like, actually, this is it's quite nice. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. But it's the sort of thing you can drink quite a few glasses yeah. of and then you stand up and go, oh. Yeah, oops. <laughs> I had um, salted caramel Bailey's last year. Very Ooh, nice. They do loads of different flavours. I want the mint one. Oh, yes. Mm. Mm, that would be nice, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. We're supposed to be talking about fabric, not Baileys. What's your favourite flavour of Baileys? Because there's so many of them. If you could let me know, <laughs> then I'll try it. So this one is a lovely stripe. And this is um, like a bottle green, mustard, ochre, black, grey and white. Very slimming. That's amazing, very isn't it? Those That's colours. That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It's like retro licorice all sorts. Yeah, they're very kind of vintage colours, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, very sort of... But I like the, the stripe. Again, I think I'd use that for the dress. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, you know, or if you've got, you know, patterns that use jersey fabrics, it is hard to find them, and these are a good quality and a good weight for this. There's another stripe one. Oh, this is a bit... Cornish, isn't it? Cornish sea stripe, this yeah. one should be called. Yeah. So you've got light blue, dark blue, and that lovely sort of corally tomato-y red. That's nice. We'll give that, we'll Have call that one Cornish the, stripe. you just made a new name for that fabric? Yes, that one's called Cornish stripe. Cornish stripe. stripe. <laughs> should we just, we'll name them all. This one is called... Um, Foxy red. Foxy red. <laughs> I don't know, is that a rubbish Fo name? Foxy red. It's got that real wine coloured background with big full blown roses. It is foxy red. It's lovely it's that. It's lovely, it is really nice. I like that one. The contrast between the two the two reds is lovely on that one. Look at those. There we go. That's a bit mad, isn't it? That's completely mad. Step outside the, the comfort zone. <laughs> Do you think that's too much pattern? Is that like double pattern, like double well, denim? The thing is, with double pattern, you can do it, but you have to get it right. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Do it right, folks. Do it right. Do it right. Yeah, do your do double right. pattern right. Oh, like that one. That's whoa, Actually, does that make the telly go mad? It makes my that's, eyes go mad. That's strobing. Strobing. So it's like black that's stripes, right. but they're not evenly whipped, so they're sort of shaky stripes, which makes it even worse. And then the background is a pinky red colour. But again... Very slimming because it's um, vertical stripes, but from a distance it looks like a solid colour, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it? really nice. It's really nice. I like that. Anyway, anyway, we've talked about Baileys. Let us know which your favourite is. <laughs> mint. I'm going for and, mint. And should we actually talk about how to make the dress? Yes. We'll move, we'll move back to well, Baileys gonna make later. Well, we're going to make the top today. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I, I made this out of the, uh, the, the, the mustard. 
Right. So uh, there was a bit of a, a hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you made the top instead of the dress? I cut the top out first, mm. uh, and I was supposed to make the dress out of this. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. So I thought, well, I'm not going to waste the material. So I'll And it's gorgeous it material, and it's very Christmassy, so it's lovely. And you put a cuff on yours, didn't you, as well? I did. It doesn't have a cuff. So I've, I've hacked this, and I've just put a cuff. Um, I'll explain how to do that. It's really, really simple. Okay. Um, there is a, a, lengthening, a lengthening line on the sleeve pattern piece. Oh, so is this three? Yes, this is three quarter, isn't it? Because normally you would just turn it up um, and then uh, yeah, hem it like at the bottom, hem. yeah. Oh, but I actually think it looks quite nice with a, a cuff. Gives it a better finish. And if you were really adventurous, you could mm. make this cuff even longer and put a buttonhole in and then stick it. You know, oh, I love those. Stick the thumb through I've got a top like that. And it I really, might actually do that. But it keeps you, don't you find when you're driving, I'm often doing this. It keeps you warm. But I would have to warm. lengthen it if I was yeah, going to do that. Actually. And you've put a bit of ribbon on. Yeah, so this is this is from my uh, stash at home. Bit of ribbon uh, and wings. Yeah. And then obviously the wings on the back, but you've all seen those. <laughs> I just love them. I want the wings. Because I'm a little angel, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so now we're going to make the dress section. So No, we're going to make the top. Right, of course, yeah, because yeah. you didn't make the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. So ordinarily, the dress would be attached at the neckline. How so you... do you make the whole dress first and then attach it to uh, the top? Well, with the instructions, what they, uh, what Laura, sorry, they, Laura has actually put is um, she's done it kind of stages of attaching the dress at the shoulders then attaching the jumper at the shoulders. Sorry, let me put that into the middle. Mm. Uh, and then putting the sleeves on the top and then doing this, the, um, the armholes on the dress. But what I would do is I would do one piece of garment first. So I'd do all the stages that you need yeah. to do in the dress. Okay. Yeah. And then I'd do the jumper and then you can just finish it Is it, it just at the, the neckline that it's joined that's, up? That's finishing it at the end. Oh, yeah. okay. But with this one, I've uh, used the facing if you were going to do the separates and just put a facing on it. Okay. So so the neck yeah, the neckline seam comes in yeah. in there, but you would just put a facing on. If you were just gonna make a jumper like yeah. this, I would just put the facing pattern. It's lovely piece. as well. I like the wideness of it yeah, as well. It's great. It's Christmas it's very dinner, airy. isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna be wearing this on Christmas Day. Definitely. Then I can eat as much as I want. Anyway, let's uh, let's crack on. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna attach these at the Shoulder, shoulders first. So you need to put the right sides together. So obviously that's the front piece because it's got the larger scoop for the neck. And then the back piece. That's the way around. Uh, I'm just going to quickly pin this. So hopefully, what time is it? We might even be able to get it finished now. You're going to make the whole top. That's the aim. One. That's the aim. The, I mean, the nice thing about um, most of Laura's pattern patterns mm. as well is they're quick makes. Uh, I think this one says four and a half hours on the back of the packet, if I remember that rightly. OK, I'll, turn I'll tell you. One and it gives you a difficulty. Three. This is, oh, three this hours. This is three hours. Yeah. I think the other one might have been. Yeah, this has only got one star in difficulty. Yeah, it's really, really simple. Uh, I am going to demonstrate how to do uh, the vents on the side as well. Oh, and it has got pockets as well, the um, dress. It does. Oh, yes, it does, yeah, mm. in inseam pockets. Yeah. Uh, which, again, are really, really simple oh, to do. Someone didn't do that with it. Who made this one? It didn't do it that with Mark, that one. It? Oh, it hasn't got them. No. Oh. They're obviously optional. They are optional. You don't. <laughs> you don't have to put them in, but why would you not? Why would you not? <laughs> Where are you going to put your keys? Well, I made a dress from an old pair of curtains and it was quite stiff. And when I put the pockets in, it just looked ridiculous. It was just too bulky, so I'd take them out again. Oh. So I think that's when you wouldn't. If Maybe I should have used thinner fabric for the pockets. I mean, maybe maybe with this one, with the sweatshirt material, you, you, 
Maybe you wouldn't. Well, it yeah, it might have be been too bulky because when I made mine, it just added too much. It was quite a shift dress. It just had too much bulk. Yeah. But maybe I should have made them from a thinner fabric. Well, that's the beauty of, uh, you know, especially with an inseam pocket, you can either have it in or out. It's not yeah. It's not a big deal, is it, really? So it does say it can be worn as an integrated garment or two separate pieces. Do the, so do the instructions tell you about making this as a separate piece? Uh, Mine's not open. I'm not sure, actually. Let me just... Yeah, because uh, you're making them as separate pieces. Or, so on stage five, it tells you to then attach them together at the neck. Oh, OK. But rather than doing that, if you did want to do just a jumper, you then can you just could. use the facing and put that on. So you've on. got a lot, go, you know, you can wear, or you can make the whole thing as um, a top, two tops, can't you? Yeah. Because it does it shorter. So you've got a lot of There's different loads options, of options going yeah. on here. And again, um, as Clive said earlier, if you visit their So Difference blog they or their website, they have lots of photos of people doing them in different fabrics. And I always think that's really useful because it's sometimes hard to picture yourself what it will look like in something else. Yeah. So it's nice to see what everyone else has done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, happy mistake. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It just goes to show you what you can do exactly. with it, really. Uh, add a cut. And, and you'd never have had that top. You see? It's exactly. It's a very useful mistake. <laughs> I just thought because it was sweat material, I thought, oh, that surely oh, that's that not the, that's not the dress. So that was my error, but you know we all make mistakes, don't we? I do all the time, constantly. So we're going to add a one and a half centimetre seam allowance on this. Is that gathered up? Um, and it's pretty, you know, straight lines. So it's a lot of straight sewing. So you feel confident. I mean, with this fabric, I would pin it though because it is slippy. Okay. Yeah, because it's a viscose. So um, just so you can anchor it at certain points. You don't have to do it all the way, but it's useful. Mm. I know someone, uh, Ali, Ali from the Sewing Bee. Yeah. You know the Northern Lass. Yeah, I don't know her, but you know. Well, yeah. She, I know yeah. she have seen her. She doesn't use pins at all. I don't understand like, that. Hardly ever. How do you do I that? Don't, I, don't I use know. hundreds of pins. And I get through loads of them as well. I keep buying new pins. I don't know where they go. They must just dissolve. I think it's the pin fairy nicking. Pin them, fairy, isn't it? yes. And the floor's covered in them. <laughs> How I don't understand that. Yeah, I, we had a guest on the day who goes, Oh yeah, I don't use pins. Really? Really? Yeah, I think I'm a bit of a perfectionist, though I use lots I know, of pins. I'm, I'm me. And I even if I put a zip into a purse, yeah. I will stitch it. Say I'm putting it in between oh, an outer and a lining. First. I will stitch it to the outer and then I will lay it. Because when you're sewing three layers together, one always slips. You don't want that happening. No. So I think maybe I do too... It's just, I think I've I done too much unpicking. Do you know what? It's a personal preference, isn't it? Like, if oh, yeah, there's no you're, right or wrong. I just whatever you're comfortable with. Hey, hate like, unpicking. It does add extra time to your to your make, but you know if you're willing to put that effort yeah. into your garment, then you're going to reap the rewards, really. Well, I know if you're sewing a zip between an outer and lining, that zip can so easily slip, and you have to unpick it. I yeah. hate unpicking. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually bought one of the unpickers uh, that are sold on here. Did you? Which one? Uh, it's the kind of the one that sounds like a razor. Oh, the one, the beard trimmer. <laughs> yeah, the beard trimmer. <laughs> I don't trim my beard with it, as you can see. <laughs> Um, We've might, had a message. A question. A We've got a question. Yes. From Mary. Go for it. What's the question? Asking about the 560 machine. Have you used the 560 machine? 560? Mm. No. Oh, she wants to know does it have a thread cutter? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Oh. Yeah, it does have a thread cutter. But it will show you all of that on the website. You have to have a thread cutter, don't you? I love it. Well, I mean, I just did it then. It's just so quick. Where's my ironing board gone? Oh, it's down there. Who's stolen the ironing board? Who's stolen it? So we're going to open those seams. Let's turn it. Okay, so you cut them out. So when did you buy your cover stitch then? What, where were you in your sewing journey? Um, so I was at a point in my life where <laughs> it's going to sound really bad. I was at a point in my life where a I was point in my life really where low. I was really sick and tired of working for the people. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know? And I didn't do so. I professionally, I didn't do sewing for 
for most of my adult life. I mean, I, I went to university to do fashion design and stuff. But I just thought, why am I going from job to job to job when I really should be doing something in sewing? So mm. I, I think I hit a bit of a, not a crisis, it wasn't a crisis. But I just thought, I'm an 40. An epiphany. Yeah, an epiphany. I'm 40, I need to kind of do what I love. Uh, yeah. So I just made the decision to start up a business, uh, altering and making clothing. Uh, that was, uh, hang on, what are we now? 2020, that was 2019 in April, no, May That's 2019. That's quite stressful though, isn't it? It is, because uh, obviously it's starting from scratch. You, I mean, I've learned a lot of lessons along the way, <laughs> the do's and don'ts of business. But, and then COVID hit. So it kind of didn't happen. So actually, my, my day job now is I pack CDs in a warehouse. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and, I, and, and I'm fortunate enough to kind of do this. That's um, fantastic. So I'm hoping that, you know, we, things, when things get back to normal, we can start it back up again. Mm. So did the cover stitch, did that make quite a difference then? Yeah, because when people were bringing alterations and things like that to mm. me or wanting a specific kind of uh, fa yeah. fabric used, then you've got to use the right stitches, haven't you? Yes, that's true. Because um, it does, like someone said to me, oh, can you take up some T-shirts? I went, absolutely no T-shirts. Yeah. I do <laughs> not have it's such a good stick, invest. You know. It's such a good investment. Um, you know, I was just talking to, uh, is it George? George. Yeah, George. Um, out the back and you know for any beginners having it's going from an overlocker up to a cover stitch is such a might be quite a daunting thing but actually it's going to make your makes so much more professional looking yeah and that's what it's all about isn't yeah. it because we put the time and the money yeah. into making the effort things. yeah and yeah. it's really frustrating when you know and it can be things like you were saying early pressing properly yeah. But it, it, it's doing things like that, that you've got your technique, you're all there, but it's just about the equipment. So make it, I mean, I, I, I should have cover stitched the hem of this, <laughs> but I didn't have time. So uh, just to change all the threads, because that's the only thing with these, when, when you're changing threads and stuff, like to, for your garment, I yeah. didn't have four yellow or mustard yellow oh, okay. threads. So I just straight stitched it instead. Sorry. Let's carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, cover stitch, definitely worth uh, an investment. Um, okay, well, I'm fascinated because I don't know anything about them really. You want to move up to the next are. level. They're great, perfect for stretch, any stretch material. So these, sorry, these sleeve pieces that I'm going to be putting on now, they go, let me just pull that up a little bit, just so you can see, there's the... Uh, so we've done the shoulder seams. Yeah, the shoulder seams, there's... There's where your head's going to go mm. through. And then we're going to, there's two notches on the sleeve. And they're very low seams, aren't they, sleeves? Yes, they are, yeah. Quite yeah. like that. Yeah. I think it's, that's a modern thing, isn't it? A, mod a modern thing. It's a modern. The low sleeve. Modern cut. Is it called a drop sleeve? A drop sleeve. I don't know. I don't know. I think you might have made that up. No, I think they are. Mm. Who said that? Kat just said, is it a drop sleeve? Yeah, no, it waist? is. Yeah, she's right. She no, is right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought she just made it up. She's going to be like, ah, see. Yeah, no, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. She knows that. She's, because she's quite young, isn't it? Is that what it is? Yeah. Is that what it is? And we're old. Yeah, she doesn't know about Baileys, though. <laughs> <laughs> Love a Baileys. Ooh. Little Baileys. So make sure that you match uh, the notches up because that's going to give your sleeve a dead centre, you know, finish. Does it have like a mark where you mark it on the centre seam? Yeah, on the pattern, um, it's got marks for notches. Oh, OK. And I know, where's my other bit gone? Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> lost your sleeve. I've lost the sleeve. Um, I know somebody that was on the sewing bee who, who was that then? Who, that was my hubby, Mark. <laughs> I'm going to drop him in it now. <gasps> He's going to drop you in it. Put your hands over your ears, He has Mark. been known in the past not to notch <gasps> stuff, and then he kind of wonders not why. Not to notch? I know. This was pre... Uh, can I just say this? Mm. This was pre-sewing bee. Right. So we'll excuse it. Uh, does he notch now? He does now. Oh, my goodness. 
Just because I've told him how important it is. He he's doesn't gonna, use he's fabric gonna, scissors for paper, does he? He's going to kill me when I get home. <laughs> no, he doesn't, no. I That's wouldn't allow I it. At home, we've got, obviously, scissors with a bit of ribbon on that sort of fabric. Oh, good. And ones without But he used paper. to not notch. How did he match things up? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't remember what he was making once, but he came to me and he said, well, this doesn't look right. And mm. I said, did you notch it? And he said, no. And he said, well, well, just go away and do not darken my door again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't darken my door with this non-notching business. With this non-notching nonsense. This non-notching nonsense. It always seems like a good idea to think, oh, that'd be fine, I don't need to do it. Or you think, oh, when I get to that bit, I'll lay it on the pattern and find out. Stupid idea. Yeah, no, definitely. Because you've constructed half of it. Have you yeah. ever tried to put a notch in yeah, on half of it? Well, it's a, trying to put a, a 2D piece of paper on a oh, 3D. ridiculous, yeah. So we're just going to sew these uh, sleeves on. After having notched. After having... Well, I pre-notched before but you I came. Can, um, there's loads of ways. How do you notch? Do you actually cut a triangle? Or do you do a I snip? Just, I just do a little snip. Okay. Yeah, or you could mark it with chalk, um, or you could mark it with a pin. But then if the pin falls out, then you're going to have to try yeah, and find the notch again. Yeah, pin's no good, is it? Um, but I, I tend to cut a triangle. I the way know. I was taught at university was to, you know, just a little snip. Snipping. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I've always done. But John said to me last time, he said, do you not use chalk? And I said, no. So said, should I, should I be? And he said, well, it's an option. Maybe he was taught chalk. He is a lot older than me, isn't he? he? <laughs> All SOBs not watching. <laughs> yeah, he was taught before they did sewing machines. Did see. they have scissors back then? I don't think so. <laughs> so they had to use chalk. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be in so much trouble for saying that. Yeah, sorry, John. We didn't yeah, mean that sorry, at John. all. Sorry, John. I'm only Please. joking. I hope you're not watching. You both have any I'm only joking. Now. He's lovely, really. He probably did chalk and you did not chin and Mark doesn't do anything. No, he does now. No, he does now. Yeah, he does now. <laughs> Pre and, you know, just Pre before just before the sewing bee, I was like, make sure you notch all your stuff and because it will just help you in the long run. And he listened, bless Thankfully. him. Thankfully. Thank yeah. goodness for that. Yeah, we don't want no... So you're going to be watching the celebrity one? Oh, yeah, 100%. I can't remember who's on it. I know Denise Van Shirley Ballas is on... Well, there's two, isn't there? There's one on Christmas Day, and then there's one on Christmas... Uh, New Year's Eve, I think. Oh, is there? Uh, Shirley Ballas is on one of them. Shirley who? From Strictly. Oh, OK. I don't know her. Uh, she's one of the judges on Strictly. Professional dancer. Do you not watch Strictly? No. Why? Don't know. Just don't. It's one of those things. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> I know. I watch it um, here and there, when yeah. it's, but I don't watch it. Like not like I'm a celebrity that I watch religiously. Did you watch that this year? Yes, I loved it. I didn't watch it. It was really good because they were. Normally they can get a bit bitchy and they go into sort of factions, but this year they were all sort of friends. Oh, were they? And Alfie oh. Moon was in it, and I love Alfie Moon. Alfie Moon. Love you mean, mean um, it's no, Shane Ritchie. It's Shane Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> and he taught Mo Farah how to be Phil Mitchell. Oh, did he? Mo Farah wanted to learn how to speak in a Cockney accent. And he loved EastEnders, he was obsessed with it. So they kept doing all these sketches where Mo Farah was Phil Mitchell and Shane Ritchie was Alfie Moon. <laughs> it's hilarious. That is hilarious. <laughs> I just think it was a bit of a cop out, though, doing it in this country. I mean, you want the fear of having a. Sn a snake or a spider jumping on you, don't you? Do you? I don't know. That's probably yeah, that's not, true. That's probably not what you want, but for television anyway. Right, less talking, more sewing. Oh, Annette wants to know how wide the fabrics are. Are they...? This one's really light. So the Lurex is 145. Oh, wide. And Sorry. the viscose is 140. I hope that helps. Just going back stitch there. So now we've sewn the sleeves on. The sleeves are on. Uh, and I'm going to press those. Well, which side did I do it? I have to remember now. Yeah, two, so towards the sleeve. Towards, and why do you press towards the because sleeve? Because when you're matching up here, 
you want because it's a right angle there but i do do a curve um around this edge just ah, so it's, okay it's eased so otherwise it gathers underneath oh, okay. it never quite presses out right so if you press them towards us yes it's making it lay the right way makes yeah. sense yeah do they tell you that in the instructions uh God tested you today i know yeah <laughs> he's test <laughs> testing me aren't they so i don't know i didn't read the instructions i'm a man press seems open it says oh that's a really sexist thing to hear. Who was I on oh, the other day when we were talking about that? I'm going to press them open. We were... I can't remember who we were talking about that. Don't read instructions. There was something else I laughed about. Oh, dishwashers. Hey, wait, how, how do you feel about dishwasher loading? I don't... We haven't got a dishwasher. <gasps> Revolutionary. No, it's not, because I really don't like washing up. Oh. Why I really want a dishwasher. Then? We just don't have a room in our kitchen. Oh. <laughs> It's as simple as simple that. Simple as that, otherwise you would have one. Oh, yeah, 100%. I would definitely invest But in you that. have got a whole Especially. room full of a so, two sew machines, a cover locker, and over... Cover stitch, yeah, two machines. Yeah, two machines. Well, there is, I mean, there Maybe are... Maybe you should put a dishwasher in there. <laughs> We've got a freezer in there. It's in the garage. Mm. Oh, this uh, iron's leaked a little bit. Mm -mm. Still a little good iron there. I so missed out on this the other day. Wasn't it on early bird yeah, the other it was, day? And I, I know, out. I really like them. I really, really want one of those. Have they sold out, Kat? Yeah, oh, they've sold they've out. I really want one of those. I actually messaged in Kat. Where are you? Oh. She's in there. Did you? And Did I and I said, make sure I get saved one. <gasps> and I didn't Did get you one. ignore him? He ignored oh, me. It's wow. like mm. The thing is that you've been on more than once now, so you don't get the special treatment. <laughs> <laughs> when is your first time? They probably reserved you an iron and you get the really special treatment. Oh, is that but now, what you're, it is? now you're part of the family. Now I'm in that old hat. Once you're part of the family, that's it. We don't get it. Yeah, it's like if you have a visitor around your house, you're really nice to them, but if it's family, it's like, oh, yeah, put the kettle on <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so, what we're doing now, so this leaves that we've pressed it open. Yes, yeah. And now we're going to do so down one side. Okay. But then you did say if you press it over to the sleeve side. Yeah, you just ease it a little bit. Then it eases round. Yeah. So. Well, that's what I found. Okay. Um, you know, but I suppose this is the thing. When you do one thing a certain way and then you're told to do it another way, it's, it, it almost goes against the, your natural mm. instinct. I know, but then sometimes it's not, you know, you have to do it the way that works for you and that you find the easiest. Yeah. So I'm I'm not actually going... Well, should I do one side? What time are we on? Yeah, we've got a bit of time. Okay. Yeah. I'll sew down and then I'll show you... Because I've done some sample pieces. Have you? I have. Mm. I've made some little sample pieces. Oh, well, we'll have to show those then. Yeah. Just to show you how to do a mitered corner. <laughs> yes. Uh, all the way down. There we go. What was all that business about? She's <laughs> just come and stolen things. She's come and steal stuff from you. I know. When they come back on to me, they're going to go, where the hell is, where's that machine just gone? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Someone's stolen. It's magic. I know, look, someone's just stolen. There was a machine, there was a machine just there a minute ago. Someone's stolen it. So actually, I knew there was a reason why I did sew it to one side because now we're going to be sewing down here and that's kind of flipping over that way. Yeah, so you were right. So I was right. So you always trust your instinct. Yeah, don't cause, question. Because that's what I did. Um, and that makes the most sense. It does make the most sense. So let me just quickly change that one. <laughs> so I only asked why did you press it to one side because now, well, and now you know why. No, and, and the instructions do say, but... It's going to make it very fiddly when you do that side yes, seam. Yes, yeah. Down there. I've done that before, but I've actually then slit the seam. <laughs> oh, have you? That's not a good thing to do. So on the... It. Sorry. You shouldn't to, do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's Let as me bad just, as not notching. Yeah, that is bad. 
So this is obviously the side seam, and this is where the vent is. Like, if I just show you on my... What, yeah. Here's one I made earlier. On the vent. Mm. Um, so you want to be sewing up about... It's a beautiful uh, finish. ...down to about one and a half centimetres down mm. there. So I'll just mark a little pin so we can just... I'm just doing this by eye, but you can measure it. OK. All right. And that's because he's a professional. <laughs> Well, because <laughs> he's a professional. A professional. Just does it by eye. By eye. But he does well, pinch. don't you find when you're hemming stuff and you go, yeah, that's a centimetre and a half, you check it, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah, that's true. But then, then I measure it all. And then actually, particularly if you're turning something over, say, by centimetre, I measure it all and turn it over and it's quite wonky. But if you just do it, because yeah. I think if you measure at certain points, particularly if it's a thin fabric, yeah. it, but if you just go, I'll go with what a centimetre looks like. <laughs> Then it sort of it works wrong. better because it's a bit more fluid between the points then. So when it's on the machine, mm. I'm just double checking. Obviously, my you can't see the machine from that angle, but just pull that over and just make sure that the edge matches up with the centimetre and a mm. half because that's very important. Right, OK. Um, for when you're doing the vent. So let me just take that pin out. Just backstitch that a little bit. So what's your top tips for George's first time on telly? What was yours like? <laughs> um, <laughs> try, try not to swear. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't swear. No, don't swear. Are you getting um, in trouble for that? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a weird one because it's, it is quite, it's very overwhelming. I think, you know, third show in and I feel a lot more comfortable now just because mm. I've done it a couple more times. It goes quite fast. It does, yeah. You, it's surprising. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I, I wanted to do so much more. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, just rela rela relax. 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 Just relax. Relax and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> relax. Mm, tell a few jokes. Oh, I still haven't got I any jokes. No, I, I should have Googled one, shouldn't I? Yeah. So we're going to pivot now to go down the underside of the sleeve. And again, just make sure that your line is matching up. And it is. Mm, make sure the needle's in. The needle is in. Well, with this machine, it always does. OK. Yeah. That's handy, isn't it? It is handy. Because you, you never remember. even have to think about it. Uh, and <laughs> let's just go back a second because I haven't gone up enough. So I'm just going to curve that in. There we go. Oh, the, why have I put it all the way you? over there? I need just to put to make it, it here. Difficult for I yourself. know. Who is Santa's favourite singer? Is this a nice one? OK. Who is Santa's favourite singer? I don't know who. Elf is Presley. Oh, oh God. I'm not sure either. That's who was that? Oh, that was Elliot. That was rubbish. <laughs> you try a bit harder. Yeah, we, wa <laughs> we want to be entertained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want to be entertained while you're sat in that room. I had a brilliant. I can I'm remember I can never remember them. I had a I'm brilliant totally one the other day that was really funny and sweet. I cannot remember it though. Why can't Christmas trees knit? Why? <laughs> because they drop all their needles. Okay, oh. that's better. That is better. That's quite yarn. Yeah. Yarn lane, yeah that's isn't a bit it? yarn laney. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I quite like that one. Should have used that in the next in the RLA now. Was it? What did Santa do when he went speed dating? I don't know. What did he do? I don't know. What did he do? He pulled a cracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. I don't think Santa should go speed dating because he's actually married. Yeah, he is married. Mm, to Mrs. Claus. But maybe they had to fall out because, you know, it's Christmas. Christmas is a stressful time for <laughs> all stressful. families, isn't it? And yeah. to be honest, he's only got one peak point in his life, and that is Christmas. Oh, bless him. He's wor it? He works all the, all the rest of the well, year. Well, in the year, the you know, he's got one point. It's all building towards, isn't it? Right, so these side seams are together now, and the arm is also sewn up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you need to open these now. So this is the vent part. OK. Um, I'm just going to press this quick. But I'm actually so going to show you... The, what's the point of the vent? Well, I just think it kind of allows a little bit of... 
like movement and airflow. Yeah. yeah, and it looks good as well. Okay, so it's sort of movement and decoration. Yeah, I think it, it would be a little bit boring uh, if you just well, it should just be like a normal jumper. It's it's a what's it's a design. It's a design feature. Element. Okay. Of a jumper. But does it serve it? a practical purpose or is it? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. Just looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think it does? No, what I do like think? it. I just wondered as a fashion student. Um, a fashion student, a long time ago. Yeah, but the things haven't changed, have they? Whether it was a design thing or... Um, although I guess it's a useful thing if your top's a bit tight, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but this, you're not going to have Not that problems. one, no. So I it is for a this design jump, feature. For this jumper, it's just a design feature. So here is my little demo piece. I know, right, this, this might be... Clive and Matt. This might be a little bit complicated. Let me just straighten that up And this you. is the vent? Yeah. So, side seams are there. I've just opened up the vent, as I did before. But what I wanted to say about this was to cut off... Uh, because from your sew line, which is this one here, I've kind of drawn on this, because it's just a sample piece. You need to measure three centimetres outwards so where this pops out you need to measure three because that's important because the hem with we're, we're told on the pattern goes up three so I'm just going to cut off that with uh, my rotary let me just make sure I've got that one out of the way now what we do just let's just open that out just so we can see you fold up three i've already measured this by the way and drawn lines, okay obviously i don't want to try and confuse people don't do this by eye you actually do measure yeah i do measure done. um especially when you're cutting off here because oh you need the ironing mat oh <laughs> <laughs> whoopsie yes. daisy <laughs> Thank you, whoever pointed that yeah, out. Yeah, that was them. Thanks. <laughs> that was them. Mm. That was like the other day when they go, Neil didn't backstitch. And everybody right, um, phoned in and goes, yes, he did. Neil? Well, did you what we had at the did end? Did you sew? We got um, John and I on air with Neil. Yeah. I was showing Neil how to make a mask. John was just commentating and selling. <laughs> and then Neil had to make a mask. And it was so funny because I think Hannah was the producer and she said, oh, Neil didn't backstitch. And he goes, I did. And goes, you didn't. And you've got to backstitch. And then everybody messaged in again. I saw him backstitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't, you know. But it was really funny because he was just like, you know when you get a kid in the class who just whizzes ahead and hasn't listened to the instructions? And okay, we haven't got to that. I was supposed to be showing him how you do this bit and then he did it. But he actually... He did do very well, though. We actually made a really good I'll face mask. I'll have to mask. go back and watch that now. It was really funny. It was on um, Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. So we've, we've pressed those two over. OK. And now we need to flip it over. And I don't if, yeah, you can see that. That's good. Oh, so you press it down the side and across the bottom, and then you get a yeah. creases. Uh, and then see where these two lines are here. Yes. You want those to kind of meet on the other side. So it's a bit of doing it by eye, but also you want it dead center. So if you see there, I've kind of, where I've ironed over, the mm. lines meet up. Yeah. I don't know if I'm making this too complicated. No, no, it no, it's be. making sense. Uh, and but you fold it from that side. You see, I'd have thought just logically you'd fold it inwards, but you're folding it to the right side. So that's quite interesting. Because when you uh, come to sew, Ooh. it just means that you can match those lines. So those lines that we've just, that line that I've just done there, yeah. You can match those two up if you fold them together. Oh, of course. Now, the pattern doesn't tell you how to do it this way, but I think this way is easier. I think that's really, yeah, that makes sense. So you've got the straight lines, the horizontal and the vertical, are so the let points me just, Yeah, let me just matching. go through that again. Okay. So we're going to pop that up and press. Then we're going to, where the natural line for the, the sewing, the side seam is, we're going to pop that all the way down and press. Mm. We're going to flip it over and then match. See where these two crease lines are yeah. here. We're going to match those up and then press those that down. So we get that 45 degree, mm. sorry, degree yeah. angle. 
Uh, a lot of quilters actually would probably know how to do this. Yeah, they're probably going, oh God, yeah, instinctively. Do this all the time. Yeah. But if you if you've never done anything like that before, then this is a good way to. No, that is really good because so the diag you use the vertical and the horizontal to get the diagonal, and the diagonal you match yeah. to sew the seam. Because otherwise, that would be quite a messy finish, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. Um, it's just the way I I know I know how to do it, and it's just the way I prefer, really. Okay. And then you sew along that line. You back stitch. Do you have to back stitch? Back stitch. <laughs> you did back stitch. I did. I didn't <laughs> at the start. No. But it doesn't matter too much. Um, cutting mat, not ironing board. <laughs> and now what we need to do is we mm. need to just trim that down <laughs> as close as you can to the, the stitch line. <laughs> Shut the rotary so we don't chop fingers off. And if you turn that through. Oh, that's lovely. That's actually really satisfying. Isn't it though? Isn't that? That's just really <laughs> satisfying because that's I love beautiful. It. I do love it. I was just having a look at this one, but they've done it in completely different Because on way. the pattern, um, it tells you to kind of fold it over. Let me just kind of re-remember that bit. That like Press that? Down. No. <laughs> Don't look at that one. <laughs> um, on the pattern, where is it? Here. It, it asks you to kind of like fold it over. I've kind of drawn on my pattern just so it's a little bit easier That's for you fine. to understand. That's fine. Draw in your recipe books. <laughs> <laughs> to fold it over and then uh, <laughs> fold it over again. It's, it's just a bit of a more long-winded way. No, so that's, but that's, that's really quite neat. Quick. So and you just, you're pressing horizontally, vertically, diagonally, then that's enough to get that really nice finish. Yeah, but obviously these two have to be exactly the same width. Yeah. In yes. order for that for you to get that nice okay. 45 degree so angle. the bottom and the, yeah you've got to have them this to do it yeah that's lovely now yeah. that's really good another way to do that let me just uh get my other no we've got about how many long have we got about five minutes oh that's okay. enough isn't it another way to do it obviously if you didn't want to mess around with angles or anything is just to fold it over again you just cut off that, I've got a cut line there, let me just cut that off quick. Always cut away, never towards. Do you always use a rotary cutter when you're Yeah, I love, I love a rotary cutter. It's becoming more popular, yeah. I think, isn't it? So a way to do this is if you are to sew, hang on a sec. So I've already done the crease marks there, because I prepared, um, is, to, is to fold those right sides together and just fold down that one side. Mm. And then that turns through. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll just, uh, shall I sew it? Yeah, do. I've got time, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah. Because that will make more, then we'll be able to understand it. No, well, this is a great because you can use this technique in loads of different sorts of dressmaking. It's really yeah, useful. Yeah, I mean, this isn't a mitre corner is so much more satisfying. Oh, it was when you turned that round. It's like, <laughs> oh, that's a thing of beauty. It really, yeah, it really is like. But like when I bind quilts nasty. and you do the mitered corner, you know, in the binding where you go up and down, that's yeah. so satisfying. And the machine has decided to unthread itself. Has it? That's so mean. It's that so naughty. happened to Neil as well, which it's was so really funny. Because we said he had to rethread. Actually, to be fair, he did actually rethread it. To well, it doesn't take long. Too so long. So, if you this want machine. just the pattern, it's sixteen ninety nine. It's on screen at the moment, and um, you'll need two meters of fabric for the top and two meters of fabric for the dress. Um, that's sizes eight to twenty two. Okay. But you'll need more for sizes twenty four to twenty six. Okay, but, um, you, you know, a jersey, a thick jersey works well for, well, you'll need that for the top and, well, do you know, you don't need jersey for the top, you can just use normal fabric, but I think you'll need jersey for the dress. Well, actually, shall I actually read the pattern because it'll tell me that, won't you? <laughs> right, the layered dress and top are de designed primarily for stretch fabrics, however, there is the option of using a non-stretch such as a chiffon for the body of the overlayer. 
Right. Right. So the dress has to be in a stretch, but the top you can do. Yeah, you can do it in the viscose, in, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've just sewn down that, I folded that over, sewn down that one line. Uh, where's the split? There it is there. So that's the side seam. There's the split. I've sewn down, folded it over, back on itself, so right sides together. And sewed straight? Straight, okay. yeah. Yeah, you could... No, I'm just fascinated to see how this is going to work. And then you fold it through. There's, there's quite a lot of excess in there. And then it just goes in, that's really clever. It just goes in like that. And then <gasps> when you've come to finish the seams, you will... Uh, sorry, let me... Oh, hang on, I've got a piece here. Where is it? Here we go. Obviously that's just really neat too. Oh, that's close. So you, yeah, so you sew it straight and it looks like it's wrong, but then when you turn it round... So you could either finish it there and then sew along, mm. or you could go all the way down, because you are going to get... Um, raw edge. I did actually fold that in very cleverly. I don't, I'm not sure it's a bit of a jiggery pokery. <laughs> no, but it's nice to see two different ways of doing it, and then you get a really nice, neat corner. Yeah. So you'll do that at the vents, and then you will put the facing in or attach the dress. Right. And um, there are vents in the um, dress as well. There are vents in the dress as well. I would do those exactly the same right, way. Perfect. Yeah. That's been brilliant, Clive. We are, well, I've learnt loads about anyone else. I've learnt loads this morning. I'm sure you haven't. <laughs> no, I have. I've never done that. That's have really you not? good. No, no, really? I love that. Oh, okay. I would have turned it over and turned it over and it would have looked a right dog's dinner. <laughs> I'm very bulky. So that's really good. Yeah, that's satisfying. Isn't so it? Um, do you know when you're back with us? I think on the 9th of January. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so Merry you have Christmas, a everybody. Have a lovely Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hope you put with wings. You have with to tie wings. some tinsel around your hat for Christmas Day. I will. That will look lovely. Beautiful hat. So thank you so thank much. Thank you it's for been having me. A pleasure. It's been lovely uh, doing it with and you. And say hi, happy to Christmas to Mark for us. I will do. And ask, make sure he sorts that notching out. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's never going to live He's that. not going to let me live that down. He's never going to live that down. <laughs> so if you want the pattern, um, the code for that's on screen at the moment, 1699. I remember it's very multi purpose. Lots of things that you can do with it as um, Clive have shown you. And don't forget, you know, when you get your pattern back home, re-watch it, or if you want to sort of have a look at it and s see what you think, there are pictures on the website of the um, sizes and the measurements. So we have got, coming up after the break, the cover stitch where we're gonna meet George for his very, very first time on air. So be gentle. You might have met him before. He comes from Franklin's and he does lots of demonstrating, knows what he's talking about. So if you've ever thought about buying a cover stitch, now is the time to learn. So I will see you um, in a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools. And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Christmas is going to be a little bit different this year, but Sewing Street will be here to keep you company from 8am to 12pm on Christmas Day. Help me, John Scott, spread some festive cheer by sending in your Christmas messages for us to play on air on Christmas Day. Whether it's a message to your fellow Sewing Street fans or to a loved one, a video message or text, we want to hear from you. Send your videos, photos and messages to studio at sewingstreet.com by Tuesday the 22nd of December to be included and be a part of Sewing Street's Christmas Day celebrations. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business, it was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike and they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colors that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, and welcome back to Sewing Street for the cover stitch arm really really excited oh can i just move oh there we go i had to move before because i had machines in the way um yeah I was, I was in the i had to stand over to the side before anyway 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 so we're on cover stitches this hour which i'm really excited about because i do a lot of sewing obviously and dressmaking but i don't have a cover stitch or an overlocker and i think the reason is i'm not absolutely sure which one i should have or why so i'm really pleased to meet george today so welcome george yes Really uh, nice to have you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's great because you know what you're talking about. So tell me, you come from Franklin's. For anyone who doesn't hasn't heard of Franklin's, yeah. what is Franklin's? So we are a family business based in Essex, mm. and um, it's been going for 65 years now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, my grandma and granddad started the business, oh, did they? so it's in the blood. My granddad was an engineer, mm. and my grandma was a demonstrator, and so they got together, started up a shop in. Colchester mm. and, and we've grown from there so um, we've now got five shops around Essex and one in Salisbury mm. um, and I've loved it I've loved it getting involved um, I'm not a master of sewing machines by any means but I, but you I know do speak work. to a lot of people who <laughs> yeah. are yeah okay yeah cool so did you come straight into the family business from leaving school it was it was discussed over the dinner table since I was about eight years old oh, the really? business. so um, I knew what was going on. I was always okay. interested. I'd, oh, wow. I'd got a Saturday job when I was about 12, vacuuming the floor <laughs> over, over, over here in my dad selling the, the machines. So, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. And so would you demonstrate for them now at shows or do you sell in the shop? I do. I, I sell in the shop, demonstrate in the shop. We're always there for demonstrations. Mm. I think with, with a machine, certainly when they're as technical as these ones, yeah. a demonstration is so important. So yeah. um, we're, I'm at the shop um, and then when I'm out of the shop, I'm at a show or in another country seeing what other new machines are coming oh, okay. out, things like that. Um, so you have that. the shops, but you also import the machines as well? Yes. 
Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's brilliant because it means that we can go direct to the customer, direct to the manufacturer, and right. fill them in exactly what we so need. So you tell the manufacturer what the customer actually wants? Yes. Because they tell you. I'm yes. sure. Yes, we, that's the yeah. beauty of it. We get so much it feedback. It must have been really odd this year then not being able to go to the shows and demonstrate. It's been, yeah, especially because they're all planned and then cancelled yeah. one by one yeah. last minute. Yeah. So we're all raring to go. We've got our, uh, our lovely team with us as well. Mm. So hotel was all booked, show was all, and then oh, cancelled. No. So yeah, yeah, it was a real, real shame. But next year we're going to get well, back Well, it's been on, great that you can join us here today because I know with something like this, this, this is a considered purchase. You need to know how it works. Yes, So what it does. tell me, Ines, <laughs> why, why a cover stitch? Why a cover stitch? So... Um, certainly in clothing manufacturing, there's, there's three main machines, straight stitch, overlocking, right. and cover stitch. Okay. No. So we all know what straight stitching is. Yep. That's your normal machine. Yes. What's the cover stitch and what's an overlock? So going on to an overlocker next, that has a blade on it, so it seams and cuts the fabric right. at the same time, and it loops around the fabric. Like you see on a t-shirt. Uh, on the inside seam, mm. on, on this seam down here, it would yes. be cut and overlocked at the same time. Okay. An overlocker is for the seams which don't need cutting, like an edge around the collar, right. uh, around the neck, around the, around the bottom here. This is a cover stitch. Okay. So the so overlocking is for sort of finishing a seam. Finishing it, sewing it yeah, at the same time. It. Well, it's really, it, it gives a beautiful finish. And, and then an overlocker, you take okay. away the blade. So, so a you can so then the work on the is cover, a cover stitch machine. <laughs> you take away the blade and, and it means you can sew flat on the fabric and fold in, bring things in. Um, right, so hemming. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and many other things as well, which you, you wouldn't think of until you see it done. Wow, okay. So... Well, People often say this, the threading's the problem. Mm. I've never threaded one, so I don't know. So what, how do you find the threading of them? I, I, I sit down and, and basically, if you're patient, put everything in the right position, mm. it will be absolutely fine. As on a cover <laughs> stitch, is actually easier than an overlocker. Oh, OK. There's okay. less hooks underneath. Mm. If I open up that for you. On an overlocker, you've got two threads going down. Right. And then you've got a whole load of hooks to get them into. On this machine, it's one thread on the underneath. And there is a diagram on here as well okay. on, on the inside plate. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but the thread just comes straight down and across and into that looper. I guess it's just like so threading a sewing machine, isn't it? When you first get your machine, you're like, I'm never going to remember this. And mm. then you just yes. do it. Yeah. Just the, it, you ju it's... It's practice. Yeah, you it just is get, practice, you just get and, used to it. and and a, and a cover stitch is nothing to be afraid of. Okay, so show us what it does. Okay, show cool. me what it does. Cool. So on on the front here, you've got I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Um, you've got uh, an examples of all the different stitches that it does. So you've got a, a one thread cover stitch. Again, a one thread cover stitch, but in the middle, a one thread cover stitch to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. So depending on your measurements, that'll make a difference. And then you've got a three, uh, a four thread cover stitch, um, a three thread cover stitch, which is two needles, and then a, um, a, a narrow two thread cover stitch. So you can have wide or narrow stitching depending on the weight of the fabric. So okay. what you, the, the general rule of thumb is the thicker the fabric, the wider you want your co cover stitch. Right, okay. On a finer fabric, uh, the th um, a thinner cover stitch is much better. Okay, so if you're hemming something, sometimes it has a double row of yes. stitching, is that what you mean? Yes. And what were the numbers in the boxes? The numbers in the boxes are for the tensions. Oh, so okay. So it tells you, for all of these basic stitches, it's four. Just keep it oh, on four. Okay. So it just tells you what to do. So where do you start yes. then? So once you've decided, does the manu manual help you to decide which stitch you're going to do? Um, or do you just practice? It's, it is it getting the feeling of it. Okay. 
it is getting the feeling of it. So um, I can show you what to do yeah, on different show, fabrics. Yeah, I've got loads of different yeah, fabrics on, here to, to, easier, to go through. So I'm, I'm going to keep it very basic. I'm not going to try and keep to any lines or anything. I'm just going to stitch. Okay, so which is probably what you should do when you start with. For the beginning, indeed. Yeah. So you'd have a, you'd always have a test piece of fabric. Right. Because okay. you want to make sure it's perfect. Mm. So if I just put that underneath there like that. Come down. And poor George is having to do this backwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I always like to secure the tip stitch, turn, turn that w hand wheel down. Okay. And then let me find my foot control. So long. So how many needles are in the machine? So at the moment it's set up with three needles. Are they special ones? Um, they are standard uh, sewing machine oh, needles, okay. universal style. Right. Um, always recommend a good, good quality needle with any machine. Okay, but they are just um, standard machine needles. They are universal needles, oh, yes. Okay, so yeah. can you use others? Could you use jeans and, or would there be no point? Again, it is dependent on the fabric. Okay. So right. if you find that putting a, and, and this, is, this is applicable to any machine, if you mm. find putting a denim needle works better, um, and gives you a better stitch, then do it. Oh, okay. A leather needle, it, 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 stretch needles, jersey mm. needles. At the moment, I find this machine so versatile, I, I literally just use an 80 needle in there. Okay, an 80 and universal. A, an 80 universal, right, okay. not stretch or anything like that. So, carry on, check my stitch length on there. Okay, so finishing off the stitch. What I'm going to do is bring the needles to the top. It's amazing you're saying with three needles, it's great. Li <laughs> lift that foot up. And then I've got my curved pair of scissors here. I'm going to swipe that underneath the foot. Oh, so you cut them. What you do is you bring the top threads out like right. that. Okay. And then I'll be doing this many times, so you'll get the knack. And then snip them like that. Mm. And the fabric, what you have to do now all it's holding on is that bottom thread. So what if I do? What I do is pull it to the back. And I don't know if you can see that, but the threads on the front actually go to the back of the fabric. Oh, okay. And that ties it off. Oh, so bring that no, over no, there. that reverse stitching. No, no reverse stitching at all. Now oh, wow. both of my threads are at the back <gasps> of the fabric. I don't know where I'm going to yeah, put this. Yeah, just lay it. We'll lay it just down. Just lay it down here. You see that camera above you? <laughs> So go. I've got That's fine. Look, all the threads that I've finished off with here on the back of the fabric and on the front, that lovely seam in there. Wow, that's really neat, isn't it? That is, yeah, it's real professional level finish, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's You'd never get that on your normal no, machine. No, and this is something we've been trying to do because for years, manufacturing, they've used different techniques to what mm. we've even been aware of as a home user. Yeah, absolutely. And so now... Um, it's, it's taken a long time to make them good enough to put in the home because they they were massively expensive and okay. um, and difficult to make good quality. Whereas now, because we can offer them out direct, um, they are they're affordable. Exactly. Because somebody said exactly. to me today, "Can you take a couple of t-shirts for me?" And I said, "No, I can't. I don't have the right equipment." I said, "Oh well, yeah, it must be easy." No, you need the right equipment. Yeah. You cannot just hem a t-shirt with the same machine. It will look. You can do it, but yeah, it I said it'll look rubbish. Good. You're yes, better off exactly. if it's too long for you than what is going to happen if I, even if I used a zigzag on it, it's just going to look rubbish. It's, it, it's it will do if you haven't got an overlocker sometimes, <laughs> but it's not the best stitch, uh, or cover stitch, I yeah, should say. It yeah. isn't, it would have looked it's rubbish. not that wow factor, yeah. especially when you put so much time into making a garment mm. to, to finish it off correctly. I know, I just said to this, but I said, it, it will, you're better off the t-shirts too long than if I do it on my mach normal machine, because mm. it just won't have that finish. Yeah. But now, how, so for under 400, 437.99, you can actually get one yourself. Now, we've got a special offer today, £50 off, which George didn't know about. Did they not tell you? <laughs> <laughs> this has all been very <laughs> fast. So, we've um, got a special offer today, £50 off. Um, and obviously, this goes on to our split pay, so you can split it over three months at one four five ninety nine per month. If you buy it today, you will get it by Christmas. You'll be charged, and George said yes. He's promised us. 
that we can get Indeed. them by Christmas. Yeah, yep. no problem. No um, problem. So you pay the one four five ninety nine today, and you don't have to wait for the three months to be up. You will get it dispatched. You will have it before Christmas. There isn't interest on that. It is just split equally over three. And um, that applies to all the sewing machines today, as I've said, all day. This is the last day you can get it. So that's a fantastic price because you're getting a real industrial level professional machine. That's it. That creates that kind of finish. Just yeah. show us what else it, what else can we do? So the, the, the most important thing with a cover stitch is that it's versatile because there's so yeah. many different types of stretch fabrics around now. You've got the traditional knits, lycras, um, and, and so many synthetic fabrics. Yeah. Um, awesome. You need a really good quality machine to be able to deal with that. Mm. So now I've got some ribbing here, knitting again, very stretchy. If I put that under there, I'm going to do my, my last piece was so wonky. I'm going to do my best to keep <laughs> well, it straight. It, I think it's very hard. I find it hard enough sewing standing up, let alone sewing backwards. <laughs> right. I'm going to get used to this. So again, turn the needle in. And what I'm going to show you here as well is um, I've, got two, I've got dials here. So I've got a, a dial on the top and two dials on the side. Mm. Now the dial on the top is for pressure. Right. And um, what can happen when you're going onto a fleece and things like that, a thicker fabric, um, what can happen is the top can slip. And that's because there's too much pressure right. and okay. it's slipping. So if you reduce that pressure, mm. it allows the, tra the fabric to travel through much more smoothly. So I'll be changing that as I go through different Oh, habits. okay, that's interesting. The other two dials, um, mm. we've got the um, differential feed at the bottom. And I'll, first I'll mention the stitch length. We all know what that is, yeah. stitch length, yeah. longer or shorter. But the differential feed, um, that takes some explaining. So overlockers have this as well. Mm. And what it does is you've got two sets of feet, two sets of teeth on the machine. Oh, okay. So the teeth of, not like a normal machine where you've got one set of teeth. No. This has two. This has two sets of teeth on the machine. And what, what they do is usually they're, they're moving around like that. Mm. And the problem is, is sometimes, especially when it's a stretch fabric and the pressure is too much, the, the fabric will stretch as it's going through and that's right. how you get that wave right. in okay. the fabric. Yeah. So what you do is because they're separate, you can speed up the one at the front. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. so where it usually stretches it as it goes through, which creates that fluting mm. waving effect, by speeding up the front feed, it reduces that right down, giving you a lovely flat seam. So you change that differential feed depending on the fabric that you're using. So if you find you've got a wave, you then yes, change it. Yes, which right? is why it's always best to have a, a test yes. piece. Yes, OK. Yeah. Because you yeah. can literally sew, and as you're sewing, you can change these dials. So you've got okay. live feedback of how the stitch is yeah, doing. I like that, I like yeah. that. Yeah, no, but it's always worth it, isn't it? It's like if you, on a normal machine, if you do a zigzag, you have a go, don't you, first, to see yeah. how wide do I want it. Yes. Very simply. Yes. So, okay. Exactly. So I'm on some, some, some knit now. So I'm just going just gonna to run the machine, see what comes out the back. So there are less now, than 10 available of these machines now. So if you want one, I would put it in your basket remember okay <laughs> now so well, I've got what I've got coming out the back here is a bit of a wave ah and I'm, I'm going to reduce that now by is it a similar idea to using a walking foot you know that it that stops similar but it's different isn't it because that gives you the feed from the top and the bottom whereas e this is the two uh, feeds exactly yes yeah it is it is, very, it is unique to overlockers and cover stitches, okay. this differential feed, yeah, no, really but it's so important. Mm. So if it's going wavy... So it's going wavy out the back, I can see that, not happy with it. So I'm going to speed up the top. So you can see that dial is on 0.5, 1, 1.5. So in comparison to the, the, the other tooth, it's the, other, the feed behind it, mm. the front one, is 1.5 times as fast. And as I say, it's not an exact science. You just have to, yeah. It is, I can now see coming out the back, and I've gone right off not being straight. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, um, you are sewing backwards. We, we are <laughs> so back on target, pretty much. Much, much straighter. And now again, I'll just finish off the same way, bring the needles to the top. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not going to finish. I'm going to go straight onto a thick 
fleece. Okay. So I'll fold this over. So can you use it for seams as well as hems? You can do. You can do a seam with it. It takes a little bit more preparation than what I've got here. Okay. But it's if you fold it, pin it, iron it, you can seam it. And okay. if you look at um, fleeces with ribbing around the bottom, yes, very yeah. often that will be cover stitched oh, on. Okay. The the um, cuffs as well will be cover right. stitched on. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's where you're doing a seam that's you know a proper like a top stitch seam. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Mm. So. Guys. Yeah, no, I know, I know exactly what you mean because when I've when I've taken things apart before and thought I'll never get that back together, where you've got a cuff with the with the sleeve in it without a cover stitch machine, you're not. Yeah, a chance. it's it, it's yeah, mm. and then when you see it's done, you go, oh, no, that's, that'll be why because I don't have the right it, machine. Yeah. Okay. okay, right, so we're going on to thick going fleece. Thick, 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 thick fleece. Thick so fleece. I'm going to up my um, stitch length. Okay. Reduce the pressure. Right, yeah. Slightly. So I've got N for normal, three, two. I'm going to put it on two. And then that's going to sew through there. And then you're, you're generally going to work going, going around the inside. So you're going to have mm. to go over a seam. And so I'm going to oh, double course, up yeah. the fabric here. Mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> you can always... And that just rides it, no problem. Bring that to the end. And is that because of the feed? Is that why that will go through? Because on a normal machine, that might sort of start struggling a bit. It's the, it's the feed and the quality of the build of the machine. Okay. There's no wobble in there. It's fixed. No. As soon as you get a slight wobble in the mechanics. But this one is, this one is, is very well built, and that's why it can do it. It's, okay. It is as simple as... Really and you, I mean, you obviously import them anyway, so you, you know what quality you want. Exactly. You've got to sell them. We've got to put our name behind <laughs> them. So, um, very important. Because we're always there as well. We've, people can contact us directly. We don't hide. Yeah, there's a two-year warranty. There's a two-year warranty, the a machine, two -year warranty. Which is great. And then they can call you direct. Exactly. When they can't, don't know what they're doing. Which is really useful. Because often it's what... I guess you know what's the commonly most asked questions. Is it usually something simple? Uh, yes, on 95% of the time. Plug it in. <laughs> Switch it on and off again. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, is, it is a simple issue. It's, it's, it's something, again, that just, just takes a bit of guidance. It, okay. it's, it's nothing nothing to be worried mm. about. It, it is a new thing for a lot but of people. But it's really nice that they've got that support. They know that if they buy it from, from you, that they've got some backup. Yes. And you'll have been asked all those questions before. Yes. And as we go to shows, we, we usually do about 12 shows a year. <gasps> wow. You minimum. must spend your whole time on the road. Yeah. An awful <laughs> lot of it. Yes. And, and Gary, of course, as well, I work with. Oh, do he you? He does a lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've known him since I was born, or he's oh, known really? me since I've born, oh. whichever, whichever way around you want to put it. Um, but yeah, this is the end result. So, going back to that ribbing, mm. this is where I started. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's what it might look like if I did it on my machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see as I've gone through, ignore the wiggle. Yeah. Uh, change. This is where I got distracted from keeping it straight. But I changed the. <laughs> uh, uh, changed the differential feed. Sped sped those front teeth up again, and now that's lovely and fat. That's lovely, isn't it? So you just need to have a little test piece to sort of play with it. And I guess you get used to it as well, don't you? You go, oh, that will be that. That's that fabric. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you get into the mode. Does it do neoprene? Stitch. Neoprene? Mm. Uh, a lot of people start sticking that, neoprene. What, is that scuba? Well, it's like scuba. Yeah, I've got sorry. scuba here, oh, yeah. so I just did. Oh, yeah. So I did first, yeah, because it, it is so popular. It is scuba, yeah. It's just, it is um, that scuba fabric. A lot fabric, of people yeah. are using that now instead of the normal sort of jersey, aren't they, for dressmaking? Yes. Yeah, especially with this weather as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but also cycling gear as well. But um, I see a lot of dress patterns these days in scuba rather than yeah. jersey. Yeah, so popular. We, we've, we've started stocking a massive amount in okay. our shops because, yeah, people love it. It's, it's, it's actually very versatile, easy to work with as mm. well. And that's, you need a machine like this though, really? To, to do it properly, mm. yeah.
Yeah. So I guess this is the point in your sewing life where you think, mm, okay, I'm dressmaking, I'm enjoying dressmaking, I need to get up to that next level. And you will, I mean, I find that I, because I don't have one, I am held back. I can't, yeah. I don't tend to stitch with jersey fabrics. Mm. Because yeah, yes, exactly. I just don't bother, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is mad, isn't it? Yeah, and, and it's purely because you haven't yeah. got necessarily the equipment. I to know do it. I could do it, but I know it yeah. won't be the right finish. Yes, exactly. Mm. I understand that. <laughs> Being a bit of a perfectionist myself, you yeah. want it, it's yeah. I get that. But it's like with anything. It's like you know, the first time I bought I bought a walking foot for my machine. Now I can quilt properly. <laughs> You know, and, <laughs> yes. and I could quilt before, but now yeah. I can quilt properly. Yeah. And it, I think that's what puts people off sewing with jersey fabrics. Yes. And scubas and all of that. that yes, because sewing machines have worked for a long, long time on a stretch stitch. Yeah. But it's just it's never going to be the no, same as a, a machine which is made to do the job. Yeah. yeah. And I've used a stretch stitch and you pull it and it goes ping. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yep. Yep. Okay, so show us another one. Show us another um, one. Well, I'm just going to show you the back and the front of this. Okay. Uh, this fleece here. Um, just gone along. Um, I can reduce, there's little things I can do to make this sit a little bit higher. You can play around, make it better okay. and more prominent. Um, and then on the back, you can see two to four layers. Nothing. Yeah, stopping it just it looks professional, there. doesn't it? Yeah. It's you get what you pay for, don't you? You know, mm. if you want a professional machine. But actually, it's a really good price, isn't it? I mean, I'm expecting a machine sort of industrial, professional quality to be a lot more than that. But this is certainly accessible and affordable, isn't it's, it? It is coming down now, yeah. Mm. They, they, are, uh, they are just getting to that point where households can... Yeah, can, that you can yeah. just... And if you are, you do like dressmaking, particularly, you know, well, with kids' clothes as well, but, um, the whole stretch fabric... It's just lovely, and there's so much of it available as well. Mm, and and the, is it how it fits as well, isn't it? Yeah. It, it? If you're working with cotton fabric, you've got to be on point. Yeah, there's there's a little bit more forgiveness in a jersey, isn't there? Indeed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. So, um, uh, yeah, lovely fabric to wear, but working yes, with. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm going to go on to some slightly lighter fabrics now. Okay. And what I'm going to do is knock out a needle, take out a needle, um, and that means I'm going to get just two uh, straight stitches on the, on the spot. They're going to be finer. Um, the gap between them is going to be less. Okay. So if I just take out that needle. So how many needles does it have in total? It has three needles. So you can put three needles in? Yes. Or you can have... It, it comes with the three needles in. And, and so three needles you would use for a very, very secure stitch. Okay. And very, can you very use very just secure. one? You can just use one. Okay. Yeah, you can use one, two or three needles. And does it come with spare needles? Uh, you get a packet of needles oh. with, there, with it as well. Fantastic. So when you, because I often break in needles because I go over pins and all sorts. When you break a needle, do they all break? Um, I, I don't break many needles, oh. but... Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't, don't go over any pins on, on anything with a needle. I um, always break in needles. It's because I go too fast and I'm going through fabrics and much too thick. No, I would... Oh, Alison has, Alison's just mentioned to say he's so young, but he's so knowledgeable. Thank you. He's, that's because he's been doing it for his whole life. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay, so now I've got this light in there. Put that down, sorry, I'm going to push that around again. Um, okay, so we've got the lycra so in what's there. Oh, lycra, okay. Yeah. Sort of leotards, dance costume. Indeed, yeah. Put the machine back to normal pressure, uh, normal length between two and three, and just one on the differential feed, all back to normal. And let's see how that looks. Just turn that fabric, turn that down and in. <laughs> Oh, it's costumes, isn't it? You know, all of these people who have um, either fancy dress costumes or costumes for school plays, cosplay, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, massive now. Mm. Um, last time we were at the NEC for a show, actually, there was one of the big cosplay uh, Comic-Con oh, gatherings. There? So oh, really? Yeah, I got to have a little wander around <laughs> that as well. But you said, you need to cover stitch. Look yeah. at that. Look at that. If you had to cover stitch, you'll see. Yeah. yeah. But they pay, you know, that's a really big thing. People spend a lot of time making them. 
I think a lot of them get their aunties and their grandmas making them. <laughs> yeah, well, it, there's a there's a real switch. I see it in the shop now of mm. of going from like your grandma and granddad sewing, and now people of my generation coming in and sewing and getting into it, and and getting creative with their hands and just loving it really. Wow, so have you changed? Have you noticed a change in that this year in particular? Oh, massive! Since 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 the lockdown, I think people have really change their perspective on what they want to be doing mm. and, and to have a creative outlet. That's great, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I know there's a lot of misery around, but in <laughs> our shop, ev everyone's pretty happy coming yeah, in and, but it's and cracking it's more, on. It's, I mean, it's about obviously, you know, that's great for your <laughs> shop, but also it means that people aren't going to give up that hobby once they've learned it and picked it up. They're yeah. not going to suddenly give no. that up. And if people can have a creative outlet. It's so practical It's as good well. for you. <laughs> Mentally, oh, yes, yeah. Something to take your mind off of it. Yeah, and and um, uh, and also it's something to get really, really good at. Yeah. You can really practice, really get into it, and mm. really. But it is about the equipment as well. Like I was saying, you know, you mm. there is a limit where you go. No, I am not touching jersey. And if you haven't got the right equipment, there is a limit to yes. where you can go. Yes, exactly. Having the right tool for the job is mm. certainly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you so? Yes. Yes. I. Um, I started off when I, when I was in the shop, about mm. 12, doing all different crafty bits, quilting, okay. cushions, uh, free motion, things like that. And then more recently, oh, I, and then in between that, uh, uh, I made a couple of shirts as well from start to finish. Mm. Um, uh, and then now I'm, I'm um, uh, yeah, just, just whenever I need to, yeah, really. That's nice, I, I, I've yeah. got the, the skills now to do it. Yeah, so. but then that must, that, that's good because you can pass that information on. If you could say yourself, you sort of understand where people are coming from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but mm. massively. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but anyway, sorry, I keep interrupting you. Back to Lycra. Back to Lycra. <laughs> so, um, just looking at the back of the stitch here, it's looking pretty good. Slight wave to it, so I am going to um, up the differential feed okay. a touch. And carry on through. And up. Come to the end of the sewing again. Needles to the top. Foot up. Pair of scissors underneath. Little curved ones are lovely. Yeah. Oh god, this angle. Yeah. Okay. You could turn it round if you <laughs> to do it. So there's yeah. the because so actually, unfortunately, you're probably making it look trickier than it really is. It, it is literally just the scissors under there and then pull that out like yeah, that. Yeah, it's just that it's we're making it It's just getting it round to it. <laughs> um, I'm bending a funny way at the moment. So Does it have quite a good lift so you can get underneath there? Yes, exactly. So you can get underneath and then you've got that extra high lift, oh, which is oh, what that's I was trying nice. to get round to as well. Yeah, That's nice. And then again, just snip those threads. Slowly pull that to the back, those top and threads go and under. And then so that's your sort of finishing off as well. It, it's finished off, so you've got these threads, they're secure, but you can knot them as well, cut them right okay. back, and it, it just leaves that professional finish. Yeah, it does. No, that honestly, you just cannot do that. However good, and I've got a really good sewing machine, but it doesn't do that. <laughs> and it never will. Yeah. But it's... Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, it's a different mechanism. Yeah, yeah. There were um, they tried to even even between cover stitches and overlockers. Mm. It's a different mechanism. Yeah, they, they've yeah. made machines which do both, mm. um, but now it, it, it's it's been proven that the cover stitch is best left as a cover stitch right. and an overlocker okay. is They're an overlocker. They are different they machines. Yeah. But lots of people have. I mean, I have a very old singer that I only use for free machine embroidery because it does it beautifully. Mm. And sometimes some mm. machines only do one thing. Yes. But they do it really, really well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So what's in the accessory pack that we get? So in the accessory this? pack is what... And that's in at the same price, isn't it? That comes with the machine. Yes, it, it does. with the machine. It does. Okay. But not normally, that's a special offer today. Indeed. Okay. So, um, we have got the instructions, which goes through how to... Handy. Obviously, I don't read those. Yeah, just stick that on just the table. play that on that you. side, on here. Yeah, With that. can see them. Cool. Okay, so, uh, let's start with the nice bits box. of kit. Some a little handy box as well. Yes. So these these two pieces here yeah. are guides, 
and that is what turns my wonky sewing into a into the sewing of a pro because okay you can run the fabric up against this and it will give you a, a, a perfect wow. stitch to the end with that's a, really with useful. a consistent measurement okay two guides there uh, which the for two, hemming is kind of important yes exactly <laughs> yeah yeah because you work blind on an overlocker you you've got the you, you work blind, so the underneath. Mm. Yes, of course. You've got, yeah. you've got that fold. Well, that's why I was just so thinking because you you're those working from the wrong side. Yes. So you, so the guide is. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That's really helpful. Yeah, <laughs> I've got some. I've got some stuff I can show okay. you how to get it like that. Um, and then we have got a clear foot. Mm. A clear foot, which um, uh, when you're using these different attachments. And so for example, this attachment here, you can run a piece of belt looping in, elastic, um, ribbons. Mm. You can run all different things through this. And with this clear foot, you can see exactly what's going okay. on. Okay, okay, that makes sense. It makes it much, much easier to get the right measurements. Right. Um, and then uh, the screws to put the pieces on. And finally, the bias binder. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, that looks <laughs> lovely. And what this does is it will put bias binding around the end of collars, <gasps> sleeves, um, whatever. That sounds amazing. It'll bias bind it. I have got some samples with me as well. Yeah, no, I, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Right, so show us, show us next. Next, I keep interrupting <laughs> you. What do you want to show us, the right. guides or the bias bind or? Um, I, will, I will start with the guides. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's attach the guides. I'm going to take this off. Oh, so Mercedes says, well done, George. Mm. A cover stitch machine is essential to any sewist's arsenal. <laughs> I, think she, I think she's right. Yep. Thank it, you. It does, make, it does make a massive difference. Yeah, don't forget all the attachments that are in the box, the bias binder, make of the seam guides and everything there, that is all in the price. So you get £50 off and you get the free box of accessories as well for £437.99. But remember, it's on split pay, so you can pay £145.99 today. You will have it delivered, guaranteed by Christmas, and then the other two payments will be taken out um, over the next three months. So you've only got to pay for that. So that is your Christmas present, really. If someone says, I don't know what to get you for Christmas, go, I've got a really good idea. Mm -hmm. But could you buy it today? Right. So I'm going to just do it on a piece of linen. Okay. First. So, oh, let's get that foot So on. you do what? use it with non-woven fabric? With oh, yeah. With, with non-stretch yes, fabrics sorry. as well, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, you can. Well, yeah, I guess because even if you buy a cotton dress from a from the shop it's got a proper hem hasn't it yeah, so, yeah it's, not it's very juicy. lightweight as well so if i just use one needle on like a mm. linen fabric it wouldn't show a lot at all it'd be uh, really okay. subtle or if what, what if you're using like voile or something would it work on very lightweight fabrics uh, yes okay. yeah again it, uh, voile is like an organza yeah it? yeah sort of like a lawn and, it wouldn't you know. necessarily be so necessary but if you're turning it back and with things like that you can turn it over twice like mm. with like with this yeah if you were doing a narrow twice. hem or something then you could use it for okay yeah so i can feel where that is on here so i'm going to just adjust this to try and get as close so what i'm going to try and do is oh so you so you put the fabric close in and you can, to that edge as so I then can. you can set it where you want it to be yeah nice that makes it a lot easier, especially when you're doing it backwards. Remember, George is doing this backwards. <laughs> you won't be using your machine like this. Probably everyone's thinking, thinking, God, do you have to sew backwards with these cover stitches? <laughs> I was thinking that when I came <laughs> yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, he's never going to sew forwards again. OK. Right, so. So even at this angle, well, I, I don't need to try too much because no, I can just bring that the fabric up against there. Exactly. Do you tend to sew with the guides on? Yes. Yes. Practice without on your on your test pieces. Have a look. Play on the machine. Oh, so without the fuss of that. So get yep. your tension or whatever it's called. It's not tension, is it? Differential feed. Yes. 
stitch length. Yes. Pressure. All of these Get dials, all of that right. Get them ready for that fabric. Mm. Then attach your guide. Yeah. And um, obviously fold, iron, pin your fabric. Mm. And then and as long as you measured it out correctly, you really can't go wrong. So I'm going to finish off the stitch here again. No wonder they have it so neat when they come out of these factories. You think that's it. They've got guides, haven't they? <laughs> so cut that fabric, cut that thread. They out had the a back. whole cover stitch show on the sewing bee uh -huh. this year, didn't they? And there was yeah. one show where they just used cover stitches. I think it was a lycra. Yes, yes, um, and and uh, and overlock. Yeah, they well. they, they, yeah, but they had both, didn't they? Yeah. They didn't have normal sewing machines at all. So it must have been. I don't know what they were making. But it was sort of a like with. Yeah, well, any uh, like um, people, you can make whole outfits using just a cover stitch and an overlocker now, because um, uh, like with stretch fabrics, with fleeces, you can mm. seam it all at the same time, turn it up with this. Um, yeah, you can yeah. just use a cover stitch. I guess stitch. yeah, fleece as well is really useful, isn't it? Oh, well, let's have a look at your seam. Let's look. And where are we? You get a Ooh, so that's, that's the back of it. Yeah. Turned up. You can see I've got I've got done quite well there, close to the edge, and then on the front. Yeah, that's so. amazing, isn't it? No wonder you can't ever get that on a normal. Yeah, Elliot's in their gallery looking at all of his clothes now. <laughs> <laughs> Checking out which one was cover stitch and which one was overlocked. Yes, we were chatting that. About <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then um, scuba fabric. So back onto the stretch. Mm. Got a nice little pre fold there. Um, I'm oh, Chris has just said, such a treat to see such a total expert at work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 and Clive's just got home. And he says you're doing a great job. Brilliant. He's just got home. Oh, uh, Clive, how much trouble are you in with Mark about the notching? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do this one with a three thread as well. On there. So we've got less than five. Is that four? <laughs> Less than <laughs> five <laughs> machines left. So if you want one, remember this is the last day. We can guarantee you'll get it before Christmas. Um, we have got a special offer to do. There is £50 off and the box of accessories. Alrighty. Not bad. Okay, so this is our scuba hem. Scuba hem, same bit of time. Keep into that two needle. Should be absolutely fine on there. I suppose you get better at knowing how many needles and for what weight of fabric. It's also for the way it looks. Oh, okay. If you can add a sort of chunkier uh, hem to something and, and, and make it a feature. You could change the colours of yes, these threads. Yes, if you made it like a, you know, a, like, like they do with jeans. Even, I've seen people put a variable thread on the underneath Ooh. and use that as the top. Ooh. So, Ooh. All, di all different creative things. What sort of thread does it use? Is it anything special? It is nothing special, really. No, it doesn't need it. Like an overlocker, it will work with... Um, uh, cheaper thread. Just cheaper polyester thread. Cheap, it? Yeah. But do you have bigger cones on that, or? You can again. You um, uh, it will take a bigger cone. Okay. You don't need a bigger no, cone. No, okay. So if you've got a special thread, mm. it can be any thread, and and you can just use it on one or all of them. Oh, okay. So you could have like three standard ones, and then if you wanted a special yeah. one for the next, top. Next time, I can I can bring <laughs> some threads with me. Just special threads. Um, and is there one of them that's on the top and then the other three are on the bottom? It, it, what, it's up to you. Okay. So, you, so you've got obviously three threads on the, on the top. Right. So you can change all those, for example, to different colours. And then um, if, if you wanted to put the underneath on the top, yeah, you could just put that different thread mm. through But here. is it just one of those threads that you see on the right side, which is the wrong side from when you're sewing? Uh... <laughs> That. <laughs> so that's that so, thread so. you've got there. Is that just one of the threads? No, this this is each individual oh, thread. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, so you got the th you got the three threads here, mm. two th three needles here. Yeah. And then you got the two threads there, and then the w there is the one on the underneath, and that does all that zigzagging oh, work. Oh, I see. And on that's the, the one where you change the colour. Yes. Indeed. Oh, okay. Indeed. Right. Some scuba fabric. So. <laughs> Um, Keep interrupting with his cat's fold, he's asking questions. Yeah. It's really fast, isn't it? Is that because you're 
really practised at it? Um, it's with that guide. It makes me so much more confident. Okay. I, I, I really haven't used it at this angle before. Right. But because I can just pluck that fabric up against the, the guide. Yeah. It's like having the so guide to bowling, isn't it? Yeah, well, you've seen what I've done without <laughs> it. So, um, it's like temping bowling. <laughs> okay, so now, again, this, this way of taking out the threads isn't the only way, but for me, it secures them lovely. Um, right, okay. And, and just brings them to the back. So that's my finished piece there on the back. Oh, yeah. Like that. Now, a little trick of the trade is what you don't know is that um, generally what they'll do is they'll cover stitch them and they'll leave uh, a little bit of fabric over on mm -hmm. here. And what they do is curve a pair of scissors and they can just cut nice and close. Why do they do that then? Because the finish then <laughs> looks awesome. Like that. And if I did that all the way along, oh, yeah. it would look like I've caught that right on the edge. Oh, uh, OK. So for so, really, really... So rather than easy. overestimate and you end up stitching on the wrong side, it's best to stitch further in. Yeah. yeah. And then you can always come along and cut. Oh, cut nice. Back. Yeah, no, that's a lovely finish. OK. Like that. Lovely curved scissors. Are they special? Um, these are Italian. Oh, well, they're lovely. of course they're special. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they can just get so you. So you would recommend having a pair of curved scissors? Yes, because they're curved, you can, you can get so much closer to that yeah. stitch um, and, and trim along. Okay. Cool. What right, now? what are you going to show me next? I don't know. I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I've got a piece of ribbing here, a, a tube of ribbing. Yeah. So I'm going to show you sort of how you would do the inside yeah, no, of the t-shirt. Yeah, because that's the sort of thing you would do. Exactly. It's nice to be to see all the different things that you can do with it. Well, you know what you, you know, this is what people ask you, I presume. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, most, yeah, a lot of this has come from our customers. Mm. Again, we, we learn what, yeah. what you guys like. So turn that, turn that needle in. Sorry, there's a safety catch on this, so when this is open, mm. it won't sew, so there's no chance of getting That's kind of up. sensible. Yeah. Especially as it's got three needles. Okay, right. Let's have a go at this, so you still see there. Yep, cool. Yeah, it's nice to put in a clear foot on, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. There's actually a little bit of wave there, so I'm going to I'm going to okay. speed up the diff. <laughs> right. Speed up the diff. So, where is an uh, overlocker you'd chain off? On the, on here, you would literally just come meet. Oh, I've had a needle come out. That's me pulling it. Uh, but we'll just carry on. This so now it's. Um, just on a single okay. thread at the top. So do you overlap or do you stop? I'm, I'm going to overlap. Right. Like that. Bring the needle up. Thread out. at the back so you can see where one thread has come out but that was me leaning over and yeah, pulling it in all different really directions happen. we are really so, challenging indeed so on on the outside there you've got that that's where it, it's wavy a little bit yeah, and then yeah. I've, I've, I've adapted that as I've gone through taking that right out and there's an example of a single needle cover stitch okay. as well so you can see it's, it's just less Obvious, it's a bit, a little bit more subtle. Yes, no, it's quite interesting to see that you intentionally break the thread. <laughs> <laughs> and now we can see the difference. Yes, 
And so then, I guess, and you just, if you practice, you get used to, don't you, what, what effects you want and not on the fabric, whether you want one needle or two needles or three it's needles. A, it's a style, it's isn't it? It's a style, it? yes. Yeah. Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's subtle to chunky mm. and, and, and there. Okay. So, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Julie says, there must be such a pride in the family with such a lovely young man carrying on the uh, business. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I've, I've actually got my brother in the business as well. Have you? And my two cousins. So, oh, wow. Yeah, we're, we're quite a strong It really unit. is, isn't it? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet your Christmas parties are good. <laughs> yeah, they are, actually. <laughs> Not this year, Not this year, no. No, but normally. But normally, So is yeah. your brother younger as well? Um, I am the youngest of the family, oh. so my brother's... Uh, three years older, and then mm. six years older, and then nine years older. Are they watching? I don't know. I hope they <laughs> I hope are. <laughs> they might be. Yeah. Um, Isn't he doing well? Isn't he doing well, boys? I, I'm really not thinking about who's watching. Like, yeah. Let's um, hope they're watching. He's doing everything well. <laughs> um, what about the bias? The bias binder. Right. Is that intimidating? That is um, going to be interesting at an angle. Okay. Um... How about not doing it at an angle then? Oh yeah, properly. no worries. Yeah. No problem. And just show us what it looks like. No problem at all. Okay, cool. We don't know, because we've seen how it works, haven't we? We know about the needles and, yep. you know. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, you can have it. You've done 40 minutes backwards. We'll let you have um, 10 minutes <laughs> forwards. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. I've got another machine here with all three needles threaded, so if I just okay. whip that one out, save a lot. Oh, I like that. Out. I wish I had that at home. Every time my needle goes, <laughs> I go, oh, yeah, I've got another one. So if you want this machine before Christmas, you need to put it in your basket and check out today. With the offer, we've got £50 off, so it's four three seven ninety nine, and you get the whole box of accessories that's got the guides, the clear foot, the bind, bias binding adder, which we're going to see in a bias minute, binding. and the yep. um, instructions. Um, Obviously, the standard set of accessories come with it, which is, is that the box I've got here? So this is the standard box of accessories that you get, which has got um, tweezers, the screwdriver, obviously, if I'm doing the bits. Oh, I saw um, Tom, you, George using this. That's to change the needles. That's to change the needles, yep. Saw that little Allen key. These are all the thread guides. Um, what is that for? That is a needle threader. Oh! Needle threader, of course it's a needle threader. Mm. Yeah, magic. Needles and a cleaner. Yes, a little brush. A cleaner. And oil. Got a little bottle of oil. Yeah, again in the instruction manual it shows you where to put just, just a drop of oil and it'll keep it smooth Okay. Uh, and running lovely. And your two-year warranty that doesn't come in the box. That's just what you get. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you do. So this is the standard set of accessories that you will get with your machine. But obviously there's the extra box that George is showing, you know, with the guides. And this amazing, that looks like, I don't know, weird, isn't it? <laughs> weird. <laughs> Alien, right. So what so, sort of bind, is it any kind of bias binding? Is it cotton? Is it stretchy? Double fold. Double fold. I, I've got a satin that you can use, obviously, a stretch bias. Okay. A cotton bias. It it all depends on the finish, what you're doing with it. Right, but just a normal double So point. I'm putting on this onto a lovely bit of ribbon. Ooh, so satin I wouldn't want to do that in a million years. Okay. So I'm <laughs> going to just feed this. No, I really that. would. If on a normal machine, now you don't have to do it backwards, honestly. I can give it No, a you can do it. F At least if I mess up, I've got an excuse then. <laughs> um, you can do it forwards. See, so if you did that on a normal machine, that would look, mm, would so. look rubbish. I'm going to turn it forwards just to get yeah, this in Yeah, you can do here. it forwards. We just want to see what it looks like. So you've got to just feed feed this bias binding okay, through. Okay, just like that's how you, when you use a normal bias tape maker. Exactly, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. But you can do it forwards, honestly. <laughs> and it's really fiddly, isn't it, when you do them? You sort of like start feeding it through and it gets to the point where it doesn't want to do it anymore. It's, it is. It's getting that beyond that point. Mm. And then look at that. Lovely. So now I'm just going to make sure that that lines up with those three needles Because I can't imagine trying to put bias around the neckline of a T-shirt. That must be that easy on a cover stitch. Impossible on a normal machine. Mm. Well, 
with, with this guide on there, that folds the bias binding around. So again, all I've got to worry about is keeping things butted okay. against this. Oh, is there a guide sort of on it as well then? So. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, just the edge of this, okay. so you, yeah, you, you want to slip it in as, as close right. as you can, and then that metal wraps around there. Pull that in, secure the stitch. See that? It's interesting there you actually are. when you see it on the side that the, the whole needle is angled and like it, it doesn't come down straight. When you see the, the needle Yeah, is like angled. a normal machine, it, oh, it comes yes. straight. That's yeah. coming in like a, in at an angle. That's it. So I, I'm, I'm just la allowing the machine to do the work here. Right. You're not having to no. really concentrate. I come off oh. a little bit of something. Oh. Just straight through the back, bring the needles to the top again. Whip that out. That's really impressive, actually. Actually. Because whenever I put bias binding on, it, I can never guarantee it always catches on the back. Mm. I have to go back and sew a little bit. It never all catches. That's beautiful. Like that. So if you put that like around a t-shirt edge, you'd never, you would never get it as neat as that. No. Not in a Not million at all. years. Not at all. Mm, that's worth it. It's worth it for the bit bias binded, to be honest. I did have some samples as well, but I might lift them. Because um, uh, you, what you can also do is run elastic in here. You can run trims in there as well. Wow. Um, and, and really jazz it up. Yeah. There's loads of different. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes. But there's so much. Oh, look. Yeah. Uh, well, no, <laughs> no, there's better ones in there. There's a little, there's one in a box. One, one in a box. box. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this, this was one of my on. first. Yeah, this was one of my first attempts with elastic actually, and I've got an elastic on that side, and then a, a trim on that side, um, and and. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So any kind of costumes and fancy dress, that's perfect for. Yes. There we go. Cool. <laughs> thank you. So. It's a little box of samples. Indeed. A little practice session. So, um, here's just two. Two pieces of ribbon, elastic on the back, smocked together. Oh. Wow. So you just feed the elastic through as well? You just um, secure it down with, with, with uh, the needles. Yes. And just stretch it out as you go through. Lovely. Lace? Lace, wow. ribbon, elastic. Gives you that lovely wow. effect. Wow. So why does it work so well? Is it because it's got the three rows of stitching? You know, why? To, to trap that in, yeah. it, it, it is what it does. It just does, it, okay. It does it well. It and, and, and that's, does it, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. how does it? <laughs> I'd have to bring one of my engineers on to go into that. No, um, I, I was supposed to, because I'm just kind of, because there's a lot of viewers who, like me, have got a really nice sewing machine and thinking, what is it that this does? So why does yeah. that do that? So is it because yeah. if you did that on a normal machine, you'd use maybe a zigzag it's or something? It's a totally different mechanism for making the stitch. Mm. What you've got on a, a sewing machine is called a lock stitch. Right. And um, whereas this is a chain stitch. Okay. So and it's the difference in the stitch that... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah. you'd never get that finish. No, and because uh, the sewing machine cannot form a stitch like this forms a stitch, right, and vice okay. versa as well. Mm. Um, ribbon on that, and the elastic, that's a bit of bias binding with a t-shirt finish around it, so you can sort of imagine yeah. that yeah. Around, Ooh. around the collar. Oh, that's nice. Um, just trapped a little bit of... Uh, uh, Oh, we've had so many Trim. messages about you now, George. Okay. They want you back. They think you're brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Cool. You are a natural. <laughs> yeah. See, look, look at that. Look at the time. You've nearly done an hour. Is Boom. it? Oh, yeah, there <laughs> it is. Oh, I've been looking for that all show. Have like, you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's thinking, what the hell's the time? What's the time? <laughs> Yeah. So, you've only got like a couple of minutes left. So, is there anything else you want to tell us? Oh. Um. No, you're going oh, to you're going no, to just don't worry, they've just sold out, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's that, then. <laughs> <laughs> they just sold. That was good yeah. timing, wasn't it? Two minutes to go. And there we thank go. Thank you so much for coming. It's been wonderful. It's really nice because, you know, well, I've learned loads. I'm sure everyone else out there has, too, that 
you know, wow, we need to get some more back in stock. Mm. Please get us some more back we in stock. We can do that, no so, problem you know, at if all. If everyone's buying them now, they want one. But, you know, yeah. it's really, I've always wondered what the difference is and why would you bother now I know. Yes. If yes. only for putting that bias binding on. Exactly. Yeah, no, I really want one. Cool. Thank you so much for no, coming all the way. It's a long way up here, isn't it? Two hours. In the shocking rain. Yeah. Shocking rain. So yeah. thank you so much. And yeah. we will see you again soon, hopefully. Yeah. If you get some brilliant. stock. Yeah, that'd okay. be brilliant. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Cheers. Okay. Um, so thank you very much. Should we just quickly run through what's coming up tomorrow? Um, we've got at eight o'clock, we've got Claire in from Native Lighting. Nine o'clock, Fabulous Fabrics. 10 o'clock, we've got sewing room tools. 11 o'clock, we've got Jane Brogan, who's going to come and demonstrate the Elna 650, 580 and 320X and more machines with Jane at 12. Don't forget, this is your last day. If you want to buy a sewing machine before, ready to be delivered, will be there by Christmas. Today is the last day. You have to order it today. Jane will be in tomorrow demonstrating them. So if there's one of the owners that we've had out of stock that are back in the stock that you're interested in, do buy it today if you want it for Christmas. And then you can just sit and watch what Jane demonstrates tomorrow and then it'll all be ready for when you pick up yours. So um, thanks so much. It's been great. We've learned loads. I am back in on Monday, actually. Well, I swapped. I swapped this week. I normally do a Monday, but then Vix wanted to swap the Saturday. So I'm doing the Saturday. So I'm in on Monday and we've got... Wendy Orlando in on Monday and we've got Yarn Lane on Monday which is really exciting because um, we've got some beautiful baby blankets on Yarn Lane on Monday, crochet and knitted so I'm really looking forward to that so join us tomorrow for, what, um, for Elna and Debbie Shaw's in tomorrow and then I'll be back on Monday and god how can it be that close to Christmas? How can it be? It's only six days to Christmas. How can that be? I know, very scary. Anyway, see you later. I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>